And here we go with another big series. Seems like the NL East is not going to let up. And I promise you, we go to the playoffs this year. Don't want to overlook what Anthony Rendon has done. Ronald Acuna Jr. has played his way into the National League MVP race. Max Scherzer will still vie for the NL Cy Young Award. Look no further than 21-year-old all-star pitcher Mike Soroka. Did he just turn out the lights? He did! It's one of the wins of the year! What up and welcome to Washington, D.C., nation's capital, Nationals Park, the site of the latest MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. The Washington Nationals hosting the Atlanta Braves. And what a pitching matchup wow. we have tonight. Max Scherzer, Mike Soroka. <laughs> 7 p.m. Eastern is the scheduled time good. for the first pitch. You, I like that. You That's can steal that, that H if I'm you want. I'm stealing that for sure. Uh, we're not in D.C., me? clearly. We're in Studio 42. Harold Reynolds, Steven Nelson. Hello, everybody. If you've been here before, you know what our role is. It's the pregame show. If you haven't, we're setting the table for the game you're about to watch, and they want to know when first pitch is happening. We have something for that. It's a countdown clock. Where's that clock at? Oh, okay. Oh, it's over there. Gah! So one thing I want to nail every time is the point to the <laughs> clock. And I'm just dropping the ball right off the top. We're going to rebound. We're going to recover. All right, let's do it. H, this is a great series. Listen, I know there's eight and a half games separating these two teams yeah. in the standings within the division. Eight and a half. Atlanta in front of Washington, Washington three and a half in front of the Cubs and Brewers for yeah. home field advantage in the wild card game. But there's still there's still a ton of intrigue to this one because of the pitching matchup. Well, I think there's there's two things about it because of the pitching matchup and the Nationals pitching overall. Mm -hmm. They've always had the the praise, so to speak, and the Braves have not. And even though the Braves are eight and a half up, it's almost like you look at eh, nice, but the Nationals are better. And right. It does seem that way. Yeah. The so, Nats are the bigger threat to the postseason. Well, I honestly believe this. Uh, the Braves are a fantastic club, and I think they're going to continue to be for many years. But I look at the Nationals as the only team, I think, in the National League that can beat the Dodgers because of the pitching. That's what separates them from everybody else in the National League is the three-headed monster they have out the top. Yeah. And with, with Scherzer, Strasburg, and, and uh, Patrick Corbin. So those three guys... I think are separators and gives them a chance to maybe that's why they're viewed in such the way they're viewed. They are dynamite pitchers the starters tonight Soroka and Scherzer but they're mm -hmm. facing really tough lineups on both sides. Let's start True. start you off with this for the Atlanta Braves Ronald Acuna Jr. at the top followed by yeah. Ozzy Albies Freddie Freeman Josh Donaldson. I mean you have a few Bring her rain. You got a few MVP. Well, I like I like this lineup. I'm gonna get in a little bit later talking about lineup construction mm -hmm. and how important it is to, to set your table properly. I think the Braves and the Nationals are the best two in baseball with how they're constructed. I'll throw the, the Astros in there as well. Three teams I think that are set themselves apart from everybody else in the big leagues, and we're watching two of them tonight. In the five spot, Nick Markakis, welcome back to the lineup. He's playing left field tonight. Behind Josh Donaldson, bring out the umbrellas because he's with Heidi Watt. Thank you, Stephen. This guy needs no introduction. I was talking to an NL East rival. He said the Braves, top four in their lineup, are as dangerous as any team in baseball. You guys are downright scary. What do you think of that assessment from from one of your competitors? I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's probably not too far off. You know, when you have Acuna at the top, who's got power and he's got speed, and then you got Albies who's switch hitting, and he's probably, I mean, every time he gets up right-handed, it's a hit, and he has the opportunity to, uh, you know, steal bags as well, and he can score from first just as well as Ronald, and, you know, Freddie's such a polished hitter, you know, he really is able to use all fields, you know, he can hit the single, he can hit the long ball. Um, and then, you know, I kind of round him out a little bit. And, you know, sometimes I can hopefully not make him have to run very much and they can just jog. <laughs> and on your team, you, you look at your team and you really have three legitimate MVP contenders. Yeah. And you and uh, Freddie Freeman and Acuna. So, I mean, I know you're on the team and you're one of the three I just mentioned, but if you had to pick an MVP on your team, who would you say it is? Well, uh, 
I mean, Acuna to, to possibly go 40-40 special, uh, but I felt like Freddie's kind of been the rock that's kind of kept everything together in our lineup this year. To be able to consistently do it for as, as long as you have to do it to win the MVP award, uh, you know, that, that's really tough to do it. I feel like he's done that. Acuna's had a great year, and, I mean, if he gets to 40-40, that's going to probably can't ignore that. You can't ignore that. It's kind of, I'm not saying it's as comparable as Miguel Cabrera getting the triple crown, but I mean, it's a special feat. Well, if anybody knows anything about MVP campaigns, yeah. it's Josh Donaldson. And here's just a, a, a handful of the hot hitters in the Braves lineup Cunha Jr. at the top, followed by Albies, and then Freeman and Donaldson. Like, it, it just does not get much better than that. Harold. Well, if you're going to win a division and be a playoff team, you're going to have two or three guys that just stand out yeah. in your lineup that are MVP conversation all the time. Mm -hmm. But Ronald Acuna Jr., I know he's chasing 40-40, but at his age is what's so impressive. And let's take a look at him because he does so many things. 40-40, what is that? 40 home runs, 40 steals. Just the ability for this kid, he'll hit home runs to left field, to center field, to right field. Doesn't matter the pitch. That was a fastball in. Watch this right here. Let me dance over to the other side. This is a breaking ball. Boom, dead center field. So that's telling me he's staying reading balls and his swing stays consistent as he shoots that one to center field. And then this be able to go right field. So now a pitcher doesn't really have a zone to throw to. You're always looking for a place to get an out as a pitcher. Okay, I got the outside, maybe the middle or, or the end, depending on where he's standing. And this guy's taking everything away. And then he gets on base. And now he takes a walk and turns it into a double or a, a single and turns it into a double. And now he puts himself in scoring position. That's why the 40-40 is so special. How about still in third? Just at his age to understand the explosiveness and the, the way to do this is really impressive. And, Stephen, that's why we're talking about a possible MVP. With his abilities, his talents, and he's so young to be able to do what he's doing. I mean, 40-40. I mean, this is this is the company he would join. He's one dinger and four bags away from being with Soriano and A Rod and Conceicao. Now we'll have Bear. one. What do they call that? Astro, uh, what do they say? Asterisk. I don't even say asterisk when you say qualifier. Ah, yeah, you know. Okay. Put it this way. Willie May said to me one time, he goes, "I'm name dropping." Willie yeah, Mays. watch your feet. Don't so, let the name drops hurt you. Yeah, don't let them know. Willie May is Mickey Mantle. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but Willie said to me. You think if 40-40 meant something, we couldn't do that, me and Mickey? And he's probably right, you mm -hmm. know, but after guys started doing it, then it became a thing. Yeah. And even to have that few guys still be able to accomplish it is amazing. But I really wonder if Willie was like, in his prime, if he'd have thought about 40-40, he probably could have done it. So we've, we've right. highlighted the big superstars in Atlanta's lineup. Tonight, mm -hmm. they're getting the return of one of the unsung heroes of that group in Nick Marquez. It's yeah. the first time since the 26th of July he's going to be suiting up for the Braves. He's actually moving to, to left field because Matt Joyce has kind of stepped in the lineup yeah, he's and he's, he's more comfortable in right. Well, what Marquez does, it allows them, in a national league game, it's so important to have that bench. Yeah. And because you're going to be pinch hitting, you're going to make them double switches, things like that. Nick's a guy that a year ago is an all-star. For the first time. Yeah. And he's had an amazing career. But he posts up every day. You know, so I think that's why the injury is so surprising. But he plays every day. He makes great adjustments. Hits left-handers, whatever. But I think the one thing that stands out more than anything else, talking to Buck Showalter, is he's probably one of the best base runners in all of baseball. Mm. You know, not, maybe not as explosive as maybe a Cunha or somebody like that, but knowing to go first to third, understanding situations. Petty. Yeah, absolutely. You're smart, man. You, you get there real quick with a little word. I'm stretching it out. <laughs> no, we're, we compliment each other well, H. So we've, we've talked about the Braves lineup. What about the home squad tonight? The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. The Washington Nationals at the top. You want a dynamic leadoff man? Trey Turner is that. Playing mm -hmm. short, followed by Adam Spanky Eaton. And then Washington's MVP candidate, Anthony Rendon, the childish Bambino, Juan Soto, Drupal Cabrera, Ryan Zimmerman, Victor Robles, Jan Gomes, and then Max Scherzer in the nine hole. I mean, you think about <clears throat> Soto, Albies, and Acuna. These guys aren't even 21 years old yet. <laughs> they I mean, are babies. Ridiculous. Uh, Trey Turner, 
He's been in the league for a few years, but he's still got the baby face, and he's sitting next to Heidi Watney now. Thank you, Steven. You guys are in control in the wild card race. You've been for a while. You've got a lot of pressure, though, a lot of teams behind you. But what's it like to be in this position, especially after this offseason? You guys lose a big player. You got off to a slow start to the season. People didn't really have you in this position. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the season didn't start out how we wanted to. But, uh, you know, all along we knew that we were a good enough team to, um, you know, either win division or, or steal wild card spot. And, um, you know, after a good couple months, few months, we're uh, we're in the picture now and um, we kind of control our own destiny. You know, I think um, being in the lead is always better than trying to catch the other team. Yeah. Um, get to control our destiny and uh, take it one day at a time, play the Braves tonight. going to be a tough game, but um, hopefully we can finish off strong. Uh, Anthony Rendon. He's a guy, kind of a quiet guy, but, but, I mean, he really should be in the MVP race. He certainly is there in numbers. Make his case for why you think he should be an MVP. Uh, I think if he had a Twitter, he would be an MVP. Uh, just my, <laughs> my honest opinion, if he was on social media and people knew about him, he would be in the conversation more. You know, I think for the last three or four years, he's been an unbelievable player. Um, he does everything well, but he's a quite humble guy, and, and he doesn't market himself well enough. But, uh, you know, the numbers are certainly there, and I think this year, um, you know, people should definitely take a long, hard look at it because I think he's every good, every bit as good as, you know, those guys up there. And, and you know, that's saying a lot because there's, there's definitely some good players uh, throughout the NL. But, you know, his numbers don't, don't lie, and um, they're very impressive. Tough competition, but just focus on the numbers. Okay, I like that. Um, you guys got in about 6 a.m. from Minnesota, so you're all feeling a little bit tired today. It's also Friday the 13th, so we got to watch out for any black cats for sure. But do you have any superstitions or anything that you're like just maybe a little extra careful today? Uh, no, I try not to think about it, uh, and then maybe I'll forget if I do something wrong. But um, you know the old baseball traditions: don't step on the line and, and little things like that. And then you know if you have a good game, try to be consistent, do the same thing the next day, whether or not it works. But um, you know for me, it's uh, it's uh, as a baseball player, it's hard not to have some. All right, thank you. Good luck tonight. Thank you. I like that little soundbite from Trey Turner. If Anthony Rendon had a Twitter, if he was on social media and more people knew about him, he'd be more entrenched in the MVP, maybe leading the MVP conversation. That's what Trey Turner is saying. But he this, may not have those good numbers because he may not have the sanity of not wanting to know what everybody's saying about you. <laughs> yeah, it could, it, social media can drag you down. We're trying to build you up It can here build you up, on, too. Yeah, on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube, the pregame show. Harold Reynolds, Stephen Nelson here. The Nats one through four. Quality, quality. Yeah. And every time the Nats lineup comes out, you're kind of looking at the construction of the lineup. Well, you heard earlier, if you were watching then, that Josh Donaldson was talking about the Braves, the way they have the, lead, the, the second hitter, Albies, a switch hitter, and all the things he can do. But I want to take you through the Nationals because I think the construction of the lineup is so important that there is actually a role for each individual position. So let's take the leadoff hitter in Trey Turner. Can he do a lot of things for you right there? He can put a ball in play still. I love that. It's a 3-2 count. He can take a walk for you. He doesn't clog the bases when he's on, and he can steal a bag. So that's what you want from the leadoff guy. And yes, of course, not only steal a bag and score on balls in the gap, but he can hurt you with the long ball, too. So he is like cream of the crop, what you're looking for in a one-hitter. Let's go to the two guy. Adam Eaton, he's going to pull a ball through the hole when you got that guy on first base. You want that left-hander, shoot a ball there. Then again, Trey Turner, I talked about leading off. He can score from first base. But Adam Eaton's a guy that also, being the two hitter, is that when there is a man on the hole right there, you pull it this side, you go first and third, it opens it up. The other thing he can do, he'll extend an inning. He can drop a bunt. You know, they play a National League game. Love the hustle right there, by the way. But he'll go ahead and drop a bunt on you. It's either a hit or a sacrifice. In this case, he gets the double bonus in my mind. He's got a hit and a, and a, and a bunt single, and there's still no outs in that inning. The other thing he can do as well, still a base for you. There's one out, the inning's not over, he's not gonna clog that base, he'll keep, keep that rally going. And then of course, hey, the bonus. Everybody wants a long ball, right? He can do that as well. Let's go to the three guy. The three man can just hits for high average, drives in runs, and has power. He does it all. And that is Anthony Rendon. Even in the rain, you see that? They have their own bring of the rain, Steve. <laughs> all right? But he can drive balls everywhere for you. And the biggest thing to me, he's on first base. He doesn't clog the bases. Or on second, he'll score on a ball hit. Now, with two outs, it's like having a man in scoring position. He could shoot a ball in the gap, and he's going to drive that guy in 
at first base and keep the inning going and drive in big runs. That's how you drive in big runs. All right. And then the last thing is when you're at home plate, you are actually in scoring position because of your power. And then the four hitter, the cleanup guy, this kid's unusual because I think he's just one of the best hitters in all of baseball. But drives and runs in scoring position when at the plate. All right. Brought that up already. When he's at the plate, he's in scoring position because of the power, the ability to drive it to all different fields at any pitch at any time. That's why I think the Nationals are so unique and they're so balanced and so talented because he completes the club. Steven, you said that I completed your sentences. You, I had you at hello. Well, he had me when he got in the box and he's only 20. He turns 21 here pretty soon, but it's really amazing what he's been off to. And that to me, is the difference with the Washington Nationals. They can hurt you so many different ways, and there's a weapon for each position in the lineup. Harold, shut up. I will. Just shut <gasps> up. You had me at hello. <laughs> I can't believe you dropped Jerry Maguire, that reference on the MLB Game of the Week Live on YouTube pregame show. But that's what can happen here. That's it. That's it. Uh, listen, whatever the Nats have been doing, that lineup leads the National League in runs scored since wow. the All-Star break. Only the Astros and the Yankees have scored more in the big leagues coming out of the festivities, the Midsummer Classic, mm. than the Nats. I didn't know hey, that. That's a good nugget. Listen, the race to October is here. And I want you to watch the MLB postseason with YouTube TV because I have YouTube TV. Okay, it's 70 plus channels of live television, including every single postseason game. It also comes with unlimited cloud DVR storage and six individual accounts for the household at no extra charge. So you can add your Thank favorite you teams to your library so you don't miss a single moment of the action. Setup is easy, takes only a few minutes. Get ready for the postseason and watch live with YouTube TV. You can try it for free right now. Hey, let's get you an update from the Cubs and Pirates game at Wrigley Field. First. And driven deep, and it's 4-2, to two, just like that. Line shot, home run, Nick Castellanos. Game on. His Here we go. 15th as a Cub in 40 games. It's going to be a one run ball game when this ball lands. Wilson Contreras with number 22. Corner in the air, center field. Sends one deep to center, and he's homered twice today. Top of the batter's eye at center. Deep to right for Rizzo. Grand slam. Ten to four. An absent. It'll be a fair ball picked up by Contreras, mm. and he throws it in the right. He had lots of time. Pirates are going to get two runs out of this. Uh, sloppy Cubs defense today, giving the Pirates too many chances, and they're not done yet. Ten to six. Three-run game. Ten to seven. As Lester just picked up a pebble and fired it down. Bounced up the middle, in the center. Two runs will score. 12 to seven. Horner has his second career for. 12 seven <laughs> comes at, it's the bottom of the fifth. Wow. A lot of runs scored Those in that. Days in Wrigley. Uh, a, no doubt, NL Central clash. Here's the wild card standings in the National League, Chicago. Even up with Milwaukee, who despite losing Christian Yelich, has won seven straight games. So they're tied for the second wild card spot. If the season ended today, they'd play tiebreaker to get in, and then the winner of that would go to Washington, D.C. And then the Mets, Phillies, two games back, Arizona, after a tough weekend, or a tough week rather, three and a half. I, I'd worry about the Mets and the Phillies. Yeah, I mean, the Mets uh, for I, sure, because the rotation. Mets are playing great ball. They're hot right now, and the Phillies keep hanging around. Hanging around. 
I got you. I, I hear you. It's, I, well, I'm in for the chaos. I'm also in for like and subscribe, one of our oh, staples boy. of the pregame show before the MLB game. Oh, week, this this makes YouTube. me nervous. Why? Uh, I don't know, man. This, this makes me nervous. Don't be nervous, Harold. Okay. You're All Harold right. Reynolds. You're the mayor of Secaucus, New Jersey, <laughs> unofficially, or maybe officially one day. The first topic, Ronald Acuna Jr. is the best player on the Atlanta Braves. That's easy for me, yes. Thumbs up. Thumbs up on that one. I mean, you look what he's doing. We talk a lot about 40-40, but it's his age and the upside, and he's come up with big moments as well. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said earlier, there's going to be three or four guys on a team when you have a chance to go to World Series or win a division that you're going to talk about as possible MVPs. Yeah. I just think he's the best. And he's going to be in the conversation for the next decade. Yeah. I mean, he, he is just that good, that special, and that young. So speaking of more hardware, Harold, we're going to put more pressure on you. Max Scherzer is going to win the National League Cy Young Award again. To win another Cy. Had you asked me this in June, runaway train, yes. But I don't think so now. I think the injury hurt him and it allowed other guys to get in the conversation. And I think there's going to be a lot of people looking at uh, different things. I know they look at they don't look at the wins. I think that's important. I know they look at the ERA a lot. That's important. Strikeouts, all the different new numbers. Uh, at the end of the day, I just think Max hasn't thrown enough. Okay. Then who would you give it to? I'd have to look at that board again. Okay, so the Degrom has got to be in there. Yeah. So Ryu's the ERA leader right now. Yeah. Followed by Scherzer and Soroka, or Soroka and Scherzer, excuse me. Uh, Steven Strasburg for me is the winner. I just think consistently. Steven Strasburg, he's got a 3-4-9 ERA, he's and these guys are all sub-3. Yeah, but I'm not worried about that as much, because he's had to pitch through when the team had injuries, and he gave them innings. And he's got 17 and wins. he's got 17 wins. <laughs> I just okay. think he, I, it's important. There's some guys that know how to win, some guys know how to lose games. Yeah. And I think winning's an art, and... To me, that's big. One of the things we know for sure about Washington is that rotation is not going to be fun in the postseason in the short series right. with Scherzer, Corbin, Strasburg. It is a different team this year. It has a different feel. So despite all the postseason shortcomings for the Nats, they will reach the National League Championship Series this year. I'm feeling them. I'm thumbs up. Like and subscribe to that, Harold. Why? I just think they're on one of these. They've, they've turned it around. If you look at what they've done, from about mid to late June to early July, yeah. it's a whole different team. Totally. This is what they had planned and pictured. They're better. They're more versatile. They catch the ball better this year. And the pitching's great. And they've come up with big I, – I, I said earlier, I think they're the only team that can match up with the Dodgers and beat them. Now, we'll see how the matchups end up. Will it yeah. be first round playing the Dodgers or will it be in a championship series? But I think they get there. I mean, the Braves are eight and a half in front of the Nats. The Braves are nine wins away from 100 victories yeah. in a single campaign for the first time in, what, 16 years? Yeah. Like and subscribe to this, Harold. The Braves will win a World Series in the next three years. Win a World Series? Yes, not oh, just I thought get it was there. Get to. No, I, I think so. I really do. I think, yes, thumbs up. They've got the nucleus to do it. Uh, there'll be some turnover. Obviously, you're going to, in three years' time, you don't know what's going to happen with Donaldson and Freddie Freeman. But you're going to have Acuna, you're going to have Albies, you're going to have all the young talent in the middle of what they're doing. And uh, they're going to sign some free agents as well. You know what? Uh, and the pitching staff is 100% young. You know they, what I, they will. I love about playing this game with you is that if you were to put those four questions in front of everybody, I think the ones you said yes to they would everyone, all say no. say no. And the one you said no to was the for sure yes that Max Scherzer would win the Cy Young, but, hmm. but you know what? That's well, good. That's huh? why we play the game. Like and subscribe. And it different. As we get set for the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube, let's check in with the members of our broadcast booth, Justin Maxwell and Matt Diaz. They'll be with Scott Braun. Hey, thanks, Stephen. We're here in Nationals Park. We got a great night for baseball. We got Scherzer. We got Soroka. We got the wind blowing out to left, though, so we're going to focus on the offense a little bit. Let's start with the unsung hero of Nationals teams for years gone by, finally getting some recognition this year, Anthony Rendon, superstar, but not the loudest guy in the dugout. All right, the homegrown transition from Ryan Zimmerman at third base has been nothing but spectacular during his time here in D.C. And like you said, Matt, he's very, very humble, very quiet, and he just goes about his business in a very professional manner. 
Yeah, you think about him, you think about the Braves, Freddie Freeman, very similar in their personalities, their leadership styles, and their production. They're both really good. Two guys that we can't forget about are the two young guns on both these teams that will be compared for years to come. Ronald Acuna Jr. and Juan Soto. I'll let you take Soto. What do you, what do you, why should I pick Soto in a fantasy draft over Acuna Jr.? Well, if your league counts quality at bats as a stat, <laughs> like he's, he's up there. He ranks at the best. I mean, he has such a great eye. He sees a lot of pitches per at bat. He's 20 years old, which freaks me out. I can't believe I've seen a guy at this age, at 20 years old, be able to do the things that he's been able to do at the major league level. And then also, too, his in-game adjustments are out of this world. I, I remember I saw a game the other night where he was facing a lefty, he was throwing him off speed pitches, and he actually moved up in the box. I didn't know how to do I didn't do that at at all actually wherever my back foot was dug in that's where I stayed but he's been great you think about him you think about the Braves Ronald Cunha Jr. this is not a fantasy channel this is not a fantasy broadcast but you can't go wrong with either of them he's gonna steal bases he's gonna hit home runs he's gonna score runs and he actually drives in a lot even from the leadoff spot can't go wrong with that offense can't go wrong with this game we are look we are in for a great one tonight back to you Steven Thank you so much, Matt. He and Justin Maxwell. Look at those two former players just taking the toss, the throwback to hey, you. Look but, at them. But they, none of them is jacked as Scotty B. Scott Braun <laughs> calling oh, the game. Yeah. Heidi Watney down on the sidelines. No look doubt. At Max Scherzer getting loose. And Harold, as he's coming back from the injury you mentioned. Yeah. You know, look for Max to be full throttle here. Maybe, maybe it's tonight because last last time out against the Braves, he yeah. was six. Well, the, the the other thing, yeah. I mean, he's he's a guy that. They need to pitch well and perform because they're still battling to get in. You know, they're three and a half up in the wild card right now. Yes. So if it was reversed and they had eight games like the Braves do, I think you only get maybe five innings out of Max. But now they got to get the Max out of Max. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Reynolds. Hey, let me let me ask you something. This Nationals team without Bryce Harper, year one, it feels different. Mm hmm. And I'm not saying that's because Bryce is gone. I'm just saying there's a different vibe around this team, and it's a different road to the postseason than in years past. Now they're playing meaningful, competitive games down the stretch, whereas yeah. before they kind of waltzed in as division champs. I think it's better for them to be competitive down the stretch. But it's Dave Martinez's second or third, third year, something like that. He's finally established a culture. You know, they're dancing. They're having fun. Uh, you, you hadn't seen that in the past. No. It seemed like it was so business -like. Attitude. Yeah. We're in D.C. Yeah, you know Nation's now. Capital, yeah. President's race. Why are we talking like this? <laughs> I don't know. Because that's what you do when you're serious. <laughs> no, and because uh, I know some people don't buy that, Harold. But I do think that when the heat is on you a little bit, the most important time of the year, you go in at a, at a different level than you are if you're just all right. We're trying to be right and healthy going into the postseason. Well, yeah, they're, they're, and you get that flow every day. I, I'm curious how the Dodgers will do it. They do it better than anybody. How to keep guys sharp. Mm -hmm. And and also you look at the Yankees. OK, They're, they've got this thing wrapped up and they keep dropping like flies. Yeah. Eventually awesome. you go guys pull it back a little bit. So that's the worst place to be when you've already clinched and you're trying not to get guys injured but yep. you want them to continue to play hard. So I would much rather be in a situation like the Nationals where I got to play hard all the way through and we'll see what happens in the postseason. You said Atlanta's the, or excuse me Washington is the team that you feel best matches up with L.A. What is missing for Atlanta to to take that spot for you. The starting pitching. I, I don't see the power. These guys have power pitching. You know the, the Braves Soroka's a, a touch and feel guy. Great sinker. Heichel's, you know you can do a Some lot contact. of things. Yeah and, and they don't have that power coming at you. And I think the Nationals can reach back and their starting pitching is going to have to go deep in games. And I know the postseason ends up being a lot about the bullpen. But if your starting pitching can make up the difference, your bullpen is not as as prevalent in the postseason. You don't have to use them as much. In the MVP conversation, there are several in this game alone. Atlanta. He's in the conversation. Definitely. Soroka's in the conversation. Yes. Freddie Freeman, Ronald Acuna Jr., Josh Donaldson, the way he's played on his one year deal. Right. And then for Washington, Anthony Rendon, we talked about him. Scherzer, Strasburg, you, you like. Yeah. I mean, there's I just mean, so much. Soto's played himself into the conversation. Soto. Best we're watching, player. and we're watching some of the greatest young talent in all of Major League Baseball showcase tonight in both these teams. You got, a, cool. you, got, you got a pick or a prediction. Hey, you nailed the prediction last time. Toronto and Tampa, you said a multi home run game. Bo Bichette hit two. You got I, one tonight? I think tonight Soto goes off, and you see what I'm talking about. Oh. All right, that's going to do it for the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube pregame show. Enjoy the Braves and Nats in D.C.
This weekend is just like last weekend. The top two in the National League East squaring off, but this time the series shifts to Washington, D.C. on a cooler Friday night. It feels like fall in a region rich with national landmarks and a ball club usually playing meaningful games this time of year. Same story on Friday the 13th. This is the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. It's the Atlanta Braves and the Washington Nationals in our nation's capital. And hello to the YouTube audience watching worldwide. I'm Scott Braun. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the top two in the National League East. The Braves looking to lock down this division. The Nationals would love to host the wild card game. They're both in line for that at the moment. And you know the deal on YouTube. These games are streaming for you on MLB's YouTube channel. They are free. And after today, we have two more games on YouTube the rest of the season. If you haven't already, join the 2.1 million plus fans who subscribe to the MLB YouTube channel. Also, click that bell icon so that you know when the next free game is coming. And we're live for YouTube TV customers too. Go to the MLB pop-up on the channel guide and you'll also hear from former Atlanta Brave Matt Diaz joining us tonight and former Washington National Justin Maxwell and we have a premier starting pitching pairing Mike Soroka the rookie matching up against Max Scherzer Soroka doesn't seem like a rookie does he no Soroka calling Soroka rookie is hard at this time of year the, the Braves wanted Fulton Avich to be the one Tehran to be the one no Soroka is their number one. Make no qualms about it. And you'll see here his 1.11 whip. He has pretty much guaranteed himself to finish the season with less than a 1.2 whip. Max Scherzer did not do that till he was 28 years old, but he's been doing it ever since. He's had a pretty good run, huh, Justin? Since the Nationals signed Max Scherzer in 2015 to be their ace, he has led the MLB in innings pitch and strikeout. So he's done exactly what Mike Rizzo has asked him to do when he signed coming from the Detroit Tigers. So this is a this is a great matchup. I can't I look forward to watching it. They're both fantastic, but they are facing two of the most dangerous offenses in Major League Baseball, and they're led by some superstars. There are plenty on both sides, but two very young ones who will be compared for years to come because they both broke out in the same season last year. That's Juan Soto and Ronald Acuna Jr. What makes Acuna Jr. the beast, Matt? Yeah, he's the beast. His nickname is the beast. We need to get that through our heads. He's <laughs> asked to be called the beast, and he's been playing like a beast. We're on 40-40 watch, people. 39 home runs, 36 stolen bases. He's on pace for 43 home runs, and something tells me if he gets to 40 home runs, we'll see that 40th stolen base and heat base. He is a super sophomore and certainly the beast. And what stands out about Juan Soto he is patient beyond his years, Justin. Yeah, the reigning rookie of the year from last season has definitely not had a sophomore slump. He's been nothing short of phenomenal this second soft, this sophomore campaign. He's only gotten better as the season's gone on. He's been very patient at the plate. He can hit righties, he can hit lefties, and he sees a lot of pitches per at bat. It's been great. Soto finishes two, Acuna finishes number one last year for NL Rookie of the Year. They were neck and neck, and we're seeing it again, both of them producing superstar seasons like Matt mentioned. This could be 40-40 for Acuna Jr. And Soto leads the team with 34 home runs. He bashed number 34 yesterday. The sky is truly the limit for these two. And both teams are better than last year. The NL postseason picture features the Braves looking like they're going to lock up this National League East very soon. In the Central, the Cubs trail by four games. So do the Brewers. They've caught up. They've won seven in a row. The Dodgers have the West locked down. And then the Washington Nationals, as it stands today, have a three and a half game edge for that first wild card position, means they would host the wild card game. But it is a muddled mess for that second spot. And we love it. Shift your attention all the way to the right side of the screen for the American League. The best race is that wild card. The A's, the Rays, and the Indians. But guess what, Matt? Only two of these teams get to make it to the postseason. <laughs> it's hard. You take the best team or the hottest team right now. Cleveland Indians might be the best team. The A's are certainly the hottest team of that mix. And Tampa Bay's just been steady Eddie all year long. It's going to be a fun race to the finish line. And then there's October, and Atlanta knows all about it. Their lineup starts with Ronald Acuna Jr. tonight, and then his buddy Ozzy Albies batting second. Freddie Freeman hits third. So does John. Josh Donaldson after him in the four spot as those four have been playing just about every game all year. Then welcome back Nick Markakis, Matt Joyce in right, Tyler Flowers catching tonight, Dansby Swanson the eight hitter at shortstop and Mike Soroka will round out the starting nine for the Atlanta Braves this evening going up against Mad Max Scherzer 25th start of the year his ERA at 2 5 6 he has been a perennial Cy Young contender an all star he's won the Cy Young Award three seasons in his career and Dave Martinez his manager told us Justin he is officially back 
Yep, the brakes are off. Mad Max is ready to go. We saw a little bit of it last week uh, when he got to face the Braves on Sunday, and Davey Martinez told us today, same thing. He's full go. Let's see what he's got tonight. And we are officially underway. Max Scherzer fires above the zone to Acuna Jr. It's a ball and no strikes. Team leader in home runs. National League leader in stolen bases and runs scored. That's filthy. Max is going to be very careful with Acuna even though he's a leadoff hitter. Acuna Jr. has a 1053 OPS against him. He hasn't had that big a struggle with Max Scherzer as nasty as he is. Max beat the Braves on Sunday. So there was a four game series between these two teams last weekend. The Braves took the first three. The now the Nats salvage a game on Sunday thanks to Scherzer. Six innings, two hits, two walks, nine strikeouts. And there's another strike to Acuna. The only blemish against Scherzer on Sunday, Matt Joyce hit a home run. In fact, Joyce had both of the hits against Max. No one else could figure him out. Well, it happens like that. Sometimes guys got guy have guys' numbers, and most of the other lineup doesn't. That was a good pitch it hit there with uh, two strikes. And this is what we're talking about from this past Sunday. His fifth start off the injured list is tonight. And this was number four, and he looked like Max. 98 pitches. He said he could have gone up to 110. Six innings, two hits, a run, a win, 9-4. The Nationals took down the Braves. And Acuna Jr. stays alive. It's 2-2. Two two. It's a big at bat for him. Working Max right out the gate. I know Acuna doesn't love necessarily to work counts. He's not his counterpart Juan Soto in terms of working walks, is he, Justin? No, he's not. I mean, he's up there. He's ready to hit. I think that's why Snit moved him to the top of that lineup because he's an aggressive hitter. When guys miss in the zone, he makes them pay. And as you can see, when he is leading off for this team, that is when he is most dangerous. In fact, that's when the team took off. On May 10th of this season, Atlanta decided to place Acuna Jr. at the top of the lineup for the rest of the season. And this Braves team has been one of the best in baseball since then. 91 wins, 57 losses for Atlanta, already better than last year. That's a great change up there. It's tough. I don't know how he laid off of that. <laughs> I don't think he knows how he laid off of it. You can see from his reaction there, he kind of jumped like, oh, I didn't swing. Yes, I get another chance. There it is. There's that little jump. We've all done that. Haven't oh we? man, I've done it. And usually, <laughs> I'm headed the other way. <laughs> Ninth pitch of the at bat, and it's right to the glove of Rendon. A little hop for out number one. Just a little caught it a little out in front. We're going to talk a lot about these third basemen this game today, but one thing we don't focus on enough. It's how good defensively they are. They're ready every play. They make some phenomenal defensive plays. He got up. I mean, we saw him dance in the dugout earlier this week after a home run, and now we've seen him jump. He's he's showing his athleticism and his and his movement. He's showing all facets heading into his free agent year. Ozzy Albies. Now, when you look at last weekend's series, this guy had a great series against the Nats. Um, we're coming in after their Mets series, and that's we're looking to try to catch the Braves in the standings. And this guy did a great job. Towards the right side, and it gets past Cabrera. It's a base hit for Albies. And there he goes again. Yeah, the Nats were only a few games back, and they were hoping that that four-game series in Atlanta they'd be able to catch him, but it didn't happen. Great piece of hitting here. Shoot, shoots it through the four hole. The Braves are on the board. The base hit. He homered yesterday in Philadelphia. And one on with one out for Freddie Freeman. Team leader in batting average and OPS. We're going to take a cool look here at Freeman and how he and Scherzer have battled over the years. Scherzer has certainly had his number, but you can see from this graphic exactly how Scherzer wants to pitch Freddie. You see Freddie's hot zone is actually up compared to most lefties there. Scherzer tries to go away every time he misses in, though. Freddie makes him pay big time.
Freddie has had some epic matchups, and he mentions Max as one of the best in the sport, of course. And a quote from the other day if he throws a ball to you, you know he's setting you up for something else. That's the hardest thing. 0 for 3 on Sunday against Scherzer. And Max went with a first pitch fastball, first at bat, change up second at bat, cutter third at bat. <laughs> Freddie's already seen the fastball. Fouled it off and then got that nasty changeup where like we said in that graphic he tried to work him away with that changeup. Freddie laid off it this time though. Big cut and a miss. He turned 30 years old yesterday. He goes, now the sabermetricians aren't gonna like me anymore. <laughs> There's a three in front of my age. Yeah, baseball's a funny sport. I mean, some guys get better as they get older and some peak early. Um, but Freddie's one of the guys who seems to be getting better as he's gotten older. Steady Freddie, they call him. The one two lifted to right center. Eaton is there for the second out. How did he put that ball in play? It looked like it had bounced. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Well, when he turns 35 and the sabermetricians really hate him, he's going to take up <laughs> cricket because that ball did almost bounce. You'll see here, this is that unbelievable changeup by Max, just diving down Freddie with some of the best hand-eye coordination, quite frankly, in all of baseball, just able to flick his wrist. This ball gets to the outfield. I mean, he has too much power. If I hit that ball, I might get a knock because I can't carry it all the way to the outfielder. Well, we know Freddie always chokes up with two strikes, but what I like there is that he sacrificed and tried to put the ball in play to give his team a chance because if that ball drops that's first and third one out e or two outs or one out rather easy. And that leads us to Josh Donaldson. Three players on this roster that realistically should get to 40 home runs on the year Acuna Junior at 39 Freeman at 38 and Donaldson up to 37. He did not like this call and he might be right. It's a tough, tough spot. Max just dotted that down and outside quarter. As a hitter, I'm saying it's a ball. <laughs> In tight on the 0 1. Yeah, I mean, that was the ultimate pitcher's pitch there. The previous pitch down and away. And you see how Max likes to work both sides of the plate. Down and away, followed by a nasty sinker inside. Let's see what he's got next. You can see the six homers and 11 RBIs for Donaldson this year against the Nationals. He's been punishing the entire league. But especially since June 10th, Joe Musgrove of the Pittsburgh Pirates hits him with a pitch. He's ejected, and his numbers really escalated to the next level after that. They call it the pre and post Musgrove numbers. <laughs> <laughs> The umbrella started coming out about that time too when he hit a home run. I want to know if the umbrella makes the road trips and if so who's in charge of packing it. This is what I'm talking about post Musgrove 29 home runs and a dazzling home run celebration that Matt is alluding to. There is an actual umbrella in the dugout after he hits home runs and he carries it with him through a little conga line. While wow, they're showering with seeds and water. <laughs> That's why you need the umbrella. <laughs> It definitely goes on the road. I have seen it on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with the idea? Was it Mike Fulton? He gets me? a lot. He gets the credit for it. So I'm going to give him the credit for it. He's definitely the one who runs down in the tunnel on days he's not starting and gets it and hands it to Donaldson as he comes down the steps. That'd be great if he was starting. Just grab it next to him while he's getting ready in between innings and just <laughs> stand up, hand it over. Three one in the air to right. Can comes it. Eaton looking for it. It was hanging for a while for him to find it in the lights and sit down the side. So Scherzer gives up the Albies base hit, but that's all for the Braves offense, and we'll get to the bottom of the first inning. The MLB game of the week live on YouTube. Scott Braun, Matt Diaz, Justin Maxwell, and Heidi Watney with us this evening. Turner, Eaton, and Rendon do up for the Nationals when we get to the last of the first and let's welcome in Heidi Watney for the first time today. Hello Heidi. Well, hi there Scott. Yeah in a year when home runs are leaving the ballpark at an historic rate MLB just set a new record for most home runs hit in a single season. 
and we still have two and a half weeks to play. We're treated to a matchup tonight of two of the best pitchers at limiting the home runs. In fact, Mike Soroka has the top average in less, least home runs per nine innings. Max Scherzer just behind him. But ironically, Soroka's numbers are not quite as good against the Nationals. Of the 13 home runs he's given up this season, five of them have come against this Nationals team. Three of those home runs were hit in just his last start this past weekend against the Nationals. He gave up four runs, three of them homers in a loss here to the Nationals. But one of the things about Soroka that is so good, his road ERA is the best in all of baseball at just 1.44. Guy right behind him, Max Scherzer in road ERA. So Soroka now on the road. I talked to a number of his teammates, even Trey Turner on the other team, about what makes Soroka so good. He said his poise and his presence on the mound. It is something that they haven't seen from a 22-year-old in the past. Scott? His ERA on the road is the best we've seen from a pitcher since Roger Clemens in 2005. More on that in a moment. This is the lineup that he's going up against. It's Speedy Trey Turner and then Adam Eaton, Anthony Rendon, an MVP candidate. 20 year old Juan Soto has Drupal Cabrera. Great addition for this team. Ryan Zimmerman is back and feeling good. Victor Robles, another young star. Jan Gomes catching and Max Scherzer in the nine spot, but he can hit. Let's start with Trey Turner. Last year led the National League in stolen bases. Dealt with some injuries this year, but he's up to 32 stolen backs. A 299 hitter. He brings speed. He brings power. The ideal leadoff hitter for Washington. And the first pitch from Mike Soroka is in there for a strike. So 267. And Matt, Matt uh, Heidi mentioned a 144 ERA. Last time we saw a number lower than that on the road. 132 from Roger Clemens back in 2005. What he does is just phenomenal. You see the first pitch, it, it's 94 miles an hour moving straight sideways, and then he comes over with Uncle Charlie straight 12 to 6 right there. Uh, I, Trey Turner is batting 400 career off him. I have no idea how. The way the, <laughs> the, the way Soroka attacks hitters, he's he is in the zone until he's until he's away ahead, and then you see there he tries to get you the chase. He doesn't give up many home runs because he keeps the ball down in the zone. He just poised, like Heidi said, poised. He looks like a 30 year old veteran out there on the mound. He's only 22 years old. Scouts use the word pitchability. He is elite in that category. Yeah, when I watch him pitch, it's the sinker for me. I mean, the ball runs so much. That first pitch to Turner moved about six inches sideways, like you said, Matt. And in an era where we talk about launch angle and all that, having the ball sink that much down into a hitter's hands keeps that ball out of the air. It really does. He doesn't have the stereotypical sinker either. It's more of a power fade. <laughs> he uses that sinker about 46% of the time and gets 65% ground balls on the pitch. It's been a good count to see one here. Two breaking balls away. Follow up with the sinker. There it is. Comes the back door variety. This is wide and just like Acuna Jr. Trey Turner working a good at bat to lead off the game. 46 percent with the sinker and then the money slider fastball and a changeup. And that ship to left backing up Markakis to the track. He's got it. So welcome back Nick Markakis. <laughs> You've got the first out. Yeah of course. I mean anytime you miss any time for an injury the ball will always find you Matt you can attest to that the yeah. times when you're not expecting the ball to come your way here it comes yeah sometimes we're not expecting sometimes when you're not expecting to look up and see Nick Markakis in left field this is a long range play by Brian Snicker having him play left instead of right Matt Joyce has been phenomenal for the Braves talked to Markakis Markakis told him he would play wherever is needed and if Enciarte comes back it would get Acuna over to right field which would give them a really stellar outfield. Number two hitter Adam Eaton in the air. And who's got it a little Bermuda Triangle action. Swanson makes the call. Another close call for Markakis out there and left, but the Braves shortstop hauls it in for out number two. This is where the fly ball communication comes in. I was always yelling you, you, you in that situation. <laughs> what, what, what was your thoughts on that ball? Well, it's hard to see actually right now. Dur during this twilight phase, the sun just set. Um, it's, it's really hard to see. The ball will actually blend in with the clouds. And you saw that with Eaton that first half, and he couldn't see the baseball. And Dan's response, and he had a good beat on it. I know Mark Hakes really probably couldn't see that ball off the bat very well, especially in this twilight phase that we're experiencing. 
Listen to the chance for Anthony Rendon. We talked about it early, earlier when Freddie Freeman came up to bat and Acuna Jr. there on MVP chases. This guy, this guy has to be in the conversation. Yeah, I think if he, at the end of the season, if he's leading the league in average and RBIs, he has to be considered. I know what Bellinger is doing out west is great. He's leading the league in homers. But what Yelich has done is great, but he's now injured. So Rendon has a chance to catch him in a few categories. And you're right, he leads the league right now in both those categories. Average and RBI is the only guy he's tied with for those RBIs, tied for first right there, Freddie Freeman. Right, exactly. And they're both playing here tonight. But if uh, you know, if if it's all is said and done, if he has, like I said, the average, he, if he has the RBIs, he has to be considered. I know what the Dodgers are doing is great. But when you look at his body of work, hitting for average to me is like the hardest thing to do. Because you got to hit the ball hard every at bat. And we've seen that from Anthony Redone throughout the whole entire season. He's hitting on a clip of 335. He's playing great defense. He's not getting a call on the side of the way. <laughs> Good base runner. Yeah, great base runner. And very humble as well. As you take a peek at this slider. Yeah, I thought the line of the day. Yeah, it, but he doesn't. He's not going to sit there and slam his bat right there. Yeah, the line of the day when we were talking to Davey Martinez was, why isn't he getting more attention? Davey's answer was, he doesn't want it. <laughs> right, and I think that speaks volumes to his personality. 2 2 Sky. Infield, Freddie Freeman looking for it. Dansby Swanson called up by Albies. He found it in the lights. And Soroka sits down the side in order. Yeah, you can see Freddie there. His arms were out. He had no idea where that ball was. It's a tough time of night, like you mentioned. Also, that ball earlier from Trey Turner might have left the yard if it was three, four hours ago, the way the wind was swirling out to left field. But no score after one. Scherzer against Soroka on a Friday night, the MLB game of the week, live on YouTube. We hope you're enjoying this game on MLB's YouTube channel. And don't forget, you have multiple options on how you watch the games. In addition to watching on your mobile phone or your computer, you can also watch using the YouTube app on your smart TV or Roku, Apple TV, PlayStation, Xbox, or Chromecast. The race to October is here. Watch the MLB postseason with YouTube TV. YouTube TV is 70 plus channels of live TV, including every postseason game. It also comes with unlimited cloud DVR storage, which is so clutch, and six individual accounts for the household at no extra charge. You can add your favorite teams to the library so you don't miss a moment of the action. Setup's easy, it only takes minutes. Get ready for the postseason and watch live with YouTube TV. Try it free now. Gorgeous night temperature wise though really feels like a fall evening for Major League Baseball clouds throughout the day but never any precipitation great news for both teams because they were dealing with rain in different standards yesterday the Washington Nationals were in Minnesota taking on the twins they took two of three in that series the game started about 50 minutes late. They end up arriving to D.C. around six in the morning. We had our manager meeting with Dave Martinez today. And he said, I got about three hours of sleep. <laughs> so we kept the meeting brief so that maybe he could sneak in a nap. But instead, there was a team photo today, Matt. I'm sure I'm sure that <laughs> caught everyone off guard. I'm sure all the players and staff were very gracious to their PR department and went out there smiling and took the picture without any grumbling or complaining. I jest. I've been in that situation before. But Dave Martinez, kudos to him. He actually had an appearance this morning. So he woke up even earlier than that. First pitch up the middle, base hit. And welcome back, Nick Markakis. That was a bullet. That was a bullet. Ooh. We were sitting up here before the game. Justin, you showed me Nick Markakis' numbers. You kind of highlighted them to me off of Scherzer. Scherzer just gets ambushed right here, trying to get a fast, get ahead in the count with a fastball, and Mark thinking maybe Markakis will take a pitch since he's been on the IL so long. Nope, just going to shotgun you right back up the middle. Yeah, before that hit, he was hitting 313 off of Max and uh, 73 plate appearances. So now make it 74, and obviously that batting average jumped up a little bit as well. A fractured wrist in late July for Markakis. He makes his return this evening, activated from the injured list about a week ahead of schedule, and he moves to left field, as we mentioned. Not much experience there, so that Matt Joyce can remain in right field. His last 25 games, he's produced a 358 batting average. He's been great for Atlanta. Hi. 
Oh, I thought I said strike. Did you hear that? Sounded like it, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, this has been a great pickup for the Braves. Matt Joyce, experienced veteran, had a lot of success, success in the big league, started with Tampa and continent professional. And the guy who homered off of Max last week. Yeah, when I saw that pickup by the Braves this offseason heading into spring training, it was it was a really good sneaky move. Um, he actually was doing a video shoot for Florida Southern College in Lakeland Florida's Hall of Fame uh, when he found out that his spring training home was going to be moved. <laughs> so uh, he was out in Arizona I think with the Angels when was sent to the Braves. I thought it was a great move for depth and he has certainly provided that. Right. The moccasins in the, Florida that's Southern. That's right. The moccasins. You don't forget that one. No. <laughs> the mocks. Lance that's Necro former major leaguer hmm. is their baseball coach. There's the 358 in his last 25 games, 11 driven in, the OPS north of 1,000. This is the time of year when you, when guys have numbers like that, you find ways to get them in the lineup. You want to keep their bats hot. You want them to help carry your club to a postseason berth. And by Matt being so experienced, you know, he's not going to get phased by anything in the moment because he's been pretty much in all these different scenarios as a player. I just think about the selflessness of the guy on first base there Nick Markakis to tell Snicker no ask Joyce where he's more comfortable I'll play anywhere and Joyce said I'm definitely more comfortable in right. And Markakis is going and that's ball four. So the first two reach to start off the second inning for Atlanta. Now Tyler Flowers getting the start tonight at catcher. Yeah, back to your point about Markakis moving over from right to left field. Um, Matt, you played a little left field. What do you think is the easiest outfield position? <laughs> Center field's the easiest by far. I got to play <laughs> one big league game there, so I'm going to claim that one. Right field's actually second easiest, and to me, left field was always the hardest. Justin, what do you think? I think I'd go just in that order as well. Center field first, right field second, and, you know, left field last because <laughs> the ball does all sorts of weird things in left field. Think about the amount of top spin. More pulled balls will go to left field than right field simply because there's more righties than lefties in the game. So you're going to get more top spin hit at you. One of my first ever games in left field was in the big leagues in Tropicana Field. Alex Rodriguez hit a screaming missile at me that got in that bank of lights where you couldn't see it went yep. right by my head. Lou Pinella pulled me and said hey kid I'm saving your life. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Some fans don't realize the outfielders will lose balls and lights, and they're like, what's wrong with that guy out there? He's got to make that play. I can see the ball the whole way. I pointed it out to Scott today. We almost didn't have Mike Soroka on the mound. He was warming up, and his bullpen catcher kept throwing the ball in the lights, and one went right by his face, went all the way to the wall. Uh, so uh, thank goodness it missed him, and he, had him, he made him bounce every ball after that. Incredible. I mean, you never see that happen either. The one two to Flowers misses wide. You see, Max, I think he's definitely healthy. That last pitch came in at 97 miles an hour. Yeah, the velocity was up in his last start compared to the first few off the injured list. Average 95.5 with the fastball on Sunday up one mile per hour and he hit 97.5 and he's got his first strikeout of the night. Splits the plate center cut right there. Max is so nasty. I'm not going to blame Tyler. Tyler was guessing right there sitting on a pitch as people would prefer me to say but he obviously was not looking fastball there. Center cut right down the middle. Sometimes it's your best pitch because the guy's not looking for it with two strikes. Justin are you kicking yourself when you're heading back to the dugout when you just saw strike three whiz by down the middle. Oh well, it's more like a slow walk back to the dugout <laughs> dragging my bat behind me. My wife used to tell me I had the worst like strikeout walk to the dugout. <laughs> Dansby Swanson eight hitter with two on doesn't bite. It was Mark Cake is starting us off with the first pitch single and then Joyce walks flowers strikes out. And now a shortstop with 17 home runs on the year. And his best off offensive season. Battled injuries throughout much of 2018.
Yeah, when I used to, when I, I faced Max when I was with the Giants in 15, and my whole approach was I was looking middle. I couldn't, I couldn't really hit that slider down and away, so I just eliminated that. If you threw it three times, good job. But I was looking hard middle, looking for a fastball elevated middle of the zone. And if you miss that spot, try to hit the ball, put the ball in play. You went one for two with a double against Max. It worked. There ching, you ching, go. Ching. Yeah, I mean, also too, a little, little history too. I also faced him in the fall league in 2007 when he was coming out of the pen. And he was throwing 99 to 100 miles an hour. That fastball was rising. My foul balls were going off my knuckles almost. When he first came up in Arizona, I squared a bun against him. He stared me down after the next, and the next pitch was 94 off my ribs. And I still feel it to this day. And he was a rookie. He did not care. <laughs> I loved it. I mean, I, it hurt like crazy. That's the kind of guy you want to play behind. You went one for five, a couple strikeouts against Scherzer. You With a hit one pitch, though. With a hit by pitch. That helps yeah, the OPS, right? Base, That's yeah. right. <laughs> that counts. Uh, Dansby's struggling a little bit. You mentioned that he was hurt a lot of 2018, 2019. He came off the IL. It's been the tale of two seasons for him. He's only batting 143 in the 14 games he's been back. So he's back, dropped down in the eight hole tonight. He's looking to get his mojo going here with two out, uh, with two strikes and runners in scoring position. Two two toss. And he's got his second strike, yeah. Yeah, that changeup is just devastating. It just falls right off the table. What makes him so special is that he throws so hard that guys have to cheat. And then he can follow up with this nasty changeup, and then all of a sudden the bottom just drops out of it. He's also one of those few pitchers that has that extra level. When he gets a runner in scoring position and nobody out, he just struck out the next two batters to get to the pitcher. Right. And then what I like best about him is his competitive fire. He threw a pitch to Dansby that he missed middle. And you can see on his face, he like shook his head. He was upset because he missed his spot. And then he came back and executed a great changeup. Speaking of pitchers, Patrick Corbin went yesterday for the Nationals, and he is going to join us. When Max gets one more out. And those of you in the comment section that are hanging out throughout the night, if you're looking on your computer right side of your screen, send us some questions for that guy. Free agent, off-season edition for the Nationals. Great interview. Patrick Corbin joining us soon. We'll ask some of your questions if you're in that comment section with us. And that's what makes this team so dangerous come October. Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin, and Anibal Sanchez has had a nice year too in the four slot. They're one of the few teams you look at if they win a wild card game that would, you would have to seriously think about taking in their first round of the playoffs. Now, granted, if they're in the wild card game, they'd have to go play the Dodgers. But I promise you, the Dodgers don't want any part of that starting rotation right now. Yeah, for me, postseason baseball comes down to pitching. I mean, great pitching eliminates great hitting any day. I mean, and we have three of the best here in D.C. The question for the Nationals will be that bullpen, which was a disaster at the beginning of the year. Still not great, but it's been better. And we'll get into that later on. Two on, two outs, two two coming from Scherzer to Soroka. And he strikes out three in a row to get through the inning. So a base hit for Marquecas, a walk for Joyce, and then Flowers, Swanson, and Soroka strikeout victims. The MLB game of the week live on YouTube is up and running. Braves and Nationals scoreless. It's Scherzer against Soroka pitching supreme on a Friday night. For in-depth perspectives on the game, this is what I'm talking about. Don't forget to check out YouTube's live game commentary featuring MLB, the Nationals account, the Braves account, and a select group of YouTube creators. They're gonna add to our thoughts during the broadcast with a unique viewing experience. Just view the live game commentary on your mobile phone, your computer, also in the living room on your smart TV. We're gonna keep an eye on that discussion throughout the broadcast. And like I mentioned, we will take those questions for Patrick Corbin. And let's welcome in the Washington Nationals Southpaw 
for this next half inning. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us. How you doing? And most importantly, how much sleep did you get? I got a couple hours, but uh, <laughs> it was a crazy, uh, crazy day. But uh, seems like we've been going through it all year. But uh, um, glad to be here, ready to go. Yeah, we heard uh, we heard Scherzer got uh, got got sent home early. He got to come home and get a little bit of sleep. He certainly yeah. looks rested. He's the most competitive guy I've seen, right? I mean, he, he gets two guys on right there with nobody out, strikes out the next three. Is he competitive in everything he does? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, how you see him pitch is how, uh, I mean, he is every day. But uh, it's fun to watch him every fifth day. When he was out for that month, it was tough. But um, it, you learn so much from him, just how he competes, goes out there, battles every day. And uh, whether he has his best stuff or not, you can never tell. And uh, I'm glad he's on my side. Now, Patrick, I know you guys have dugout dances when guys hit dingers. Have you gave any thought to yours when the time comes? I'm still waiting for my first one, so um, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll be pretty excited about it. I've been trying. Um, everybody's giving me crap this year about my hitting. It's been really bad. So um, uh, Strasburg hit one earlier this year. That was pretty funny having him dance, but uh, I don't know. I'll come up with something. <laughs> well, you can talk to Max Scherzer. He's definitely done some damage with the bat. And also, how about the list of strikeout pitchers with 200 plus in National League history? It's very short. Here, this this is the sixth team in MLB history with three pitchers to record at least 200 Ks. It's Strasburg, it's Max, and it's you, Patrick. What does it mean to be on a list like this with strikeout artists? And hey, we documented what you did in the offseason, signing with the Nationals. Was this one of the big reasons why you wanted to sign up with this squad? Yeah, for sure. I mean, to just thinking of being a part of that staff where um, starting pitching is important, especially at this this part of the season and, and trying to make a deep run in the playoffs and being able to join those two and Anibal Sanchez as well has been great for us. And um, even when Max was out, we had a couple guys step up. But uh, I mean, you see those guys go out there every day striking out a bunch of guys and uh, just quality start after quality start. You just want to go out there and do your job. Now Patrick now your time here in D.C. What's what's been your favorite part. I know it's tough usually with the family moving to new places. What do you like the most about being here in D.C. It kind of feels like I've been here longer than I have. It's just a, it, it's a it is a fun group. It's it's fun to come to the ballpark every day. There's um, it's good energy. Um, and then uh, just obviously winning and, and and being on a good ball club that's going to compete year in and year out and. Um, I mean having guys like like Soto and, and Robley some young guys that are going to be here for a long time and um, seeing them develop into great players. You mentioned S Soto and Robley some of the young studs some of the guys that don't get a lot of credit it's like Howie Kendrick we're seeing his face right here on our interview screen he's just mm -hmm. he's, he's smiling and having a good time. Talk about the depth of this team from top to bottom. Yeah I mean Howie just barrels up every at bat. Um, I mean he'll take a week off it seems to just go up there and just barrel it up and. Um, I mean he's been great we have, we have a lot of veterans on this team mixed with some young uh, good players and it's a tough uh, tough uh, lineup to, to go through um, from top to bottom and um, it's exciting to, to be a part of this. We'll mix in some questions from our fans and team accounts that are watching and commenting on this game while it's a global audience here on YouTube so let's start with sports gaming universe it's a long one but hey Patrick. Why did you have to be so tough on my twins last night lol but seriously how much does it change your routine your routine on a night like last night when weather pushes first pitch back because it was a 50 minute delay how does that affect things for you. I think the hardest thing is just trying to stay warm um, you get loose and you have a routine and it seems like the three times we've been delayed this year I've, I've pitched those games so I guess <laughs> I got a little experience with that but. Um, no, you just when, whenever the game starts, you gotta be ready. So you just try to stay loose, and um, I mean that's a good ball club over there, and uh, it's good, glad to see we came out with a series win. Ball four to Soto, and here comes his Drupal Cabrera. Benny in the comment section goes, "I think Howie Kendrick wants to be interviewed as well. He's he's in a great spot for the camera right now. Howie's got a great spot." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone yeah. says hello Howie watching globally great that's yeah. awesome. Uh, let's do one from five point bids. Hey Pat do relievers ever take BP do you ever see any relievers taking batting practice. 
Um, we've had some guys before. When, when I was with the Diamondbacks, Archie thought he could hit still, so he kept trying. Archie Bradley kept trying to hit a lot, and it actually <laughs> paid off in that that wild card game we had. But um, we've had guys in, in our pen hit with us here and there. I mean, sometimes they come up, but um, it does happen. Your team's in a great spot, holding the first wild card's position. As that's taken in tight by Cabrera. You've never pitched in the postseason before. How amped are you to be able to pitch in October, likely for the first time in your career? Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I mean, that's what you play for. That's um, why you want to be on a team like this to, to have an opportunity to, to do that. You want to be in those big games, and um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to that opportunity. We just saw Soto walk before the before Estrella came to the plate. I mean, I, the the youth yet experience in the batter's box just baffles my mind. How, how have you watched pitchers try to attack that guy? He doesn't swing at bad pitches. He doesn't chase. Um, I think he's, he he hits for a higher average off lefties. I think so far this year. I mean, he's for for 20 years old. He's he's special, and to have him behind Rendon in our lineup and some other veterans. I mean, it's it's a tough middle of the lineup there. And, um, He's going to walk over 100 times this year. I mean, that's pretty special for a kid who's 20. I did, want, I did want to ask you. We're having a we're having a slow inning so far this inning, right? Pace a game. Yeah. Last night, watching that game, the pace was brutally slow on the twin side when they when they had the ball. Do you notice that when you're pitching, or do you just enter the zone and just just get ready to take the ball again? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, I liked it. We kept scoring runs, so that's always fun. That's, that's always fun. So you just uh, it was a little little cold last night, so you just try to stay loose. You do some stretches and stuff like that, and um, I mean, it, you, there's nothing really that I can control with that. So it's it's just a little different when you're not hitting too. So I'm not not used to that. Sports gamers online with a question: Ask Pat what it was like playing high school ball. In upstate New York, I'll add to that question: How cold did it get for some of your games? Yeah, it was, well, yesterday was kind of remind me of back home in Syracuse sometimes. But uh, we'd have snow, can't, rain delays, snow delays, and uh, it wasn't too fun. I mean, I think I threw seven games my senior year, so uh, not long seasons up there. Now Patrick I spent a little time in Syracuse. Um, did you ever frequent dinosaur barbecue when you're up there. Yeah I love dinosaur barbecue is great and possibilities. I don't know if you've been there. Um, one of my favorite spots. You know no. it. No, I haven't been that place. No. But actually Syracuse always stands firmly in my mind. Because there's one of the one times I brought my son on the field for the Fourth of July fireworks celebration, and now he hates fireworks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was only 18 months years old at the time. That's my fault. Scares him. Yeah, but no, I love Syracuse. Great place to live, especially this time of year. The weather is beautiful. Mm. Are you going to be watching some football tomorrow too? Syracuse, Clemson. Yeah, I was hoping they uh, won last week. They got blown out by Maryland, but you're um, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 27 point underdogs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Be t they play them tough uh, the last couple of years, but I don't know. Clemson's been best team in the country for a couple of years now, so uh, I mean, hopefully they keep it close. You got to throw Maryland into the mix too, my alma mater. Yeah. Sorry about that, Patrick. <laughs> I'm more of a basketball fan there, but uh, their football program's been pretty solid the last couple of years. Now let's talk hoops for a moment. What position do you play? Uh, shooting guard. Yeah, because I, I walked past you the other day. You're pretty tall. Yeah, I miss basketball and uh, uh, wish we could play, but um, wasn't wasn't uh, I guess tall enough to continue <laughs> in, in that. Well, yeah, don't start now. I'll tell Davy. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled left side. This could be two, and it is. Moving on to third is Soto as Zimmerman bounces into the double play and Patrick will let you go enjoy the rest of this one. Thank you so All much right. for joining us worldwide audience watching on YouTube. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks Pat. Patrick Corbin with us for this bottom of the second inning Zimmerman bounces out and that erases a couple. Yeah this is why Snit wants him in here. Donaldson plays great defense in addition to great hitting and I think it all that has to do with anticipation. He's anticipating the ball coming his way with Zimmerman at the plate and especially with Soroka on the mountain with all those ground balls that he gets 
I think that do you think that Matt do you think that helps guys to know you got a sinker ball pitcher to know that the ball's going to more likely than not come your way consistently. Oh absolutely. Absolutely. I remember when Tim Hudson would pitch you know Chipper would go stretch a lot because he knew he was going to get six seven eight ground balls in a ball game because Hudson was famous for being able to get people to beat it into the ground. Uh, we talked about we talked about Rendon and his ability to play both sides of the ball. The bringer of rain can bring some offers as well. He can pick it over there at third in an amazing way. Manager Brian Snicker said that's been one of the best parts of Donaldson's game this year and one of the most pleasant surprises because he's had a few hiccups but it looks like it was based on injuries the past couple seasons. He is healthy and 100 percent this year and one of the defensive metrics you can use defensive runs saved. Donaldson is tops in the league at third base this year. Health has a lot to do with a lot doesn't it and him coming back. He's putting up numbers similar to what he did when he won the MVP there for the Blue Jays. OPS is up that area. He's going to have as many home runs potentially. Uh, this is just a phenomenal bounce back. Great pickup by Alex Anthopoulos. If, it, if Snicker has anything to do with it, it'll cost Alex a little more money. But Snicker <laughs> wants him back for next year. He'll be 34 in December. This season getting paid $23 million on a one year contract. Yeah, he's one of those guys who's been getting better as he's been getting older. Um, if the injuries hold off, he can, st can still continue to improve. Soroka's ahead of Robles, one and two. Weekly to first. That's for Freeman to scoop up. And we're done with the second. So Soroka allows two base runners to reach to start off the bottom of the frame just like Scherzer did at the top of the second and no damage done no score from Nationals Park and Nationals play by play announcer Bob Carpenter uses his scorebook to take a look back at some of the signature moments in franchise history watch this. Well you know this is 2010 everybody knew that we were going to have the number one draft pick on the basis of a 59 win season and uh, everybody knew Steven Strasburg was the number one prospect out there. The Washington Nationals select Steven Strasburg. And the Nats were coming off a couple of really rough seasons that on Tuesday June 8th of 2010 that might have been right there with some of the opening day or opening night crowds we had had 40,315 in this ballpark that night. The first time that we really had what you would call a playoff atmosphere at National Park. Well, the man has just arrived. Steven the Nats are under 500. They had lost five of their last six games, seven of their previous nine. They were playing a Pirates team that wasn't a great team, but uh, I tell you, there was a buzz in this ballpark like we had never had before. This crowd is crazy. Strasburg strikes out the side. So he's got four strikeouts after two innings we're thinking OK uh, we got something going on here and then in the sixth inning this is when it all kind of went crazy. Fastball by him strikeout number nine. He went bang 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 in the sixth against McCutcheon Walker and Millage. He goes bang 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 in the seventh against Garrett Jones Delman Young and Adam LaRoche's kid brother Andy LaRoche. So through seven innings he's got 14 strikeouts. Strasburg gets the win in a game that we won five to two. And as Strasburg walked off the mound toward the dugout I do distinctly remember saying at some point he can't be this good. To see more exclusive behind the scenes Nationals content subscribe to their YouTube channel now. Steven Strasburg has a plus stuff. The key is keeping him on the mound and so far so good in 2019. It's been one of his healthier years. Max Scherzer has dealt with injuries as he fires to Ronald Acuna Junior and that's lifted to center. Robles looking for it and he found it for the first out. Acuna Jr. really worked a good at bat in the first inning probably giving himself permission in their swing first pitch after he saw all these different pitches from Scherzer he realized he didn't want to hit any of them he went after him there missed over the middle Scherzer was upset Acuna was upset he missed that one kept pounding the zone down and away and finally got Acuna out in front Rendon with a nice jump. Showing button pulling back his Albies it's a strike. Scherzer made only two starts from July 1st 
through August 21st dealing with a back issue that also connected to the shoulder. He returned on August 22nd. This is start number five since then and he brings some nasty breaking stuff to make it 0 2. It's his 45th pitch of the game. Cunha did him a favor by popping out on the first pitch of his at bat. They really had him deep in the count. Now he's just attacking. He's in attack mode and that's filled. Two hits off Max. Albies with one of them back in the first inning. Yeah, well, there's a, diff there's a few different schools of thought. Ambush, get him early, or make him work, make him get tired, if he ever gets tired. But this will be a key at bat here. If Albies is able to work the count, get him up over 50 pitches, then I think Brian Snicker will sit back in the dugout and he'll be pretty happy with how they're attacking Max so far this game, making him work and get these long lengthy innings and that's something that'll happen in hitters meeting you'll be talking about a pitcher and you're talking about a weakness of a staff and there's strikeout number four of the evening for Scherzer and the weakness of the staff of the Washington Nationals is known it's their bullpen and you'd like to get into it but you're right Max Scherzer sometimes does not let the manager get to the bullpen you can come try to take the ball from him but he's not going out and his pitches like that. Yeah, we've seen it a couple of times in his career where he'll look at Davey, he'll be on the top step, and he'll be like, no, no, go back, go back. I want the ball. And, you know, when you're a fan, when you see that, you want to come out, you want to cheer for a guy like that. He just passed David Cohn on the all time strikeout list. He's in the 24 spot now, climbing up the charts. Second matchup against Freeman tonight. First time produced a fly, fly ball out. Now he's got a swing and miss. It's one and one. Yeah, that's probably the pitch there that gives Freddie fits. I mean, that's that slider cutter right underneath the hands. It's tough, tough pitch to hit. I know Freddie's trying to get on and get something going with two outs. But if you're Max Scherzer and you got Freddie Freeman bunning, you have him right where you want him. Yeah, that just shows you how uncomfortable these at bats are for Freddie. Freeman has one career bunt hit back in 2016. There were a few Braves working on their bunting on the field today. No one hit batting practice on the field. Both got in late last night. Freddie Freeman was not one of those working on bunt bases today on the field. <laughs> he probably would have got it down if he was out there. <laughs> so no one's surprised Billy Hamilton was working on his bunting. To my surprise, Ozzy Albies, everyday player plays every day, was out there working on on-field bunting for base hits. Yeah, I was uh, asked you about Albies earlier because you spent a little bit more time with the Braves, uh, Matt, but. You said he's out there with Ron Washington almost every single day working on his defensive game. They have their drills they do every single day Albies and Ron do he doesn't he doesn't rain shine day game night game it doesn't matter. That's a foul tip and hit the dirt. Yeah that was that change up again. Good piece of hitting. Let's stay in the fight. Just nicked it, probably used all 33 inches of that bat he has. And Jan Gomes took a good shot to the ribs. We'll call those ribs, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family broadcast. <laughs> Absolutely. My kids are at home watching. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I think he got inner thigh on that on that foul ball but yeah there's that ball starts that looks like a strike all the way in and then almost hits Freeman in the back leg that's yeah. how much break he has on it. Yeah that's that like little slider cutter day throws the lefties. Payoff. Got him. Fifth punch out. Side retired. First time he gets through the Braves order in order and it's one two three sitting down for Atlanta as we've reached the bottom of the third scoreless from Nationals Park and the Nats hitless in their first two tries against Mike Soroka. Two more games for the rest of the regular season live on YouTube. 
It's the Rays and the Dodgers exclusively on YouTube. First pitch 10-10 Eastern Time, 7-10 out in L.A. on the 17th of September. That's this coming Tuesday. And then a week and a day after that, mark your calendar, September 25th, the Cardinals match up with the Diamondbacks. The Cardinals lead the National League Central. They've made a huge push in the second half of the season, and the Arizona Diamondbacks are just three and a half games away from a wild card position. And look who just threw on a headset for us. Julio Tehran joining for this half inning on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Julio, thank you so much for joining us, a worldwide audience, and we appreciate the time. How are you? And I asked Patrick Corbin how he was doing sleep-wise. I think you got a little more sleep than uh, the other side. So how many hours did you log last night? Um, actually, we did... Uh Six, seven hours. Uh, we got here at two, uh, 2 in the morning, 2 a.m. So it wasn't bad at all. I know they got uh, they got here later than us, so it's pretty tough to schedule for both of us. Hey, Huli, this is Matty Diaz going, your former teammate. Will you tell Fulte to get out the way? I mean, will you tell Fulte we love him? He's got a great beard. There he is, yeah. They say okay, you're in the great. way. Yeah. <laughs> they love you, but you're in the way. We love you, Fulte. We love you. <laughs> Huli, I... I, I I got to say, we are watching Soroka do some fun stuff this year. How many times have you seen it? Got in a little trouble in the second inning, walk, walk, and then gets the double play. How many times have you seen that this year? Well, he's, he's been doing a great job, uh, great job the whole season long. Uh, obviously, it's part of the season to have a game, tough game, but he's, uh, he's been incredible for us. Julio, what has been the key to your success on your durability over the last seven years? We, we saw a graphic earlier that you've had 30 games started in the last seven plus last seven seasons. What's the key for you? Uh, I just prepare. I prepare every season, every off season to uh, obviously to make my 30 stars. Uh, I want to thank God. Obviously, we need to be. Uh, I need to be healthy for that, and that's how I prepare. But as uh, this is something that I'm being proud of myself uh, that I got this uh, this season. In the, I mean, this season that I make my 30 stars again, and uh, you know, just looking forward, looking forward now. I know I got to prepare for my next uh, uh, my next season, but uh, we still have a uh, got a business to take care. Of. Jan Gomes, Max Scherzer, Trey Turner do up in this last of the third for the Nationals against Soroka, and that's a nice stop by Freeman. Over to Soroka covering first and one down. So do you have any advice for young fans pitching hopefuls across the world that want to keep their arm as durable as possible? Someone like you really a role model for so many others that want to stay on the mound every fifth day. What are some keys growing up taking care of your arm and nowadays as well? I mean growing up it was it was just like a regular kid. I, I just want to get a ball in my hand and just just throw. But uh, when I went signed, that was when I was the, when I made the different uh, off season. I think that is the, the biggest when you gotta have. The, obviously, you wanna you wanna take care of you, uh, your arm. Uh, the way I start my off season, I always like to run. Obviously, um, when I start playing catch, it's just like easy. I don't really go uh, crazy with it. My bullpen sections, uh, I don't start them into uh, probably three weeks before spring training. And I don't, I don't like to go hard. I just like just to get my arm in, uh, you know, like the way I wanted to start in the first spring training. Well, we're watching, we're watching Max Scherzer ask for his own appeal, and he gets himself <laughs> punched up. He wasn't going to appeal it, and so Max asked for it. That's funny. Max is a pretty good hitting pitcher. Julio, who's the best hitter on the Braves staff? This has been an argument since Hudson and Smoltz used to go after it all the time. Well, right now I would say that is uh, Max Free. He, uh, the way he prepared for the, he go in the box. He's just like a regular, like a normal hitter. Uh, we don't really go, we don't really see the different guy. Another guy that uh, he goes in there and like uh, grind every uh, bat like he does. Free's done some pinch running too, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a, he's an athlete. He's an athlete. He can do everything. Uh, I mean, running wise, pitching wise, uh, everything he do. He's got four doubles, 11 hits on the season. He's been great. Trey Turner up with two outs here for Soroka. How excited are you for some postseason baseball as well? You could clinch as a team as early as tomorrow, and the division is in very good shape for Atlanta as well. Well, yeah, we're excited. We are excited to uh, to see that. Uh, we obviously we wanna we did it last year, 
and uh, this year it's not a uh, it's not a different this year we come and we uh, we came hungry than uh, last year I think we got we have a better team than last year uh, and we want to go uh, all the way through the uh, through the end and we really focus on that right now. Huli, thank you so much for joining us, buddy. We appreciate you having you on. Thank you for moving Fulton for us, too, man. He was, he was right in the way. And you're much prettier than him. Much prettier. All right, guys, you were awesome. Thank you, uh, Julio Tehran on with us. And there he is. He looks upset. You see, Matt. Are we upset? I love it. Listen, that guy is a comedian. He keeps that locker room loose. He is a key to their success. Their their hot start since he came back from they sent him down this year. Mike Fulton They sent him down and accredited him. He came back handling his business. So I picked on Fulty, but I'm happy. I'm happy. He's I'm happy. He's happy now. <laughs> yeah, I had a chance to play with Fulty when I was rehabbing double A Corpus Christi when, when he was in the Astro system. He's a great guy. It's nice to see him have such great success at the big league level. Donaldson so smooth turning around and making the play. Mike Soroka has sat down the Nationals in order in two of his first three innings. No hits for Washington through three and no score tonight from Washington D.C. so far. The MLB game of the week live on YouTube. Scott Braun, Matt Diaz and Justin Maxwell and a little more on Nationals manager Dave Martinez who is joining us very soon. It's his second year running the team taking over for Dusty Baker and last year uh, they did not make the postseason this year they are well on their way and he is loving this 2019 team he's standing by with Heidi Watney Heidi yeah got to be loving this 2019 team and loving the Max Scherzer is back to full health got into a little bit of trouble there in the second inning then struck out the next three guys he struck out five of the last six is this vintage Scherzer well, this is Max being Max I mean uh, he could do that kind of stuff I mean what makes him really great is that he's so competitive. When guys get on base, that's when he gets that's when he gets really tough. On the other side, Soroka hasn't given up a hit to you guys yet. Gave up a couple of walks there. What's making him so tough tonight? He's throwing a lot of strikes in the zone. He's in the zone with everything. Breaking balls, changeups, really good. So we got to get the ball up a little bit and then uh, tune the swing. I mean, we'll, we'll get him, but we got to get the ball up. On a night like this, where both pitchers went ahead of the teams and both teams are pretty tired, is hitting just going to be hard to come by? Not to mention two great starters on the mound. No, we got two two really good pitchers, so uh, we got to scratch and claw and just put, make uh, make get quality at bats. I mean, that's that's the key is get quality at bats. I saw you go down and give Howie Kendrick a hug. Is that a superstitious thing? Yeah, he didn't did come see me today, so I had to get one. <laughs> All right, thank you. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Back to you, Scott. That's awesome, Heidi. And in our manager meeting, Heidi was asking him about any superstitions. And yes. he said he was especially superstitious during his playing days, maybe not as much as a manager, but there you go. She found something. Yeah, she sure did. I mean, <laughs> baseball players are weird with their all little quirks that they have. And, you know, what better day to talk to them about that than Friday the 13th? Yeah. He was he was a teammate of Wade Boggs, perhaps the most superstitious player of all time. He he didn't want to talk about his, but he immediately threw Wade's superstitions under the bus. Yeah, that was a funny one. Uh, I guess Wade Boggs had this bat that he had that he'd leave on the, the batting turtle during batting practice, and it was always there. So one day, when, when Wade Boggs was doing the base running routine, he got out to second base, and Davey grabbed that bat and took a couple pitches, took a couple hacks, <laughs> and they said uh, Wade Boggs noticed it <laughs> the third pitch of the round and came screaming over the mound, came sprinting run over the mound, said, hey, put that bat down. <laughs> took the bat out of his hand. It's hilarious. That's a strike to Donaldson. Heidi, what else can you add to this combo? Oh, well, you know, speaking of Wade Boggs, I heard that a little someone in the booth may used to have a couple of uh, familiar ticks to Wade Boggs. Matt Diaz, I heard your dad used to have you take exactly the same amount of swings as Boggs did, and you had to have the same exact sandwich before every game. My dad didn't make me do the sandwich, but yes, the, sw the <laughs> swings, the 50 T swings every day, the exact same way were, were from my dad. Yes, Heidi. And this is why YouTube's so great, because someone <laughs> from my family must have sold me out. Thanks, Heidi. <laughs> Nothing ever dies. I did go around asking a bunch of players, like, hey, it's Friday the 13th. Do you have any superstitions? Are you nervous about this? And in true baseball player form, most of them said, it's Friday the 13th? Really? I didn't know that. So there you go. Most players have no idea what day it is. Did you know what day it was when you were playing? No. No. Matt, you? I did on Sundays because it was a day game. <laughs> Donaldson to a diving turner for out number one. Trey can move. Yes, he can. He's very fast, very fast. Elite speed. This national team has three guys who can actually pick him up and put him down very well. 
There's Josh. Josh. Josh loves elevating the ball. He's mad at himself. He found a barrel there. He's actually found more barrels this year than any time in his career, according to Statcast. I don't think that one quite qualifies as a barrel, but he has hit the ball hard more consistently this year than he ever has, according to Statcast. So let's talk about Statcast for a little bit, because sometimes some fans, you know, if you're not an everyday fan, if you're not watching MLB Network all the time, some fans really don't understand. You know the stat cast the whole launch angle thing. So when you say he's, he's barreled the most balls is it the velocity thing off the bat. Yeah that's part of it the stat cast uses certain measurements to find what a barrel when a bat finds a barrel he's got over 60 barrels on the year and, that's and there's one, one. There's from Marcakis that's going to roll to the wall and he's got himself a double and two hits in two plate appearances back from the injured list Nick Marcakis contributing and figuring out Max Scherzer tonight. Yeah, I know Snickers definitely happy to have him back in the lineup. That's two at bats now, two laser beams. This ball actually took off on Robles. If you check it out here, Robles kind of didn't get that good of a jump. I think if he went off the bat right away, he maybe had a chance at that ball, but it looks like he didn't see it quite well. Yeah, Nick. His 23rd career hit against Scherzer, most all time. Nobody has his number. More than Marcakis. And here's Matt Joyce taking a strike low in the zone. Now, if I found out that stat, if I'm, if I'm in the same clubhouse as him, I'm going up to Nick. If I'm Freddie Freeman, I'm like, Nick, what is the difference? What's the key? <laughs> what is going on? Because I think for me, my guy was Kershaw. I was, le I was righty. I faced lefty lefties all the time. I think I was 0 for 15 lifetime career against Kershaw. Couldn't figure that guy out. Yeah, I went. Uh, I, I had a similar situation. I was over career against Billy Wagner, and as a left-handed closer and a right-handed pinch hitter, I got to face him all the time. I ran into another bench guy who hit him quite well. I asked him what he did. He gave me his secret, and I I started to hit Billy Wagner much better. So what was the secret? The secret was you let him strike you out on the inside pitch because okay. you're not going to get to it anyway. Yeah. But he will miss out of the plate on occasion. Don't miss that one. And I was so trying to get to the inside pitch off him because I knew that's where he was trying to go that I would chase inside. I jam myself. I'd swing at pitches I had no business hitting. So yeah Billy Wagner started to hit him a little bit. You went three for ten career against him. Your last two at bats both hits against Wagner. Nice. And who was that teammate who gave those gems of secrets? <laughs> I don't know if Billy wants. I, I don't know if I want Billy to drive. Up. I think he lives near here in Virginia somewhere and I think he may drive to find this person <laughs> and take him to lunch. <laughs> no. <laughs> no Matt I can attest to that. I faced Wagner in 07 when I got called up as a rookie and his slider was so nasty that I couldn't I couldn't actually react to it. Right. it so it broke so late that I couldn't swing at it. I would only swing it when I was looking for the fastball in and that's when he throw that back foot slider and I chase it when I started looking for the fastball away the slider wasn't near as effective. 2 2 to Joyce counts full. Well this is where Max goes to work. He hates earned runs like all pitchers do. And we saw earlier in the game he's going to start bearing down here. Keep an eye on that pitch count. We know he doesn't believe in pitch counts, but he's still coming back from that injury. They're going to need him in the postseason, so they're not going to let him go 140 pitches tonight. That's fouled back. Twin Gaming TV goes, I love, love, love mid game interviews. Well, guess what? We have one more coming. Brian Snitker after this half. Last four starts for Max, and that. One on the very bottom was his finest and his most recent start and it came against this squad on Sunday. This is the rematch Soroka versus Scherzer and so far it's living up to its name. Joyce making contact through the hole he's got a knock and Marquez is being waved around it's fumbled in right field. Run comes across. It's one nothing Braves. Matt Joyce with the RBI single. A lot of Braves fans wondering what's going to happen to Matt Joyce. He's been so hot with Nick Marcakis coming back. Brian Snicker rides the hot hand and it certainly pays off. He hits a ball hard enough to get through the infield. Would be where a straightaway second baseman would play. So Max might be a little frustrated with the shift right there. 
Yeah I know when fans see the guys shifted they have so many numbers today and so many metrics that they measure in terms of where guys consistently hit the baseball that you know the defensive lineup they were definitely in the right, right place at the time but Joyce just found the hole. Tyler Flowers going after the first pitch and lofting it to right center Victor Robles calling for it. And there's out number two on pitch number 70 from Scherzer. Justin, do you ever hit eight hole in your life? Dansby Swanson hitting in the eight hole. He's done it quite a bit. But this is a situation as an eight hole hitter, you don't know exactly how they're going to handle you. With a guy like Max Scherzer, he's probably going to come after you. A lot of teams pitch around the eight hole in this situation just so they have the pitcher and don't risk any more damage. Yeah, I hated it. It was <laughs> awful. I remember one time we were playing here, playing against the Orioles, and, uh, and I was hitting the eight hole. I think I came up with two outs. Certain situation like this. And they didn't give me any pitches to hit, and I wanted to hit really bad. And so I ended up chasing. They got out of the inning so they can lead off the inning with the pitcher come next inning. Um, there's a lot of strategy, and I, I, I actually think it's the hardest place to hit for a National League batter because you never know what's going to come. They, they definitely are coming after you here in this situation. So they do not want to lead off. They, they want to lead off the inning with the pitcher in the next inning. I mean, even there, it's 1 0 count. And Dansby Swanson's thinking that's a hitter's count, and he throws him that slider that starts and looks like a fastball, then breaks so late. Now, now he's sitting at 1 1 back even count. So that's why it makes it so tough. You have to be patient. It takes a certain kind of mentality to be an eight hole hitter. You really have to kind of be selfless in a way and be patient. I was not a very patient hitter. Bobby Cox loved putting me eight hole. He said, because you swing at everything anyway. <laughs> and if you do you just say I was trying to expand the zone to get a hit so they didn't pitch to the pitcher so I was able to play it off a little bit. Nice. Yeah. So uh, I was not a, I was not that selfless eight hole hitter that you're talking about Dansby has chased two out of the zone now he, Max has thrown three pitches all out of the zone yet he has a one two count. Right and now this is where Max could just maybe blow a fastball right by him to be done because Dansby is all crossed up here he has no idea what's coming. And there it was. Fastball hard in. That's right. Foul ball, so we'll come back and do it again. A one two count to Swanson. Yeah, it's one of those things. When you're when you're a player, when you're scuffling, baseball is a funny game where, you know, if I wanted to lift heavy weights, I would have to try harder, right? Right. But for baseball, <laughs> actually you kind of have to do less and step back. And then things will start to come together. But if you go out there and you try to grip that hard and swing hard, no, the ball doesn't go anywhere. And if you really want to try to get a hit, you end up chasing, and you won't get a hit. Just a buck 43 in his 14 games off the injured list. 19 strikeouts. I once had a high school baseball coach that said, your body doesn't know how to get a hit. Your body knows how to keep your hands inside the ball. Your body knows how to wait back, but your body doesn't know how to get a hit. That was the best advice I was ever given about hitting. <laughs> Stay to back right on that. center. That was a nice piece of hitting. And Swanson's body's got a hit. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Joyce. And the throw. Too late. RBI double for Dansby Swanson with two strikes off Scherzer and it's 2 nothing Atlanta. That has to feel good for Dansby there. You can see the excitement. Look when you're not when you're scuffling as a hitter everybody knows it. Mom knows it. She's calling. Dad knows it. He's calling. Fans <laughs> know it. You want to turn your phone off. But this is a great piece of hitting. Two strikes. He's battling. Max went back to the fastball. And Dansby stayed on it and laced the line drive into right center field. Scott Justin makes the point. I don't know what the equivalent would be of calling a game, but when your mom calls and says you're more than your profession, that's the worst phone call to get. <laughs> that means you know you're struggling at the plate. I understand from my high school playing days. <laughs> Here's Soroka. Yeah I didn't realize how hard baseball is until I like really watched my first game when I retired. I remember sitting up in the stands of good friends with Steven Souza Jr. 
and he was on Tampa Bay at the time and they were playing the Orioles and I'm sitting in the stands and he's hit, he's playing I'm watching the ball go to home plate and I'm like I can't even see the ball How in the world did I hit that that's insane <laughs> you guys are good I got to give it to you Soroka that was a hot shot to Zimmerman he'll take it himself and that's it for the Braves portion of the fourth a hard charge from the bottom portion of the order against Max Scherzer. They crack the code. Matt Joyce with Nick Markakis at second. Making it one nothing Atlanta. And then Dansby Swanson at times in that at bat looking like he was searching for something Well, he found it going the other way and bringing home Joyce and making it two nothing Braves the first place club in the National League East led by Brian Snitker manager of the year in 2018. It's his 43rd year in the organization. He knows these players. He knows this organization as well as anyone that has ever been a part of it. And they love him leading the way. 90 wins last year. They're already up to 91 wins in 2019 and look like they're on their way to a division crown. The MLB game of the week live on YouTube with Brian Snitker joining us in just a moment. He'll be with Heidi. And he's got to be happy after what he just saw from the bottom portion of the order. Scoring a couple runs and Mike Soroka pitching so well on the mound this late in the season and Heidi is with Brian Snitker now. Well you just went out to talk to the umpire making a change in this game you said you're taking Freddie out is he okay. Yeah he'll be okay He's just having a little problem with his elbow and we just want to get him out it's kind of uncomfortable so we're getting him looked at. Well, having a two run lead right now makes you probably feel a little bit better about that move Soroka out there tonight hasn't even given up a hit to this team last time he gave up a couple of home runs on Sunday against the same team what's been the difference well, for him. I think he's went to his change up his breaking ball a little earlier than he did the other day I think the other day they kind of jumped him a little bit before he got off the ground and now he kind of hit the ground running so to speak in this game I believe. You have Nick Markakis back in the lineup two for two off Max Scherzer. How about that off the I.L. and two for two off Scherzer. How important is he to this lineup. Oh my God. He is so important to our whole club. The clubhouse our team our idea everything. I mean that guy just brings so much. I think it's two of the hardest balls he's hit all year even too after sitting around for six weeks. So um, it just feels really good to get him back out there. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, Thanks Heidi. And thank you for that bit of information. Mike Soroka ready to go for inning number four against the Nationals. No more Freddie Freeman for the rest of this game. It sounds like some elbow discomfort. And Mr. Do it every do it all, Charlie Culberson at first base. That'll be worth keeping an eye on if you're a Braves fan. If you're a baseball fan, we saw Yelich go down the other day in a terrible, terrible way. That that can change uh, MVP race and and a wild card race. Freddie Freeman certainly could do that for the Braves, but Snickers seemed to think he'd be okay. Eaton, Rendon, Soto, two, three, four of the Nationals order, and Soroka pitches upstairs, a ball and no strikes. Yep. Culberson hitting 265 this year. Had a big 2018 filling in for the Braves in a number of spots including for Dansby Swanson at times at shortstop and he can play everywhere and he's had some big hits Adam Eaton with a big one that's going to go towards the wall he's got himself an extra base hit and he'll stop at second with a leadoff double. Well the Naps fans know him as Spanky I want to know how that nickname came about but Spanky spanked that baseball in the gap that was nice. First hit of the night for the Nationals. And there goes your no-no, Soroka. I know somebody in the dugout was screaming that because that was my favorite thing to scream. Well, let me tell you something. This right here is absolutely blistered by Adam Eaton. The sinker comes back over, catches too much of the plate, and he hits a laser. And right now, Brian Snicker is going, why did Heidi Watney ask me and tell me that my pitcher had not given up a hit yet? <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on Heidi. I'm not. I'm sure Snicker is. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That was a great piece of hitting. Now middle of the order. Anthony Rendon as good as anybody tied for the league lead in ERA and RBIs has a chance to take that right now. 117 of them on the year and a first pitch strike. Superstitions on Friday the 13th. No way. <laughs> Who would have thought it. 
Yeah, I know the Nats are definitely happy to have uh, a healthy Adam Eaton. He missed some time in the last week, so that's a good sign. He moved, he was moving very well in that double. He got drilled in the back of the leg, missed some time. Yeah, deep bone bruise on the side of his right knee, and he was day to day pinch hitting, now back in the starting lineup the last few days. Yeah, he's a key cog in that outfield in, in addition to Robles. I mean, can make some highlight plays, but I think the thing they enjoy having him about having him the most is his plate appearance. He works pitchers. He can put the ball in play. He's got some power. The Nats are dealing with a couple of injuries to their position players. Matt Adams left yesterday. He tweaked his triceps. Uh -oh. And Rendon going long. To the warning track, Markakis has it. Well, that's why you have the Gold Glover out there. <laughs> Deep part of the ballpark there in left center. And Rendon gave that one a long ride, and Markakis ran it down, the former Gold Glover. This ball just ran in just a little more than he thought it would, jammed him a little bit, couldn't quite pull his hands all the way inside that ball, and caught it a little thick, as we used to call it. And Markakis runs that ball down. Acuna, oh, that would have been bad. Yeah, watch out. It was funny. You could see the look Marquez gave him, like, hey, look, Acuna, I've been doing this a while, buddy. <laughs> I got this. I got it. I got it. <laughs> but his answer might be, you haven't been doing the left field thing for a That's while. That's true. I'm going to hustle. It's just his 30th career appearance in left field, over 2,000 appearances in right field. Yeah, usually going to your left like that and in right field the only thing to your left are fans. So he's not used to maybe hearing the voice coming from center, uh, coming from left field towards center field. I don't think Acuna Jr. is going to tell Marcakis what Andrew Jones used to tell me on balls. What like was that? that? What was that? Just get out of the way. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd call that and Andrew Jones was like even before I could catch it. He'd run in front of me he goes no you don't and he'd catch it and just run on in. So it's funny you talk about Andrew Jones during my time in the Yankees organization. He was there and uh, I remember seeing his shoes and he had this glove on the heel of his shoe and it had 10 in it. And it took me a while until I realized that the gold the glove was gold. And then, oh, okay, he's got ten gold gloves. Okay, that makes sense. I put the, I put the two together. He was, he was pretty phenomenal. To play with. <laughs> and he made it look effortless. Now, he was a guy who also came into the league uh, 18 years old during his time with the Braves. Yeah. We have some phenomenal outfield video during this next half inning break. No commercials here on YouTube. A YouTube clip you don't want to miss coming soon. Bottom of the fourth. Juan Soto walked in his first trip. Has a 2-1 count. And Eaton in scoring position. Yeah, this is where Juan has been so good all year for the Nationals. Men in scoring position. Ooh, Soroka gets the call there. Top of the zone. <laughs> really, we said this earlier today, and I think Juan Soto is as good as a robo-ump would be. He takes that pitch, and he kind of shakes his head when the umpire calls it a strike. And Juan, I got to agree with you. That's probably just an inch or two off the plate, but you are as good as an automated strike zone. He is that good at strike zone discipline. Yeah, I like to joke around sometimes with people. You know what? I would have never struck out in the big leagues if there were, uh, you know, if they had robots. I never would have punched out. I think when Juan Soto retires someday, he could be a superstar umpire. Fourth in on base percentage. Fifth in walk rate, and that's weighted runs created plus. 47% better than league average. League average on that number is 100. So one and a half players equals one Juan Soto at the plate in terms of his hitting damage this year. Or going back to 2018, I should say. It's three and two. Heidi, what else can you add? 
But you guys are talking about Juan Soto's plate discipline. It's not just good, it's historic. He's the only player in MLB history with an on-base percentage over 400 in his age 19 season. That was last year. And it's a very short list of basically all Hall of Fame players who've had an on-base percentage over 400 in their age 20 season. That's this year. He also has a shot at hitting more home runs than any player ever before his 21st birthday. He's got 55. Only Mel Ott at 61 and Tony Canigliaro at 56 have more than Soto in his career thus far, guys. Thanks, Heidi. I mean, you can't say it enough. He's 20. He's 20 years old. Most home runs before 21st birthday. And he has an okay chance to, to catch Mel Ott. Uh, he will turn 21 in October. The regular season is what we're counting here. So at least second probably should be alone in that spot passing Tony C by the end of the year. You guys seeing these names we're talking about with his on base percentage and his home runs. These are historic names like Heidi said. These are Hall of Famers. That's ball four. Four hundred plus on base in your age 21 or younger season since 1900. It's not a long list, but it's a list that you're very familiar with. <laughs> These are legendary names and Juan Soto is on there two times yeah. last year and this year. His 19 year old season is the only teenager in the history of baseball that was 400 on base percentage then one of three to have a 400 on base percentage at the age of 20 and actually one of six but four of the six are Hall of Famers Juan Soto and Alex Rodriguez are the other two. Yeah 19 years old I was trying to figure out how to do laundry at College Park on my own. I hate to admit this but I graduated high school at 19 years old. I was a, <laughs> I was a slow colorer. I failed it failed kindergarten. How was your plate discipline. Was it 400 plus major league ish at that point in high school. Sure we can go with that. Because I guess like, high school pitching. Yeah, I hit like 580. <laughs> against as, guys throwing 70. As Drupal Cabrera back to the pitcher, Soroka makes the second out. Eaton to third, Soto to second. Now here's a guy who's coming up to me that is the key to the Washington National stretch run. Um, Zim's battled all year with injuries, but he's very well known here in D.C., and his name will go up in the ring of honor when he decides to hang up his cleats but a oh, healthy Ryan Zimmerman makes this Washington Nationals team very very scary. I was encouraged by what the way Davey spoke about him in our managers meeting today Davey Martinez talking about how he looks healthy how he feels like he can give him two games on one game off him and Howie Kendrick are kind of going to rotate in that role until they find find out what's going on with Adams. Yeah Adams going down on the check swing yesterday. Right. It was cut off by that Eaton double, but it's a tweaked triceps in his shoulder from yesterday. And Zimmerman, in his seven games since coming back from plantar fasciitis, 292, three homers, 10 RBIs, the slugging above 700. They'll take that. Yeah, I was here when he came off the IL and he homered in his return. Down. He also homered on Wednesday. He knows he's the senior member. Making fun of himself multiple times this year including his home run celebration. Pretending he's using a walker in the dugout. He's younger than me. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he's not old. Get out of here Tim. And here's that home run from Wednesday. Target Field is a launching pad this year, if you haven't heard. The Twins hit a ton of homers, and the Nationals like hitting there as well. Nationals scored a ton of runs in that series, uh, making a mockery of everyone in that Twins rotation other than Jose Barrios. So here's Zim. Good hitters count. Eaton on third, Soto at second, and Zimmerman connects to center oh, field. Man, Acuna is there. That ball is, that ball is scalded. It hangs up long enough for Acuna to come in and catch it and prevent any damage. But it is the first inning for the Nationals to get a hit, a double from Adam Eaton to start off the frame. 
and they leave two base runners on. It's 2 0 Braves over the Nationals after four innings. So Nick Markakis ended up making that catch out in left field, but you have to make sure that you can hear each other when you're communicating with Ronald Acuna Jr. There are fans that like to heckle, and Matt Diaz knows what I'm talking about. Oh, no. <laughs> ahead one and two and Bay drives one to left field tagging a third is Murphy Diaz makes the catch Murphy heads home the throw is cut oh. off the toss to third and now Wright is tagged oh, out oh boy a sacrifice fly for Jason Bay but David Wright trying to go from second to third on a ball easily cut off he can throw he has his shoes tied tonight I think the socks are the same and that video on YouTube has about three million views. My kids think I'm famous because of that video. So whoever <laughs> that gentleman was in New York, uh, I thank you. I mean, I guess I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, that was an interesting day. Uh, my socks always match, and my sideburns are always even. Those are two things you never have to worry did you about. Stare into the sun? <laughs> no, I never stared into the sun as a kid. That, did you either? That was one I never heard. I heard right. a lot. Actually, I played left field there in City Field, and I had someone throw batteries on me. I don't know what it, what, what, it, what it's about City Field and le, uh, and left field to make people go crazy. Acuna Jr. with a base hit to left to start off the fifth inning against Max Scherzer. That guy out there was a professional heckler. He was. I, I, it really, the clip doesn't do a great job. He kind of was quiet after showing the socks for for almost a half an inning. Like uh, I got back out the next inning, it was still going on, but the socks kind of shut him down for a minute. Sometimes loud people just want to be heard. Sometimes people want to steal 40 bases in a season. This would be a great matchup right here. Scherzer are not great at holding runners. Acuna with a single got a shot here, Scotty. 36 stolen bases, tops in the National League. He's going. Albies pulls Albies the bunt he, back. He gave it to him. He gave it to him. He squared so he could steal it. Or Ozzy worked on bunting pregame today, like we said, and maybe he was looking to put it into practice. Yeah, but I, I look at the take. He pulled back kind of early Way just early. to block Young Gomes' eyes. Yeah. Youngest players in history with 30 30 seasons, and he might put together the fifth 40 40 season that we've ever seen in Major League history. One home run and four stolen bases away. With a couple weeks to go in the season, I like his chances at this point. I do too. Yeah, the last guy to do it was a Washington National, Alfonso Soriano. That's right. I mentioned serves are not great at holding runners. The last two seasons, 16 for 19 when he's pitching, when runners try attempt a stolen base off of him. This year, runners eight for nine against him. I think it's because he's so dominant; they hardly ever get out there. <laughs> That's a good point. Or Scherzer's more like Jack Morris, who would let you steal second, let you steal third, and just stare at you and say, "You can't steal home." That's what he would. That's what he would tell base runners, and he'd beat them the next time up, from what I'm told. <laughs> nice. And then they probably got out the third at bat. <laughs> That's probably true. I don't have any verification. I'm not old enough to have played against Jack Morris. However, he is a Hall of Famer. Albies pokes one to left and it drops for a base hit. Acuna Jr. moves up to second. I like what the speed element does 
to pitchers because it makes them stop focusing on what they're doing to the batter at the plate. So I noticed there Max held a little bit longer when he came set. Probably because he had Acuna on base and then you know let Albies get a little bit more comfortable in the box. Yeah, you saw that change. It didn't have the depth. It had the movement. It moved side to side, but it didn't have the depth of the others. Maybe, maybe holding, 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 like he was trying to hold Acuna there, threw him off a little bit. But a nice job of taking what he was giving him there behind an account by Ozzy Alves. Oof, this is the first at bat for Culberson, and the play is to second for the force out. Acuna Jr. looks like he. Might have gotten a little tripped up there. I saw a little hop as he passed third. I think he was worried about the ball being caught on this on this bunt. Watch this. Oh, there it is. Uh oh. Well, he's still out there. Trainers haven't come out. That's, That's Rendon making the play to second. Saw Cunha do a quick start and stop right there. Yeah, that might have might, might have just grabbed a little bit down in the calf. I don't know. I never ran fast enough to pull a muscle. <laughs> yeah, you kind of had to hold on that the bunt because it was elevated. Didn't want to run into a double play. Now Donaldson with one out and runners on the corners. See Cunha get ready to go. Break back and then break again. Something may have grabbed there, but or knowing Acuna, he could just be hopping around on one foot, having fun. Definitely a lighthearted personality. Definitely a beast. We need to get back to that nickname, Scott yes. Ron. So I've been pushing it. We had a long conversation about this before the game started. Yeah. So is that a self-proclaimed nickname? It started on a walk-off hit or a big home run where he pounded his chest and in Spanish yelled, "I'm I'm a beast," <laughs> and it kind of stuck for a minute. And then it disappeared. So we're really thinking there's no one else with a nickname Beast. No. He's 21 years old, heading in for potentially a 40 40 season. He's going to be a beast for a long time. Why can't that be his nickname? His numbers look like he should be a beast. Yeah, no one else owns that nickname. It makes a lot of sense. Josh Donaldson fouls that one off. And I had a conversation with Acuna in spring training, and he said, This is the year of the beast. They're going to call me that. Ooh, sure got away with that one right there. Miss centered cut. Just where I would look if I were facing Max. Ooh, that's a great swing. Just got underneath it, got a little under it. The bringer of rain. It's a great nickname himself. Yeah, I'd for, love to have that pitch back to bring yeah, some for rain. For a guy back. who concentrates on launch angle, that's a great nickname. He wants to hit the ball up. Looking for his first hit tonight. He's got a 3 1 count. Are you sensing Max's location is a little bit off lately? Yeah, he hasn't been as sharp as we're used to seeing. Um, you know, he's sitting at 89 pitches now. He's had to work pretty much all game, every half inning, minus that one where he's three up, three down. He's had to work. These Braves hitters are making him work. There's a swing and miss. Bullpen action. Wander Suera. Yeah, if I'm Brian Snicker right now and I see that activity going on in the bullpen, I'm, so, I'm feeling pretty good about tonight's ball game. Zimmerman doesn't have a play too deep into the dugout. You see Donaldson missing pitches that off of other pitchers he crushes. He just does not have Max's number. Josh Donaldson heading into tonight was batting 111 with a slugging percentage of only 222 off Scherzer. You got to leave him in there if you're Snicker. You're not playing matchups with a guy like Josh Donaldson. You're playing Josh Donaldson, but he has a he has a tough time with Scherzer. His hard hit rate is launch angle up from his 2015 MVP campaign with the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, he's definitely looking like the Josh Donaldson of old. Great at bat. Bags full for Nick Markakis. 
who has some epic at bats against Max Scherzer in his career. Now we, we can talk about the Nationals bullpen woes. This is where you would bring in a lefty. Nick Markakis first pitch welcome back from the injured list a fractured wrist suffered in late July a single and then in the fourth inning how about a double roped to right center and brought home by Matt Joyce to score the first run of the game for the Braves they end up with two in the fourth and now the base is loaded in the fifth with just one out. Yeah, those two balls were hit at over 100 miles an hour. The single 106 miles an hour and that double in the gap 103 miles an hour. And Brian Snicker gave us some insight on how they got him game ready. A lot of people thinking you're on the IL you're coming back to the big leagues after minor league seasons are over. There's no minor league rehab. What did they do. The Braves actually flew in a minor league pitcher while they were gone on this road trip to Atlanta to hang out with Nick Markakis and throw him live game situations sim game BP. Certainly paid off so far tonight. Yeah. You should th send him a thank you text because so far so good. Yeah, and how creative is that by the Braves organization? Like, you know, they're in it to win it, to find the guy. There's actually, it's more pressure on that minor league pitcher, right? Oh. I mean, he's got to come in and throw to a big leaguer at SunTrust Park. I mean, <laughs> come on. Great experience for him, too. Yeah, great experience. He's, he's He towed the rubber at SunTrust Park. And it just tells you the culture they're building there in Atlanta that a kid would do that and an agent would allow a kid to do that. Oh yeah definitely. Scherzer trying to get himself ready for October baseball but also he is in the thick of the National League Cy Young conversation. Change up call for a strike. I'm sitting next to two former hitters. Yeah. That was very generous. That, I think that ball toed that chalk line. <laughs> yeah. It almost hit the chalk line. Rob Drake has given some and he has taken some away tonight. So the all in all has been very pretty consistent. Uh oh center cut to center Robles backing up at the track and he's got it well deep enough to bring home Acuna Junior and make it three nothing Braves a long sack fly RBI for Nick Markakis another productive at bat against Scherzer. See yeah. Nick Markakis here. He is not intimidated by any fastball in baseball. This ball, they're trying to get it up. It tails down. It's going away. Markakis, one of the best at leveling out his swing through the ball. He doesn't just swing to the ball, he swings through it, was able to stay on that ball that faded away. Robles made a great catch though. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Nick kind of pimped this ball right here, got into a little trot. It Max actually looked like he thought it may have had a chance as well, but Robles had a great jump on that one and made a great play. Holberson moves up to third. Donaldson stays put at first base. And Markakis has himself an RBI to make it 3 0 Braves. Yeah, one thing that usually gets overlooked is the base running there. I mean, Kobelson tagged up on that ball. Now he puts himself in a good spot. You can you can score many, many, many ways from third base, even with two outs. Pass ball. When Scherzer throws his nasty changeup, it can bounce away from the catcher at times. There we go. I almost called that one. Didn't you, you know what? If I was as good as I was calling pitches <laughs> when I watch, I might have been a special player. You should have guessed more. You should have guessed more. Yeah, but play. when I guessed in the game, I was wrong. Oh, well, that's the thing. So you did guess. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> we'll take it now. It's good for us. We like it. Oh, one to Joyce. Oh, and two. But Scherzer approaching the century mark with pitches three away. This could be his last inning. Yeah, that sack five for Nick was actually his hardest hit ball of the day with no return. 109 miles per hour off the bat. 100.9. He just sees the baseball coming out of his hand. He's seeing it good. We got to get that pitcher's name. Who, who threw to him <laughs> at Suntrust <laughs> Park? He got him locked in. Markek is up to 333 lifetime against Scherzer. 23 for 69. Ooh. Strike three. The generosity continues. That outside corner is Max's friend. And it's his sixth strikeout. But another run for Atlanta. Nick Markakis does the damage. He starts the rally in the fourth. And he punches on a run for the Braves. 
in the fifth. It's 3 nothing. So there have only been four players to compile 40 homers and 40 steals in a single season. Ronald Acuna Jr. just scored run number three for Atlanta, and he may soon join that 40-40 club this season. Stand by. Which pitch is he going to run on? He's leaning a little bit right now. He's running. There's the throw. The fans are standing also. He stole it. It's his. He's got it. <laughs> this could be fun. Bonds goes on the first pitch. Reed is up early, but Bonds has done it. Barry Bonds has become the second man in the history of baseball with 40 homers and 40 steals in one season. And he will take the base home. And he said the reason he put the press on in September was that his teammates wanted him to do it. And he just did it. What an accomplishment. Alex, of course, needs just one more home run to join that 40 40 club. And that is hit well into right center field. Anderson goes back and see you later. There it is. Alex Rodriguez is now a 40 40 player. And a boy, Alex. Holy cow, 40 40. And that is only the third man in history. All eyes now on Soriano. Now here's the set. Runners going, the pitch is high, and no throw. He couldn't get it out of his glove. Alfonso Soriano has made history at RFK Stadium as the fourth player in big league history to have 40 homers and 40 steals. And he has pulled up the second base bag. It's all his now. Listen to this crowd. I mean, that sounds really fun when you get to 40 40. If it's a stolen base. You get to just pick up the base and walk home with it. Victor Robles swinging through a pitch from Mike Soroka to start the bottom of the fifth. It's 3 0 Braves, but the chase is on for Ronald Acuna Jr. to get to 40 home runs and 40 stolen bags. One home run shy, four stolen bases away from 40. I always wondered that. Is the grounds crew, are they on standby with an extra second base ready, <laughs> ready to go? I'm like, sure. They talked about that beforehand. What a constant that would be. The closest I ever got was 2009. I was a 10 10 guy, and I stole third in a meaningless situation. And, and David Wright looks at me at third. He goes, What did you steal third for? I said, I'm a 10 10 guy. <laughs> he said, I'll give you five grand if you come to spring training with that on your license plate of your car. But this, these guys are a lot bigger than 10 10 guys. Take a look at this. The youngest people to go 30 30. Mike Trout, you got him at age 20. Ronald Cunha Jr., the second. However, he is the youngest to go 35 35. Oh, nice. And you know, A Rod had a great career, Jose Canseco, and there's Bobby Bonds, who did nothing but help his son elevate his career into a phenomenal, phenomenal, arguably Hall of Fame career. Acuna Jr. has a chance. We have two weeks to go in the season. Yes. I mean, the home runs, that's almost a lock. He needs just one more. It's the stolen bases to get on, get yourself in a good spot, and also make sure that you're healthy. Right. Stolen bases can often lead to injuries. That ship to left. And Markakis got it. Playing left field like he's been there for years. And that ball dropped fast. Is that glove gold too? I mean, geez. It's golden right. It is. He just he gets a good jump here, takes one drop seven, just comes busting in, gets low, beats the ball to the ground. Nick, Nick, Nick can play outfield in any position. He's up there in age, but he's still very athletic. You see, Viewers at home, if you see his glove, if you see when his glove slides in and it's got that gold embossing, see right there next to his wrist, that's how you know if the guy has won a gold glove or not. I tried to buy that and put one on my glove and they wouldn't allow me to do that. But Did you really? Yeah, oh, well, no, I just said, what do you got to do to get one of those gloves? <laughs> they said, win a gold glove. I said, oh, I thought that was just an add on you could ask where we get to the big leagues. And they said, no, that, that's earned. Which is nice. It's nice to have goals out there. I knew I'd never get that. Jan Gomes, eight hitter, seventh consecutive start since Kurt Suzuki is down with an elbow injury. They had been splitting time for the majority of the season. Gomes, an all star last year, hit 266 with 16 home runs as a part of the Cleveland Indians. 
Yeah, we asked uh, Davey about Suzuki earlier today, and he said that he hasn't really started throwing yet. They're going to be cautious with him because they have the end goal in mind. I think he's still in some pain as well. So, no, that was a big blow to them, but it was. it's nice to have a veteran presence like Jan Gomes to just fill in. Both these teams go about the catching position very similar similarly there wasn't really a one there were like a one and a one a this year for the Braves we're seeing Tyler Flowers catch but he's been with Brian McCann all year when McCann was down they went and got a Cervelli Francisco Cervelli so they're putting a lot of emphasis on the older catchers that can handle the staff. Yeah and I think with the veteran guys that the Nationals have in their staff you talk about Scherzer Strasburg. Corbin and Adam Al Sanchez. I think they do like having that veteran presence behind the mound because it, it probably makes them feel at ease. I'm sure it helps a veteran pitcher, but think about the young staff from the Braves as well. You think about the Sorokas of the world, the Max Freeds of the world. Those guys, Brian McCann brought instant credibility with them. Tyler Flowers has earned it over the years there. Gomes strikes out. Yeah, we asked Snicker about that as well, and he said that it's nice to have the veteran guys like McCann and Flowers because it, he, he said his guys do their homework. They, they study up all the, all the opposing hitters. They have a game plan in mind, and they know what they're doing. Max Scherzer's day is officially done after five innings. Pinch hitter Andrew Stevenson in the nine spot and Tanner Rainey getting warm. Stevenson eight for twenty three this season that's a three forty eight batting average five walks. He's on base percentage close to five hundred of course a small sample size most of his time in the minor leagues. And Andrew is one of those national speedsters I've, I've referred to earlier this guy can really fly. I do want to point out something we're talking about the veteran catchers and how they do their homework for the Atlanta Braves. How many times have you seen a guy who's been a minor leaguer most of the year come in and pinch hit in September and the catcher need to take a timeout to go out and give the pitcher the scouting report or have the pitching coach run out and tell them what the scouting report is. None of that happened here. Tyler Flowers didn't skip a beat. He knew how to handle this and they're going right after him. Yeah, and I like what he did as well. He threw that one out of change up knowing you have a young young hitter who's looking to ambush and a hitter's count. He got him to chase. Goes around it's two and two. That's three change ups in a row. Well we know what the scouting report was. <laughs> Here comes a change up. Now back to Syracuse from a little while ago when I played in Syracuse there was a fan who used to tip pitches all the time. And he used to tell he used to tell us what was coming at the plate. No way. And he was right all the time. So you all used to I would listen up? to him and he would say here comes a change up. I hit it. Boom, there was a change up base hit. I'd look over him at first base, he'd be in the right field line. I'd be like, there you go, boy. Thanks for that hit. That's How would he know from right field? I have no idea. He was on it. They had a system down up there. We might have found something in Syracuse. Pitch number 80 from Soroka. Breaking ball pours it in and gets the strikeout. Not a big strikeout pitcher, just his third of the night, but look at the work done by Mike Soroka so far. It's three nothing Braves topping the Nationals after five innings. Soroka lost to Scherzer on Sunday, but the Braves had a very successful weekend series against Washington last week. It's a beautiful night for baseball in Atlanta. The Braves are taking the field for the first of four against their nearest competition and arch rival, the Washington Nationals. That ball is down. Acuna's getting the green light. Here he comes. A loop double. It's one to nothing. High fly ball opposite field. Chop house seats. And off Dozier's glove. Ozzie's going to come home and score to make it four to nothing. The Braves win their 11th consecutive game at home. Swing and a high fly ball. The ball is gone. It's one to nothing. Donaldson has left the building. Ray and Zimmerman, left field. See you later. It's four to three. Swing and a miss. He came back together. Strikes out Matt Adams. He struck him out. Swing and a drive, first pitch. It's two to nothing. See you 
Later, monster homer by Asdrubal Cabrera. Put another one on that talent. Back to back homers. McCann and Joyce. Ball game. He froze him. And Atlanta has won the series 5 4. Bang. Zoom goes Eaton here at the top of the first inning. It's the Nationals 2 and the Braves nothing. And that ball is into the monkey grass. A towering home run. Fly ball deep left field for Gomes. Gone. It's a multi home run game for Jan Gomes. But Defoe makes the play. The game is over. And a curly W's in the books. But the Braves grab three of four. They've won nine of 16 against the Nationals this year. And this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Washington, D.C. Seeing very successful baseball from the Nationals in the regular season going back to 2012, but they're looking to get over the postseason hump. They have not won a playoff series during that time period, despite winning the division in 2012, 2014, 2016, and 2017. Max Scherzer is done. Tanner Rainey enters the fold. The ERA in the mid fours, 72% fastballs, which reaches about 99 miles an hour, averages 98 with it, and 28% sliders. He brings the heat, Justin, but control is a major issue for him as he faces the bottom portion of the order for Atlanta. It's Flowers, Swanson, and Soroka, and a strike from Rainey. So what has been the biggest issue for him, and how can he fix it? Well, I think it has to do with his mental mindset. I mean, when the guy's throwing upper, upper 90s fastballs, most pitchers don't realize how hard it is to actually hit up a moving baseball as, as hard as it, as hard as it is. So for me, God didn't make me a pitcher for a reason because if I threw that hard, I would let everybody know and I would just go about my business in a totally different way. But for him, I think it's just being young and, and building that confidence. He's got to know that his stuff plays at this level. He's here for a reason and he just has to trust his stuff. So it's nice to see him get ahead here. Oh, too. Going right after Tyler Flowers with three pitches and the third one results in a ground ball. One away. Yeah I mean for a reliever I think getting strike one and maybe all pitchers in general. Getting strike one getting ahead is everything. And it was nice to see him start uh, Tyler out there with a good fastball. Second round selection by the Cincinnati Reds in 2015 out of the University of West Alabama. And then traded this offseason for Tanner Roark in December. Now Swanson who brought home a run in the fourth. Yeah for the Nats to give up Tanner Roark who was very good during his time here in D.C. I mean it says a lot about what they think about Tanner so he's just got to trust his stuff and go out there and dominate. He has the capability. Yeah you see that pitch right there that was a oh oh breaking ball I know I know Dansby Swanson hit a fastball middle way to the right center field gap last time up but when you're sitting there and your average fastball velocity on the year is almost 98 miles an hour and you start off the eight hole hitter with a breaking ball two in a row I just I, I got a question y your willingness to just go after him he needs uh, they need to hire Bartolo Colon as a special assistant to the Nationals to come sit with this kid and let him know that you can live off fastball if you just locate it. Yeah he was a frustrating at bat I mean <laughs> <laughs> you look up at the gun he's like eighty nine. And then you're running a hard 90 wondering what the heck went, what the heck went wrong on your rollover ground ball. I mean at 97 miles an hour the ball comes at the blink of an eye. It's hard to hit that. So tr trust it. Just go after him. He threw a really good 0 2 slider to Flowers and then a, a, a bad 0 1 slider a 0 0 slider to Swanson mm -hmm. and then a then a good 1 0 slider. So he's hit or miss with that slider but if he can just stay there. I mean that's Dansby's sweet spot middle away fastballs and that just jumps jumps out of Rainey's hands. His last appearance on Tuesday in Minnesota didn't work out recorded just one out 21 pitches. He started the eighth inning and gave up three runs off two hits and two walks. Yes for me the walks are the thing that's the killer. I mean free passes managers don't like him and I know pitchers don't like him as well but. I think he should just be more aggressive in the zone. Swanson to the left side on a hop for Rendon. Two gone. Mm -hmm. 
another pretty good breaking ball right there down down in the zone. I mean he might be finding a slider but you mentioned 70 percent fastball usage 72 percent fastball usage and it doesn't feel that way so far tonight it feels like he's more 50 50 and just these eight pitches but he's at the bottom of the order this is the kind of I mean if he starts the pitcher off here slider we're going to have some problems I think, <laughs> I think Davey might throw a clipboard at him or something. No, I think he'll I think he'll attack Soroka. He starts him off with 97 mile an hour heat but it misses. Don't you just challenge someone like this. Yeah I think he tried to but I, I know some pitchers do get mentally rattled when they know the pitchers up there and he's not going to swing so I think that comes into play as well. Yeah he knows Soroka is not going to swing the bat and you know mentally he might he might be thinking about it a little bit he might try to be too refined trying to aim a little bit instead of just being natural letting it flow. Again misses you almost think just give me some warm up tosses <laughs> right straight down the pipe. Yeah I mean I've tried to pitch before and it's definitely not an easy thing to do but. I think mentally he knows that Soroka is not swinging the bat so he's, he's trying to aim. Well, he missed his spot in all four attempts. That's a four pitch walk to Mike Soroka. Now he's got to face Acuna Jr. I played with a, a, a center fielder in a ball. You will recognize the name I think when I say it. And his name is Brandon Backey. And he would scream at our pitchers in this situation just throw strikes. Our farm coordinator said if you think it's so easy throw a bullpen tomorrow he threw a bullpen went to instructs was in the big leagues as a pitcher less than a year later. Pitched for Houston for quite a while. Good pitcher he showed he showed what could happen when you just throw strikes. He went after it. He also hit a big league homer before I did because he got to the big leagues faster than I did. <laughs> he signed a bat and sent it to me. He said my home run came first. <laughs> That's good. Well that goes to the saying don't talk about it be about it and he <laughs> definitely was. Wow that's a called strike on Acuna. Very very generous Rob. Rob Drake does not like our K zone box. Our pitch cast here on YouTube is pretty accurate. Look at Gomes framing. Bringing it back into the zone. Ooh. Lost it there. Love our animations here at YouTube. What we're able to do. This right here makes my heart glad. This is Ronald Acuna's Acuna's 39 home runs. Woo. For those of you who watched him in the home run derby, his effortless power the other way is evident, but he can turn on the ball as well. He hits the ball to all fields. Watched his routine in the cage today. He did a lot of lead hand work, meaning he just uses bottom hand with a smaller bat working on keeping that hand through the zone when he does that and he pulls his hands in close to the body he can stay through any pitch and hit it to any part of the yard that I mean that is just the most beautiful spray chart I've ever seen and a strikeout for Rainey so apparently he didn't want to deal with Mike Soroka somewhat <laughs> pitched around him right <laughs> to face one of the best hitters in the sport in Ronald Acuna Jr. and you're right that is a beautiful spray chart that starts from the center and branches out. Acuna goes down and so do the Braves in the top of the sixth. It's three nothing Atlanta. So riding with the Braves is a series shown on the Braves YouTube channel and earlier this year Mike Soroka was the featured man. Take a look at this little excerpt you'll like it. What's up man. Hello. Hop in. How you doing. All right. I'm doing good. good. How are you. Doing good to well. see you too. All right. So. I mean, we know a lot about you. I mean, as far as pitching goes, and you're from Canada. I mean, you were playing hockey growing up. When did you start playing baseball? Uh, I think I was eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there, and it was summers. It's two months of the summer, basically. But no, I think it was 13 or 14 once I finally hung up the skates, and then um, just decided I loved baseball that much more. You play guitar pretty regularly, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, start when I was about. 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, and it was actually Guitar Hero that, that no way. kickstarted. No way. The game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alive or dead. Anybody you want to go see musically. Anybody. Metallica. Metallica. Yeah. Metallica. So are you going to the gym? Is that what you're listening to, Metallica? Yeah. Because my dream, honestly, was coming out in the ninth inning to a big song, you know, closing. I was thinking, my walkout song, I'm going to come in, 
I'm gonna blow the doors off three guys <laughs> and we're gonna call it a game. Right. Sometimes when I'm bored, I'll go in uh, to a guitar shop, guitar center or something like that, and I'll just run around and try guitars. Man, it's been a highlight for me to have you with us. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. This Thank you. This has been great, man, uh, and best of luck. I know we'll be catching up with you really soon. And thanks for riding with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, man. Have See a you good soon. One. You got it. He's so mature in every way. To see more of this exclusive Braves YouTube content, including video series like Riding with the Braves and BP playlists, subscribe to the Braves YouTube channel right now. That was a great combo. Really if I fun. did that, though, you got to pay attention when you're driving the car. I don't know. I might get distracted. 80 pitches for Mike Soroka. One hit allowed against one of the more dynamic offenses in the sport. He's getting ahead. He's trusting his stuff. We talked about that. He's got he's got the sinker working today. Trey Turner did hit him hard. His first at bat up. Marquez made a good catch running away. Uh, feels like the strike zone is expanding in a lot of ways right now. But I do want to go back to that YouTube clip on the Braves YouTube channel. Uh, can we put in a special request? I want to I want to see him play guitar. Me too. Don't you want to see that after of that? Of course. Next edition. Right. You'll have the driver and maybe he'll be in the back seat so he has more room with the guitar. Right. Yeah, yeah like and he can play some back tunes. there as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just get him a Volkswagen van. Let well, him do riding with the Braves in a Volkswagen. Or a convertible so everyone can hear around him. There you go. We're building content for the Braves YouTube <laughs> channel. There you go, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> Soroka getting ahead. He's done that all year long. A ball and two strikes on Turner. His road earned run average is now down to 1.36. I mean, that is just. Incredible for anyone that we've seen, but for it to be from a rookie makes it extra special. Look at that number. It was a full point better than Max Scherzer, the second place. So poised. Weekly hit to Albies. Quick throw over there to get the speedy Turner for the first out. His home ERA is a shade over four, so. If you're the Braves, come playoff time, do you try and line him up for a road start or you wipe that away? I think you wipe it away. I mean, you don't want to give it, you don't want to make it a mental thing for, for Soroka. I mean, it's been so great all year. You just got to trust his stuff that, and trust that he'll elevate and show up in the moment. I'm going to be really interested to see how they line up this pitching rotation. They're getting to the point in the season where they're going to clinch potentially early enough or feel like they're going to clinch to line up their pitching how they want it. I have a hard time believing that you don't pitch in game one. I really do. I know you got Fulty. I know you got Keichel who's been there done that and maybe you do it just for that reason. But I want this guy to pitch as many times as possible in a series. So your answer home or road I say both let him pitch game one at home. Right game four on the road. That's right. That's a good point. Good point. By far best ERA in the rotation for Atlanta. That number for Keiko keeps going down. Yeah, he's just got to trust his stuff. I mean, he's been great for the whole season. You know, it's going to show up in the end. Only one hit allowed, and it's to this batter, Adam Eaton. Smacked a double off of Soroka in the fourth. These two organizations couldn't be more different. In certain areas, we talk about Soroka and his innings and him potentially pitching twice in a playoff series. The Nationals once had a very good young pitcher who didn't pitch in the playoffs. It was Steven Strasburg. The Nationals talk about resting their older players, playing them two on, one off, two on, one off. The Braves keep throwing Donaldson Freeman out there every single day. It's a it's a little different culture. Some of it would say that in the long run, the Nationals Nationals would pay off over the course of the long haul but we're almost 162 games in it's a long season it's paying off for the Braves we'll have to keep an eye on Soroka over the years and see if his career can match that of a Strasburg but I, I I love the way the Braves are just trusting their players to go out there and do the job and I think from a hitter standpoint he you know, slaps it to right and that's for Joyce you know from a hitter standpoint you don't want 
you don't want to lose your timing there. I mean, Donaldson, Acuna, Freddie have been so great all season long. If you sit them for a few games, what does that what does that do for them? For their timing. I mean. Yeah, I remember when Dansby Swanson first got called up. Originally, the former regime there with uh, John Capalella were trying to rest him and give him days off here and there and not let him face the tougher pitchers of the world. When that regime went away and Snicker was established as the coach, he just started throwing him out there. And you're right. You, I mean, Scherzer was the kind of guy that Dansby Swanson was missing. He's hit a double to the right center field right. wall today. That's confidence heading into playoffs. In exactly. a playoff situation, must sweep series for the Nationals. Your your guy, your eight hole hitter, Dansby Swanson, has a big knock. I don't I don't know that there's anything you can do with that. I know talking with Adam LaRoche, the old national, he would he would say Scherzer should have pitched his rookie year late into the season. If you're going to rest him, rest him early. But he he felt like the organization let the entire the, the let the entire team down by not having their best roster ready to rock and roll by the time the playoffs roll around. Yeah because at that point it becomes a distraction because everybody knows that you got a workhorse who's not going to contribute to the team and you know you actually you know hampering or handicapping your club by not putting him in there. Braves a little more old school in that approach I'd say new school Scotty. Alex Anthopoulos takes over as GM and he comes from the Los Angeles Dodgers organization. He also is the GM of the Blue Jays but a part of the front office for LA and he said they tried to do all that limiting and monitoring pitch counts and everything and you just have to look at their stuff. If it's playing up this time of year they're going to keep going with it and Mike Soroka's got that stuff in, Oct in September <laughs> that you dream about for October. The 22 year old rookie is putting on an absolute show Anthony Rendon not a fan of strike three but that's his fourth strikeout of the night and a three nothing lead six shutout innings from the Braves rookie. And he would be the second youngest Brave to start a playoff game. Steve Avery was 21 back in 1999 Soroka is 22 years old a one two three frame to sit down the top of the order for the Nationals Turner Eaton and Rendon and speaking of Rendon Heidi it's his night even though it's not his night at the plate yet it is his night. Yeah that's right guys we really have the treat of seeing four legitimate MVP candidates playing in this game Anthony Rendon it's his bobblehead night he is one of them and if you listen to this crowd every time he comes to the plate they definitely think he should be the MVP he leads all of MLB in batting average I asked Trey Turner about him he said look if the guy was on social media he would be the MVP his manager said he's just kind of a quiet guy he prefers to be an under the radar guy on the other side you've got three legitimate candidates we saw Freddie Freeman already leave this game uh, with the elbow kind of barking at him he's getting checked out right now but he's a guy on this team a quiet leader he leads the team in RBIs in OPS in average he's a fantastic guy you've got Josh Donaldson as well. He leads the team in war at 5.7 and you have of course Ozzy Albies as you guys have been saying all night with Albies could be a 40 40 guy this season. He'd be the only fifth guy in MLB to be a 40 40 guy. He's got 39 home runs 36 stolen bases. So I pose the question to Brian Snicker and to Josh Donaldson before the game who's their MVP. They both picked Freddie Freeman. They said on this team he's the leader. He's the guy who goes to the post every day. He's doing it every day for this team. Uh, Trey Turner obviously has Anthony Rendon. This crowd has Anthony Rendon. If you throw in Yelich, and I know he's out for the season, but you throw in Bellinger as well, who do you guys think is the NL MVP? I'll take it first. Yeah, so uh, I agree with Brian Snicker and Josh Donaldson that Freddie Freeman is their MVP. He's their leader. He sets the culture of that dugout. But I just can't get away. Sorry, Braves fans. What Cody Bellinger has done all year long out there in Los Angeles. That ship to right center off the bat of Albies and it's gone. <laughs> yes it is. Keep going Ozzy. You've got a homer a little wall scraper but a tall wall in right center field and the Braves are up to a four nothing lead off his 23rd of the year. He's still not sure he got all of it. Yeah, he's been a Nats killer over the last week. I mean he had such a good series down in Atlanta and it continues here in D.C. He keeps showing bunt every at bat then just goes deep like that. This guy is unbelievable. He works hard. I love his routine and he gets paid back right there. I think if it hits the wall and bounces back in it's not a homer but it hits the wall then hits the rail and then bounces back in. That makes it the home run. 
Yep, definitely. The Mats aren't going to argue with that one. But and then Rain, Rainey went back to the slider. Didn't trust the 97. And uh, you know, there's no doubt in that call. I think that's old Bill Welke out there. I think he definitely got it right. Very, very confident in his call right there. Yeah, there was no flinch. <laughs> Had the helicopter going. Albies is on a roll and he's been crushing the Nationals lately. Three homers in his last four games against them. Now it's Culberson who replaced Freeman dealing with an elbow issue and he scorches that ball to the left field corner. It's fouled off. Now, Matty, you notice how Culberson got thrown into the fire here. Right. I mean, fans don't realize this is hard to do. I mean, <laughs> he's sitting, he's probably got his seeds, got his gum sweatshirt on at the end of the dugout. Hey, hey, Charlie, you're in the game. That ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, quite often. Um, it always seemed to happen when a left handed hitter was about to face a really nasty left handed pitcher. Hmm. And they go out and stretch and oblique was tweaked. Or, no, I'm just I mean, <laughs> it, it, did, it did happen quite often. I was on some older teams, especially later in my career in the win now situation. You end up out there. Uh, you do. Uh, I was talking with our own Scott Braun today about all the different stuff he does and he has his, a different routine for your studio work a different routine yes. for this a different routine for radio and it's kind of like you on a, as a bench player you have a different routine when you're starting a different routine when you're pinch hitting when you get thrown in the fire like that you don't get to go through your whole pinch hitting routine. Holberson strikes out. I would call it a superstition but I call it a routine. <laughs> yeah routines right. Yeah. yeah no doubt. A good tight slider from Rainey. Probably the one he wanted to throw to Albies. Oh, oh, but he bounced back and got Culberson for the K. Yeah, I don't want our viewers to think that I'm anti slider. I mean, you, you have to do something to get them off of your 97, 98. But I think, I mean, I think Rainey, it just looks to me like he doesn't trust his stuff inside the zone. Yep. Kicked off Rainey's foot. And pinballs to right field. Donaldson has a base hit. Bringer of rain is the bringer of bruises. That one's going to hurt. You so could have rhymed that. <laughs> bringer of rain, bringer of pain. Yeah, but this oh, right yeah. here, just a laser at the middle. Oh, off the inside of the ankle. It didn't even get the calf. That had to hurt. Yeah. For real. That's a bone bruise. No doubt. Well, he showed the trainers off pretty quickly. I think he's all right. That won't hurt till tomorrow. That's going to hurt as soon as he gets in the dugout when they're drilling and wears off. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Markake is coming up. All right, let's see if we can get four at bats with four balls over 100 miles an hour. That'd be insane. They didn't make Rainey throw a pitch. No. He said he was fine. We'll see. That's right. Have a day. Nick Markakis. Single double sack fly. Well, Randy looks fine. Yeah, he's fine. This is the incredible thing to me about Nick Markakis. He, he's closing in on 2,400 hits. He'll get there next year. But his career stats, his career batting average is 288. This year, it's 280, 284. His career on base percentage, 358. This year, 358. He's just so stinking consistent. OPS is actually up this year compared to the rest of his career. 0.782. It's 0.787. You see how close those numbers are. He's just he's just having another career year because every year is a career year for him. Yeah, he's so steady, so consistent. Hits line drives to all fields. Weekly to short. Turner steps on the back and fires to first for the double play. The Braves get one. Ozzy Alpes leads off the seventh with his 23rd blast of the year. The Braves are all smiles for nothing as we get up and stretch and we run through the game summary for you on YouTube. Mike Soroka against Max Scherzer. Scherzer won the battle on Sunday and Soroka outdueling Mad Max, the three time Cy Young Award winner. We go to the second inning and Scherzer. Was in a little trouble. This was the first trouble we saw, Matt, 
and he picks up three consecutive strikeouts. He does. Max gets out of trouble his own way. He had b b runners on first and second, nobody out. Went strikeout, strikeout, strikeout. Soroka gets in his out of trouble his own way as well, and the way he does that is get ground balls. Five, four, three, double play to bail him out. Would get the next batter and be out of out of a jam. The Braves break the ice. Matt Joyce bringing home Nick Markakis after he doubled. And then two batters later, Dansby Swanson, Justin, he was at a two strike count and he surprised us. Yeah, that was great. He looked fooled early in the count and he got a pitch out over the plate and drove in the right center gap. Great two strike hit. One more for the Braves in the fifth. Yeah, Markakis thought he had a ball that he thought got out and uh, thankfully Acuna Jr. tagged and he scored. And the Soroka show continues. Soroka, one hit. We're talking through six innings. He started to pump some strikeouts in. Is yeah, he had four Ks, three of them in the last two innings. Just, I mean, just impressive. The the future of the Braves bullpen. Ozzy Albies, watch it, watch it. That's good enough. He saw it come back to the playing surface and thought, "Am I good? Should I stay at second? No, you can come on down." Number 23 on the year, he is having a dynamite season from the second base position. It's 4-0 Braves. We did see a little bit of history from Max Scherzer at the bottom of your screen. He passed David Cohn 24th all time in strikeouts. But Scherzer goes five innings, gives up seven hit, three runs, and six strikeouts off 99 pitches. He was better on Sunday. This was not his best. Yeah, he was a little erratic with his command, but the stuff was still there. He's up to 97 miles an hour. His changeup looked good at times. And, you know, Obviously, Davey Martinez is not going to be happy with the result, but he's happy that he got out of the game healthy. Yeah, the Braves really worked him. We saw that. I mean, in the first batter of the game, Acuna has a nine pitch at bat, I believe. He got him out, but he had the nine pitch at bat. So he was grinding it out all night. He, uh, they, they chased him, and if you chase, if you chase one of these three really four stud starting pitchers the Nationals have and get in their bullpen early, you got a pretty good chance to add on, and the Braves have done just that. Chris Martin, the 33 year old journeyman, had an immaculate inning on Wednesday. That means nine pitches, all strikeouts. It is not easy to do. I heard some unfortunate news about what happened after this immaculate inning. I heard that they tossed the ball into the stands, not realizing what happened. It's extremely rare. It's one of the rarest feats in baseball. And uh, to lose that ball, Chris Martin probably doesn't care. Because he's in, in, he's here for a pennant race, and since his trade, he's been looking to make his name as an Atlanta Brave, and he really has as of late. His last seven games, he's got six and two-thirds innings pitched. He's got a 105 whip and an only a 2.7 ERA. He's really settled into this sixth, seventh inning role that that Snicker has him pitching in right now. And this guy is pretty tall. I saw him down in the dugout. And I'm six five, and I was like kind of looking up to him. I mean, he's he's a big big boy. Six foot eight, 215 pound, 33 year old. That immaculate inning was on Wednesday in a 3 1 win against Philadelphia. And there's a strike to Soto. Do you know how many immaculate innings we have seen this season? It's not as rare as a perfect game or a no hitter. You've seen some this year. Can you give me a number? Just give me a guess. Throw this, something this out. Season. There. Yeah. This season. Yes. This season. I'll go eight. I'm going to say it's, it's close to that high as well. I'm going to say seven just because of all the strikeouts this year. Seven. Yes. Oh, wow, Matt. You read that. You great. guys were both you, great. You read that. I was trying to read Scott's <laughs> notes, but I couldn't get over there. I couldn't, couldn't read his chicken scratch. Well, I do the chicken scratch on purpose. So you guys you saw earlier, I'm Matt is sitting closer to Scott than I am. It's very true. <laughs> yeah. So we definitely saw that. Two of those seven immaculate innings coming from Chris Sale, by the way who's done for the rest of the year with an elbow issue. The Red Sox are going to miss the postseason after winning the World Series last year. Soto has reached base in both plate appearances with walks and now it's a 2 2 count. Yeah Juan Soto has been so good this season and I think it has to do with an adjustment that he made this offseason in terms of attacking non fastballs. Last year he destroyed fastballs as a rookie. No sophomore slump in 2019. Right and I think the league was getting on to that so they started throwing him non fastballs. And he wasn't as good on those pitches making adjustments. Against fastballs. In 2018 he ranked third in slugging percentage. He's ninth this year so. 
second overall number one on that list is Max Muncie of the Los Angeles Dodgers. I mean that's damage right there. Sends it to left high in the air for Marquez to chase and in the corner in fair ground he's got out number one. I have a feeling that Juan Soto Justin is a quick adjuster. Yeah I mean if you look at this this is his Achilles heel I mean he had a great rookie of the year campaign but he struggled on off speed pitches the only place he was hot is up in middle but look the, the adjustment he made this offseason I mean <laughs> that's six boxes that are red pretty much I mean this guy's made a great adjustment he's a he's a tough out he sees so many pitches per at bat. And I think that has to do with a lot of the uh, a lot to do with the guy in the dugout. Um, their hitting coach. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Long. Long my guy. Yeah I had him in uh, Tampa. Sorry I was lost for words for a moment. But K Long K Long is awesome. I had him in Tampa. I actually won, had a spring training for two years. I absolutely killed the ball for them. It just didn't work out. I ended up going to the Astros. But K Long has been a great guy. He's so positive. I think that's the key. I mean he knows his stuff. But from a mindset he's so positive doesn't matter what you do at the plate he's going to make you the best you as a hitter and that's what I think that these young Nationals guys need is his personality his work ethic I can tell you many times I spent a lot of times on the backfields of Tampa with him Robinson Cano Andrew Jones we were hitting 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 and he's just trying to make you the best hitter that you can possibly be with whatever kind of batting stance that you have he, he'll take a look at each one of his guys he says OK this is what makes him click. I'm going to make him the best hitter that he can possibly be. My last year in baseball I was in Yankees camp. Um, he actually got me so locked in that when they released me I wanted to retire but my swings felt so good that I didn't. I went to I went to triple A with the Marlins and killed it. He yeah. got me absolutely locked. Yeah, he's so, he's so Cabrera great. to the backhand of Albies for the second out. Yeah, Kevin Long Kevin Long and Kevin Seitz are the two Kevins in the dugouts tonight the hitting coaches for both these teams do need a lot of credit. They have they have younger teams they have young superstars that they keep engaged with and they earn their trust and right here. This is a barrel as well just didn't get under it didn't launch it at all. All these is just so solid on the ground balls probably a lot to do with his work with Ron Washington on a daily basis. We're getting a lot of coaches a lot of love right now. Yeah a lot of fans don't realize I mean there's a lot of work that goes into what makes these guys click on the field. And it starts early. These guys are here early. They do their work. They do their research, and then they get their players out here. They get their work in because they know what it takes. I mean, Ron Washington has been a lifer in this game, and for him to take Ozzy Albies under his belt, he's he's because he was already a great player, but right. now he's he's superstar. I think we're talking about these coaches because we got here early and right. you were seeing these coaches <laughs> working with the players the respect level amplified when you get to see it in person on the field especially after three hours of sleep for the Washington Nationals that's right but you're right when we went in to their locker room they were already in the cage hitting getting ready well before the team photo that was taken yep they got there working with some of the guys ahead of time and you know there's a lot that goes into coaching I mean it takes a certain kind of individual to be a great coach. The influence that you can have on a player's career by being a great coach, you know, goes without saying. But I think Zimmerman lifts it to center. Acuna Jr. at the track and stops there to make the catch. A lot of fly balls dying at the warning track tonight. Ryan Zimmerman gave that one a ride. Not enough. Instead, Chris Martin with a one, two, three frame to end the seventh. So the Braves are approaching their second consecutive National League East crown. Let's flash back to their epic run of division titles starting in 1991. The Atlanta Braves have run the table against the Colorado Rockies. Robert, here goes. He got him, and the Braves have clinched into the top spot in the National League East. Here comes a winning run, and the Braves win. Unbelievable. And the Braves are the Eastern Division champions. The one-two. That's it, and the Braves have won this one. And now the 
the pit. Swung, ground ball to third, short hop, Chipper tags the runner, the ball game is over. And for the ninth straight time, the Atlanta Braves are the National League Eastern Division champion. It's a perfect 10 for Atlanta. 10 straight division titles. One, two pitch coming. That'll do it. Slider in for a strike. Smoltz gets the save. Up the middle. to Miles, here it comes, ground ball second, or on the first, let the celebrating begin, folks. 14 consecutive division titles for your Atlanta Braves, the Eastern Division Championship for the year 2005, and that banner has already come out. Yeah, the Braves know how to win, but the last post-season post -season series win for the Braves was 2001 for the Nationals slash Expos franchise. It's been 37 seasons since 1981, the NLDS. So let's bring it a little more forward, okay? The Braves and the Nationals have won six of the last seven division titles since 2012, but have not done damage in the postseason. I mean, earmuffs for all the Braves and Nationals fans that are watching right now is to check out Walt Weiss, the Braves bench coach, who played three seasons for the Braves. Atlanta has lost nine consecutive playoff rounds and Washington has lost in all four rounds that they've made or four times that they've made it to the postseason in those rounds since 2012. So you add it all up and there's not much winning in October for these teams lately but maybe that'll change this October Hunter Strickland getting the go in the eighth inning. So Matt you're not smiling right now. No it's shocking. I mean it, it, th those are shocking numbers for a Braves guy when you think about it we love to make fun of the Nationals for not getting out of the first round of the playoffs. We, we made fun of them about the, the Strasburg thing you, you, you picked on them about about the you know Bryce Harper you had one of the most dynamic players in baseball and you couldn't get out of the first round and you look in the Braves haven't been out of the first round for 17 years. That's eye opening and, and you think about that as an organization you think about what Alex Anthopoulos is trying to do there with Ryan Snicker and it's and it's one of those things that that kind of snuck up on me to see that number we, during show prep today before the game I looked at it and I was like is this right 17 years and I know the Washington Nationals Expos that 30, 37 year thing is is out there but I knew that was out there this Braves one snuck up on me. Yeah when you're a Nationals fan though you kind of just count everything starting from 2005 really I mean you know everybody here is not from the Expos era. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, 2005, that's great. Still haven't got a first round since 05 okay. either, right? You know what, you know so, what brave side sounds yeah, like? It 01. sounds like karma. Yeah. You guys are making fun of the Nats so much. Well, I was I was looking at those numbers, and, and they won those 14 straight, and 05 was the end of that run of 14 straight. And I have to confess something to you. I was there for more than seven years. And okay. My first year was 06. Oh, yeah. So you were the good luck charm. I was the bad luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Roger McDowell, Edgar Renteria, and myself came in the same year. And we would always tell, because we stayed quite a few years after, and we'd tell, they haven't figured it out yet, that one of us three is the curse. One of us three is the curse. <laughs> well, maybe then this is their year. I think they have the pieces in place to break that streak, definitely. A little spinner to left, and that's going to fall. That's a base hit for Matt Joyce and his second of the night. He's reached base three times. You know, you left the team, what, in 2012? Yeah, 20. When did the Braves get to the playoffs again? Back in 20. I was on that team. I was I was technically on that 2012 wild card team. We lost on oh, the, the wild infield card. fly right. in, infield fly game, as we call it. Then they went to 2013. They lost to the Dodgers in four games, and then the Dodgers again in 2018. The way it matches up this year, though, for the Atlanta Braves, they would not have to play the Dodgers. If the, if the season were to end today, they'd play the St. Louis Cardinals, which I think is a more favorable matchup. But they're so hot right now, too. Who wants to play them? So uh, they got a healthy Marcelo Zuna. This, whoever, whoever the Braves play, it's going to be a battle for them. But if they overcome it and this young core starts to pick up some confidence, that's where they kind of make their name nationally. That's where the beast will become a nickname that the whole nation knows about with Ronald Acuna. That's where Dansby Swanson can hit that oppo ball that that just kind of solidifies his place as the shortstop. And that's where Freddie Freeman can become you know that 
that's why Freddie Freeman, I believe, and Anthony Rendon, even though they're quiet and they don't have social media, don't have that national respect. It's because they haven't gotten out of the first round of the playoffs ever in their career. Yeah, I think winning in postseason baseball starts to make you a household name. I mean, everybody knows who Derek Jeter is right. in the career that he had, and it's from, it's from his success in the postseason with the Yankees. Yeah, there's only one Mike Trout, right? And they, he, it doesn't matter what he does in the postseason, you're going to know him. Yeah, nobody talks about Trout. I mean, everyone's usually in bed on the East Coast when he's playing, but he's been he's been great throughout his career. He's definitely lined himself up to be another a, to get another AL MVP this season. Alex Bregman's given him a late run too. Yeah, yes. He he's on a roll for Houston. Tyler Flowers on a one-two in on the hands. They jammed him. And that's one at first. Moving up to second is Matt Joyce. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to your favorite team's park. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem special check in offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Dodgers, four games better than the Braves for best record in the National League. And they lead 7 1 in the bottom of the seventh in Queens against the Mets. Nationals thinking about locking down that first wild card position. They lead the Cubs and the Brewers. And the Cubs win today 17 8 over the Pirates. Cubs starting a 10 game homestand. That's Shane Green in the bullpen for Atlanta. Brewers trailing the Cardinals 4 0 in the fourth inning. It's scoreboard watching season. Oh yeah definitely I'm doing it right here. <laughs> yeah the Brewers are in trouble. I mean Yelich's injury was definitely a major blow to their chances. Um, but Ryan Braun talked about it a little bit. You know the, the team definitely has some resolve. They're going to give it their best. But in my opinion I think uh, I think they're going to be in trouble. And yeah, we talked about it with Rainey coming off the field with the adrenaline and as soon as the adrenaline comes off that line drive off his inner ankle is going to hurt. Mm -hmm. As soon as the adrenaline of losing a Christian Yelich wears off it, it could cost the, the it could be the end of the of the Brewers playoff run. I agree with you there. There's a lot to overcome if you're the Brewers. But and this is a big one they do have the easiest schedule I believe in the National League the rest of the year. So the schedule com could come back to help them in a major way. Healthy 2 0 hack from Dansby there. He was right on that pitch. There's your NL wild card standings. Nationals three up on the Cubs. They win today, so they're a half game up on Milwaukee, and that'll be a full game if the Brewers fall to the Cardinals. Mets trailing at the moment against Los Angeles. That could set them further back. This could be a very successful day for the Cubs because yesterday, the top five teams for the NL wild card. All were victorious. Every team on that list won yesterday except for the Diamondbacks who are fading out. The Brewers have certainly been hot. They've been part part of that mix for a while. And like I mentioned, their schedule is really easy coming up. Yes, they have the Cardinals for these three. Then after that, they have below 500 teams all the way to the end of the season. They have the Padres for four, the Pirates for three, the Reds for three. In Colorado for three. Now, no one wants to finish a season at Colorado because it's just a different kind of baseball. But I think the Milwaukee Brewers wouldn't trade schedules with anyone down the stretch. I know the Brewers hitters want to finish it. <laughs> Come on, man. The Brewer hitter do, but I mean, <laughs> let me tell you, my batting gloves ready. The worst thing I ever did in Colorado was hit a triple. I don't think I recovered for the next three days. Carlos Lee and Houston used to have the oxygen tank on standby, and I asked the club, I asked the trainer if I could have that. They said, "No, that's for Lowe's." I'm like, "Okay." No, <laughs> it was there for our team too. Yeah, the, the oxygen could. tank was always there. Well, you the could. young guy wasn't allowed to use it. <laughs> Gasping for air. You got to bring your own, apparently. <laughs> Swanson doesn't go around. That's ball four, so he gets the first. Joyce is on second. Heidi give us some more on the Nationals remaining schedule and how October is going to look. Well Nationals obviously have this tough series against the Braves this weekend and, and a pretty tough schedule for them. But I was talking to F.P. Santangelo before the game and he said the one team the Nationals don't want to face in the wild card game is the New York Mets. The New York Mets are losing to the Dodgers right now but they've been hot of late and they've got Jacob DeGrom who would go in that wild card game that would present a challenge for the Nationals. He said every other team in this race they think they could handle but as you see here other than the Marlins they're facing all contenders as they head down the stretch in this one guys. 
Yeah, it's not going to be easy for the Nationals to hold that number one spot. That's downstairs to pinch hitter Rafael Ortega. But for Washington, three Atlanta, including tonight, three at St. Louis, three at Miami. That's the break. Five against the Phillies. There's a doubleheader in there. And three to finish against Cleveland. That could be like an interleague playoff ish series to finish the year because the Indians will be fighting for, they hope, a division, but at the least a wild card. You no. Talk about not playing in Coors Field in the season because it's a different brand of baseball. How about having to end your season in a pennant race in interleague ball, a different style of baseball than your team's built for? Yeah, totally, because you have to change the way you, you have your lineup. The, you know, the pitchers may or may not hit. Are they home the last game or are they, they're in, in Cleveland, correct? They're home against Cleveland. Oh, they're home. So, yep. okay, so that would be a different dynamic. It hurts them, but it hurts Cleveland. Yeah, Terry way. Francona, I mean, he, does he want his pitchers going up to bat? No, absolutely not. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely different. So here's the record against postseason contenders. Your breakdown. The Braves lead this season series nine to seven, and you can see Atlanta has been successful against the Cardinals, the Cubs, the Dodgers. Hold that season series four to two. So even if these two teams, the Braves and the Dodgers, finish with identical records, the Dodgers would have the edge and home field advantage. They need to finish a game ahead. The Nationals really struggled against the Mets this year, seven and twelve against them. Ortega fouls that back. It's two and two. If you look at that thing, at that that record, that's kind of where the NL East will have been won. Was the Mets the way the Braves handled the Mets? The Mets were owned by the Braves this year, and the Nationals were were, were bad against the Mets. So the Bra the Braves won this division against the Mets this year. Really, when you look at that head-to-head -head schedule, I, I would like to reach out to Braves fans who, when I still pick the Dodgers to win the National League pennant. And they're like, you're not giving us our love. I just want to point out that the Dodgers were above 500 against the Braves and the Nationals, right? It's not. It's not that I don't want the Braves to win the National League pennant. I just think the Dodgers are really, really good again. They were backing it up. Yeah, I mean, you weren't far off. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I mean, it's showing you too. They're going to have like the best record. I mean, it's it's been insane what they've been able to overcome despite some of the injuries they've had as well. A little nervous about the pitching, right? Ryu hasn't looked like Ryu. I yeah, love very, Walker Buehler. Very Buehler. nervous. Kershaw's had a cuff, couple cut tough ones. Looks like his, he must have been doing pretty good tonight in that game with their lead over the Nets. So, um, uh oh, Ortega smacks it to the right field corner, and he's in business. This should score two. Ortega is going to stop at second, mm. and it'll end up scoring one for Atlanta. The lead at five nothing. Joyce comes in. Swanson held up at third. That was a good hold with who's coming up. Definitely a good hold. Could have been a close play, but when you got the beast coming up. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. We converted it. I got you. RBI double for Otega. That was ripped down the right field line. Ripped down the right field line. Anytime a catcher goes to raise his glove on a two seamer, that's not a good spot. Right there, Jan Gomes goes to raise his glove just a little bit. Ortega just gets the head out and whips it into the corner. This was an absolute missile. Almost hit too hard to score two runs. If he would have hit a little softer and let it rattle around the corner a little longer, he probably would have got both runs home. Yeah, but Dansby was moving the whole way. It was a hard stop. That's how you want to run the bases. Dave Martinez is going to make a double switch. Hunter Strickland's day is done again. Unsuccessful. So two of his last three appearances have not gone well. Strickland pitched a scoreless seventh inning in last night's win against Minnesota. But before that on Saturday against Atlanta he allowed three runs two homers in his one inning of work. And he leaves this game with a mess on his hands. Javi Guerra is going to enter the fold. Play ball is MLB's initiative to inspire all forms of baseball and softball participation, making play opportunities available and fun for everyone. To find a youth organization near you, go to playball.org. In the postseason chase, every play matters. And the MLB at Bat app delivers with live baseball on your favorite devices. Follow the races to postseason clinches with pitch tracking, video highlights, up to the moment standings, and much more. Download MLB at Bat today. Five nothing Braves. 
they're out hitting the Nationals 11 to 1. Have we emphasized that enough? The Nationals have one hit tonight. I think it's the extra three hours of sleep. Nats got in at 6 a.m. Braves got in at 3 a.m. So they got to close their eyes a little bit longer than the Nats did. It's a good call. It's that's helpful, isn't it? Oh, sure, certainly. Three yeah. hours versus six or seven. We were asking Snicker, you know, how tired his group was, and he he didn't he didn't say anything other than yeah. When when we landed and got on our bus, their game was just ending, and so he knew that they had they had the sleep quotient. Now, the Nationals did send Max Scherzer ahead today. He he flew in yesterday afternoon, so he had his normal rest. But in terms of an offense. When you see a clunker like this, you got to first tip your hat to Soroka. First and foremost, the kid pitched amazingly well. But when it's one hit by an offense like the Washington Nationals, you also look for other reasons. It reminds me of those first days on those Triple A trips when oh. you have to leave every morning at four in the morning. Right. And the, the PCL days. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't be late for the bus because the commercial flight leaves at 6 a.m. And if you're not there, I guess you're going to stay at your home, home ballpark or wherever you are. Sometimes I wish I would have stayed home on those days. <laughs> We, we did. We, I mean, we experimented with all different ways to sleep. Like uh, one of one of our veteran guys who had been in AAA a long time told us, you know, hey, just don't sleep the first day. And then when you get there, you try to nap on the plane as much as you can, power through that first day with a bunch of coffee, and then then you're back on regular sleep. That did not work for me. Right, skipping a whole day of sleep. So um, sleep's important. We're starting to quantify that. We saw a nap room today in the National Locker Room as you're walking out. There's yeah, a nap area. Yeah. That, yeah. So. Nice. Um, we're starting to see that uh, they're, they're starting to be able to quantify how much sleep you need. And that man right there was trying to get a nap today, but he had to take a team picture, he told, he told us. Oh, no, remember, he had the appearance as well. He had had an appearance this morning, mm -hmm. so he had less sleep than the rest of his team. Right. Dave Martinez must be feeling it at this point. Listen, no offense to us. I mean, us three are pretty awesome, and Heidi especially. But I, I wouldn't meet with us if I were him after that. I mean, he sat there and talked to us graciously for 30 minutes. It was a great, it was a great conversation. Yeah, very, very nice. He gave us that Wade Boggs story too. I mean, I'll never forget that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Told that story earlier. You did, and Wade Boggs running across a batting practice pitcher's mound because Davey Martinez touched his superstitious bat. Is a it's an image I can totally picture. Right, and here's the thing too: the uh, the visiting club was probably still on. The, they were probably out in the field stretching, so they're probably like, "What is going on? This guy's running, <laughs> running towards the turtle." The beast is up here, guys. See if we can we can cement his nickname, at least his YouTube nickname. That's right. Two in scoring position for Ronald Acuna Jr. Rafael Ortega on second, and we just saw Swanson on third. New pitcher Javi Guerra and a new first baseman. It's Howie Kendrick replacing Ryan Zimmerman on the double switch. Guerra pitched a scoreless inning. There's Kendrick. Scoreless inning in the ninth last night from Guerra in Minneapolis. ERA close to five and 34 appearances this year. Good take. Acuna Jr. with a single back in the fifth, and he scored. Yeah, this ball is just at the top of the zone. Maybe a strike earlier in the game, maybe not. But I think the beast is looking to eat right here. He certainly was. <laughs> Justin, he was he was swinging out of you know he blows a bubble most times. I don't know if he has his gum in his mouth right now, but. By the time his bubble popped, he was swinging on that one. He was, he was, he had made up his mind. He was not taking that pitch. I like to tell my 12-year-old team, the Mid-Atlantic Red Sox, you got a hitter's count. Don't be tardy to the party. Be on time. And he was definitely on time there. He was looking, he's ready to hit. The party was just in a location he couldn't quite get to. <laughs> <laughs> a little down, a little bit down. Don't be tardy to the party. I'm going to have to remember that one. That's good for your guys, too. Oh, yeah. And you go back home. Strike three. Nasty sinker from Gary there. The ball just ran in on the beast's hands. He was doing some chasing those last two pitches. Getting a little aggressive. Start to wonder in a five nothing game if he's not thinking, you know, I, I, I'd really like to get to 40 home runs. Yeah, he was definitely had the big 4-0 on his mind there. 
Ozzy Albies with a home run last trip to the plate. He's three for four tonight. He is sizzling. There is a first base open, and guess what? He's going to get it for yeah. free. That's An intentional smart. walk. You don't need to pitch. That's and smart. Charlie Culberson in the three spot tonight because he replaced Freddie Freeman. Yeah, you got to put the Nats killer on there. He's he's been torching them of late. I was just tuning in. Freddie Freeman pulled mid game today. That's right. Not a day off. He was pulled mid game right before we went on air with Brian Snicker. Elbow soreness in his right elbow. So that's that's what I believe we heard. And to me that's a swing. So I think is you know we, we saw that with Matt Adams. Mm hmm. Yep. They're they're checking him out. Yes. I think he they're going to get MRI. Yeah. yeah. I think they're going to get MRI. They're worried about it. Freddie Freeman is now right elbow. So. Could have been those check swings too, and those that, those first two uncomfortable uh, bats against Scherzer. Maybe that pitch down that he cricketed. Yes. Yeah. That changeup. It was a wicked googly. It's a cricket term. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be concerning news for Braves fans. Obviously, they're they're able to play it very safe with Freddie, leading up to the postseason because the Braves are well on their way to clinching a division championship, but. Freeman's missed one game all year. Last year he played in all 162. You got to imagine they're going to give him a little bit of a breather now. If they win this game, and what would that be? Nine and a half in the division. That's uh, right. I would not anticipate him tomorrow. But if I'm a Braves fan and I don't see Freddie Freeman in the lineup on Sunday, I start to worry because I know how much pride he takes in playing every day and towing the line every day and being there with his guys every day. So. Um, Sunday's a day game. If they happen to win tomorrow and go up by even more, maybe Snicker can tie him down. But if, if I don't see him Sunday, I'm going to start questioning things. I'll start firing out texts for you. So we'll, we'll, we'll find something else. <laughs> <laughs> Help us out. Keep us all posted. Hunter Strickland created this jam, and Javi Guerra gets him out of it. A lot of traffic for Atlanta in the eighth. They do get a run. Rafael Ortega with an RBI double. He brings home Matt Joyce. And some good cushion for the Braves heading into the bottom of the eighth. Guerra, though, does his job, picks up the strikeout. And the Braves lead it. Five runs, 11 hits. The Nationals, just one hit so far tonight against Atlanta pitching. Time now for this date in baseball history. Fly ball well hit deep left field. It is going to be the 500th home run of a brilliant major league career. Frank Robinson has done it. Marvelous player. You know what time it is. Number 57 who has 57 saves comes out of the Angels pen. Now he must face the dangerous Suzuki. Angel fans hoping to see history on this September 13th evening. Rodriguez with the pitch swung on chopper up the middle. Rodriguez has it gives it to Wood that's, and they get the first out of the ninth inning. And here is Valentin now. Slider struck him out. One out away from history. Wouldn't it be special to do it with a strikeout? The only man that matters is at the plate, and Raul Ibanez swung on and missed. He struck him out. The single season save record belongs to Frankie Rodriguez. He nails down number 58 on September 13, 2008. Move over, Bobby Thigpen. Frankie's in town. We're on the precipice of history. Mariano Rivera taking over 3 2 Yankees. Will he be Mr. 600? Willie Mo Pena will lead things off here in the bottom of the ninth. The pitch. He struck him out, swinging one away. There's Kyle Seeger. Swinging a miss, and he's one out away from save number 600. Left hand hitting Justin Ackley, the winning run pitch. Throw to second, in time, and Mo gets his 600 save. Only the second man in history to reach that level. It's a pretty good day, September 13th. We had Frank Robinson's 500th home run. We saw K Rod picking up the single season, season saves record at 58, and Mariano Rivera was save number 500. And there's Frank's name. MLB.TV is now available at a lower price for $26.99. Watch every out-of-market regular season game live or on demand and receive access to MLB at bat premium. Visit MLB.TV for details. Matty, did you ever have a chance to meet um, Mariano Rivera? 
Oh yeah, 2012 Yankees spring training. I had met him a couple times before, before games and stuff. We we are uh, involved with similar similar off season interests and stuff, but he's just a uh, class class act. Yeah, I can't think of a better better man. I mean, such incredible career, but he's not only a great baseball player, he's a great human being. One of the greatest of all time in baseball, and I'd still say he's a better better person than he is player. I agree. This man was closing games for the Tigers in the first half of the year, made the All-Star team. Victor Robles gets a knock, and that skips past Marquez. Robles can fly, but he's going to end up at second. If that ball had more mustard on it, could have turned into an inside the Parker. Marquez recovers quickly. And I'd say we can give him a pass. He hasn't done much left field, and he's looked pretty good out there tonight. Yeah, he got a good jump on that ball, but it just sank too early off the end of the bat from Robles on the slider. But he had a good read out. It just got past him. Lead off double for Robles off Shane Green. Yeah, top spin lob right there. Skips on the ground underneath the glove. Robles does not think he has a hit. He thinks it might be caught. He'd probably be on third right there if he didn't didn't loaf it around first there for a second. Again, it's five nothing. You're probably not going to risk it with nobody out getting the third right there. But he might have been there standing up if he hustles out of the box. So if you're Dave Martinez, are you going to say anything to him tonight? Maybe not this game, considering the circumstances. But um, I think he definitely thought it was an out off the bat. That's to third. Donaldson on the move for out number one. But ideally, yes, you do want to hustle at all times. I've, I've been guilty of that many times. He has a scorching ball. You think it's right at him, and then you know something happens. They don't make the play, and then everyone wonders if you got such great speed. Where you at? But they will never do that to a slow guy, right? They're not. They're never going to be like, Reach. "Hey, slow guy, why, That's right. why weren't you on third? <laughs> the one advantage in being slow in baseball that no one ever anticipated you getting the third. When you hit a triple, it was a big deal. That's a bonus. When you didn't end up on third, everyone was mad at you. Exactly. <laughs> what, what happened? What, what were you doing? Yeah. Justin, with great speed comes great responsibility. Yeah, I remember one time I got pulled from a game in A ball. Sorry, my team, if you're listening at home, don't do this. But I hit a fly ball, thought it was gone, took my time running, wasn't gone. <laughs> I was gone for the rest of the game. Yep. The drift, yeah, I mean, always hustle, kids. You, I, I tell my team too. You'll never get yelled at for hustling. Never. There's no one who's going to be like, why, why are you running so hard? Like no one will ever tell you that. Shane Green with the Braves, a 4-1-9 ERA, with the Tigers 1-1-8 in the first half of the season, and a little bit past that, traded at the deadline. He has not been the same, but he's been better lately. A scoreless eighth inning. And the Braves win on Wednesday was the last time that we saw him. Yeah, when you look at Shane Green stuff, I mean, you saw that sinker there. The ball moves so much. I think the Braves did a great job acquiring this guy when they did. He's he was going in a team. He was on a team that was pretty much essentially going nowhere to elevate him to a playoff team with such a great fan base. I know Shane Green's decided to be wearing a Braves uniform right now as opposed to the Tigers. Well, they, they acquired him. He struggled, Scott. That, that's 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 very obvious. But in the last 15 games, his WHIP is 0 0.60 with a 1-2-0 ERA. 15 innings pitched, he struck out 14, only walked three. It was it was a hard landing for almost all three of their big reliever acquisitions at the break. And but Snicker has, to his credit, has found where they all fit. I would have never thought at the trade deadline that Melanson would emerge as the closer of those three, but he truly has. Check. He went around. Tim Timmons at first base. Now I think that call had to do with more of the body movement than so the barrel. I mean, this is a hard call to make. That's about even with the front edge of the plate, right? What's the rule if it breaks the plane of the front front of the plate? That's a swing. I've heard 35 different rules on that. It's pretty much if the first base umpire feels like you made an attempt to hit the ball, which is every time I stepped in the batter's box, right, right, right. for swinging. Um, but yeah, so it's um, to me that's a tough one for Howie to, to take right there. And that is quite the grab from Charlie Culberson at first base, looking like the Gold Glover that he replaced in Freddie Freeman. Culberson makes the second out. What a great play by Charlie showing us his versatility a guy who can pitch 
play a great shortstop and also play a great first base as we saw there. We've seen some mean stops at first base tonight. Yeah, Zim's made a couple of nice plays. I mean, and Charlie thrown into the fire like we talked about before. I mean, that, that's a great that's a great play. Looks like Tim Bogar is out of this game. I have to imagine. Yeah, usually when an assistant coach is yelling like that, it means he's already been run. Dave Martinez bringing him back. A call to the dugout for a new first base coach. We'll just see who gets the call here. Chip Hale, the bench coach, taking over. Chip looks thrilled to be putting on the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Former Diamondbacks manager. Now he's going hat under the hard hat. Bogar might have a much bigger melon than Chip Hale does. Yeah, I don't think the clubby fitted uh, Chip Hale for the <laughs> little skull cap before the season. Didn't really expect him to be out there at first base at any time. Uh, my paths have crossed with that man quite a few times, and every time I walked away, very glad I had a conversation with him. He is he is a baseball guy. This was the actual toss. Well, it looked like Tim gave him fair warning. He said, don't say anything again. And he did. He said the magic word. He go. Which was anything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Which was, we slept three hours tonight. I need a nap. <laughs> I'm tired, Tim. <laughs> See ya. Go sleep. Hindsight, I'm wondering if Bogar wishes he would have done that in the second inning. Now we've seen these Nationals come back from a monster deficit just recently. It was two Max Scherzer starts ago. Left the game. It was late in the game. Look, looked very bleak against the Mets and they came all the way back. And I was here for that game. Last week on Tuesday. Down six runs in the ninth inning. And they went in walk off fashion. Kurt Suzuki with the three run home run. Off of Edwin Diaz. Although they lost the next day. We thought. How much momentum do they have? Only as much as your next day's starting pitcher. Yeah, that's why baseball is such a beautiful game. Anything can happen on any given day. You look at any of the teams, they can have a stacked lineup. But if you don't put the ball in play, if you don't score runs, if you don't pitch well, you don't win. So I've been hearing lots of complaints about the Chicago Cubs not being able to score runs, especially with getting hits with runners scoring position with two outs. They scored 17 today. That's why the wild card to me is literally a wild card. Like one game, I don't, I mean, the Nationals should win that wild card game if they're the one seed. They're hosting, you got Max Scherzer on the mound. But just say it's the Mets. Then you got Scherzer to Grom. Just say it's, you know, just uh, Milwaukee. And Mike Moustakas decides to hit two bombs. You know, I mean, it's anything can happen. As a fan, I am so happy that they implemented that. I, I mean, think. it makes it so exciting. Two teams battling it out for their lives tomorrow in one game. It's going to be interesting to see if we get to the wild card without having a 163 this year. I hope not. <laughs> I love 163. Evan Longoria does as well. <laughs> Turner on the ground sharply to Albies. That's going to do it for the eighth. On to the ninth. Earlier this year, Nationals mascot Screech helped celebrate the 50th birthday of the first helicopter squadron at Joint Base Andrews. Earlier this season, Screech made a special visit to Joint Base Andrews, taking flight with the first helicopter squadron to celebrate their 50th birthday.
Breach, thank you so much for coming out to the first helicopter squadron to celebrate our 50th anniversary. And I'm proud to say that you have earned your air crew wings. So if I'm just gonna put your air crew wings, we'll put them right there. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs>
popped up. Well, since we're talking about him, Rendon with a smile. The other part of Heidi's report was Josh Donaldson, the guy standing there on second base right now, and he's an interesting case as well. Every 30-plus-year-old free agent in the world thanks him very much because no one wants to miss out on the next Josh Donaldson because you wouldn't give them a second year or whatever. So he's had a great year for himself and for older free agents. Um, I love what he has done this year. He was the original launch angle king. Figured out the pitchers were throwing a lot of sinkers and sliders down in the zone and figured out a way to elevate them with the uppercut swing. Realized watching Cody Bellinger last year probably from afar while he's on on the bench. I don't know how he realized but he has made an adjustment and he is getting on top of pitches. That ball he hit the right center field just a minute ago the, re the single he hit this inning was a pitch that most people that are quote unquote launch angle guys can't get to. Mm -hmm. And he has he has taught himself this year to get on top of that pitch. It's an adjustment I haven't seen. He's the first one of those guys to make the adjustment that I've seen. Yeah, he's very meticulous with his craft. He studies it. He makes sure he makes sure his body is in the right position. You can see him all the time on deck. He'll be doing moves where he'll be get, he he does a thing called scap loading. He likes to load his right. scap, and then it helps him get his body in position to get underneath and on plane with the baseball. I have 12 year olds try to load their scap. They don't have scaps yet. And so I try to try to explain to them that this guy Josh Donaldson was an unbelievable high school hitter went to Auburn was an unbelievable college hitter and he is on that next level stuff than you are. You can't you can't do what Josh Donaldson is doing because you haven't done what he did. Right. And, and, so. and the thing too with that. I'm pretty sure when Josh was coming up when he was a younger guy he was just hunting the baseball. Right. He probably wasn't even thinking about what his body was doing. He was just trying to hit seeds. I don't know. He might have always had scaps. <laughs> he was a late bloomer, though, Donaldson. Not an instant success. Flowers <laughs> whiffing on the Garris slider. Yeah, it took him some time to get going, but um, once he found himself in Oakland, I mean, he's been taken off. Minus last year's injury year. I mean, he's been on that up, upward slope. Flowers down on strike. So the leadoff hit for Donaldson, and then Guerra retires the next three. And look at the two third basemen chatting as if they knew we were talking about them on YouTube. On to another third baseman. They're Manny here. Machado has an arch enemy. His name is Blooper, the mascot of the Atlanta Braves. And here's your explanation. There are many joys in the game of baseball, but few things compare to a mascot's antics. The mascot here in Atlanta is Blooper. You guys said you were lukewarm on Blooper. I, I change your mind. Playing the game with Blooper of the Braves. You know what? Blooper does a pretty good job. The last thing you want to do is challenge Derek Dietrich to juggle. Blooper and Padres superstar Manny Machado. Hey, Manny. Your autograph. You're a yep. star. Can I get your autograph? I love this. I'll just sign right there in the dotted line. Thanks so much. He signed him a check for $300 million. <laughs> go, go. Manny Machado and Blooper, they continue their antics. This time, he takes back his $300 million check he signed from Blooper. And then brings out for Bryce Harper Day. Does It's the same stick, but with a different thing. And 330, oh wait, no, Bryce is, wait. He's making it rain. Right, Blooper's making it rain. Yep. If he can get Vlad Guerrero Jr. to use that little mini bat that he was swinging a little bit earlier. I give credit to the players, too. Imagine the PR staff comes over, hey, would you do this thing with Blooper? I mean, you're entitled to That's say That's great. No. So yes, the Braves have done a nice job. Get out of here. <laughs> the Braves have done it. I'm trying to do a serious hit. Stand your ground, Bernie. Stand your ground. And this guy right here. You got to give Blooper some credit here. Come yeah. on, Blooper. Blooper is having a year. To see more of this exclusive Braves YouTube content, including video series like Riding with the Braves and BP Playlists, subscribe to the Braves YouTube channel. The race to October is here. Watch the MLB postseason with YouTube TV. YouTube TV is 70 plus channels of live TV, including every postseason game. It also comes with unlimited cloud DVR storage and six individual accounts for the household at no extra charge. You can add your favorite teams to the library so you don't miss a moment of the action. Setup is easy, only takes minutes. So get ready for the postseason and watch live with YouTube TV. Try it for free now. The postseason begins October 1st, the NL wildcard game. 
Mark your calendar. I'll be there wherever it is. I'm excited for it. And like Matt mentioned earlier, we might have a little action between the regular season finisher and that wild card game if there is a game 163. Jerry Blevins is going to pitch for Atlanta. Now I have YouTube TV. I know. This is not a plug. I have it. You've I been a YouTube guy for years. So when I did my research and my prep, like Matt talks about, I'm, I'm looking up all of Justin's articles and numbers in the past. And I found an article that had him talking about how he watches videos of his Grand Slams on YouTube. Everyone has those dig me clips, which yep. gives you confidence heading into a game. So you mentioned it. It was quoted in an article. It was in the Kansas City Star because one of your big grand slams was with the Royals. Right. So during my time here with the Nats, my mentor was Marquise Grissom. Braves great. And I remember I used to watch video all the time. So he's like, what kind of video do you watch? And I'm like, well, I watched myself. I grounded out my last at bat. He's like, why do you want to watch yourself be bad? Watch yourself be great. So I took that to heart. So what I did, I started watching myself do do well, Hit, getting hits, getting base hits, starting feeling myself, then, you know, do well. Um, and then, you know, it's funny because after I left them and went to the you know, to the Yankees, Robinson Cano before spring training game, he's watching himself do well, do well. So what I would do, I have a playlist on my YouTube account where I just watch myself do well and just hit it, and, you know. When I search myself on YouTube, I'm either getting heckled by the guy we played <laughs> earlier or tripping a dude in red spandex. I don't have any good clips on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know why I can't find them. No, that's great. That's a great idea. And, and listen, you, you don't have to plug YouTube TV you, off the air. You did it to me already. And I've been I've been ready to ready to make a switch. I'm going to have to get me some YouTube TV to watch Scott Brown in the postseason. Yeah, we're a Google household and my kids all the time. They'll wake up in the morning, Saturday morning. Hey, Google. Watch Disney Channel on YouTube TV in the living room, and then boom, it turns on the TV. They start to watch, but now it's gotten to the point where they start arguing over what they want to watch. My son wants to watch MLB Network. Well, my, my daughter wants to watch Disney Channel, so they start arguing over that. But it's so, great. So they're yelling at Google while Google's listening to the argument. That's right. But well, now you don't <laughs> fight over the remote anymore. Right. You just keep yelling orders. You start right. screaming at, at Siri or Google or whoever it is. <laughs> no, it's great because you can turn on the TV and you can turn it off. One two to Eaton is in there. Blevins records the strikeout. Here comes Anthony Rendon 0 for 3 tonight. Now Blevins is the guy that the Nationals wish they had in the bullpen. This is the lefty specialist that they don't have. Lefties are hitting just 154 against him this season with two extra base hits in 60 plate appearances. They'll leave him in against the righty Rendon with the lefty Soto on deck. Definitely built to get lefties out. He can be effective against righties. He's just got to nibble a little more. He's got to be very careful in the zone to righties. But you mentioned it. If the Nationals make the playoffs, the only lefty that would look like he would be on their postseason roster in the bullpen would be Dula. Right. And that's if healthy. So. That could be a huge deterrent to them them uh, advancing past the first round this year. Yeah, you got to have those matchup guys. Donaldson racing in, and he's got it. The YouTube game of the week post game show, 30 minutes. We'll have interviews coming your way. Analysis will preview the next one. The Braves one out away from taking a nine and a half game lead into tomorrow against the Nationals. And there's your lefty lefty matchup Soto against Blevins. Soto does not mind lefties. His teammate Patrick Corbin told us in our in game interview how great he hits lefties. So we'll have to see if uh, Corbin can be proven right right here. One hit or two two hits make that tonight for Washington. Robles with the double back in the eighth. And Adam Eaton doubled in the fourth. That's it.
Braves staff has done a great job tonight keeping this great Nationals lineup at bay. This would be the 10th 10th win for Atlanta in 17 games against the Nationals. Two more to go in this season series. This is where Nationals or every baseball fan can see how great Juan Soto is. And he's, 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 he's facing a tough lefty lefty matchup. He's staying poised. He's not chasing. He's staying in his, with his approach. He's not. He's not getting too big for the moment. He's having a great at bat again. Sent to left. Markakis gives it a look. It's going to punch off the wall. Soto trucking for second, and he's in there with a double. That's just unbelievable. We've picked a little bit on Wade Boggs and his superstitions today on Friday the 13th. But one thing he always said was never given away in a bat. Given away in a bat. It's 5 nothing, two strikes here in the last inning. And Juan Soto just stays on a lefty, lefty fastball and just drills it to left field. I mean, you saw his splits earlier. They're, about, they're pretty even on both sides. From doesn't matter who goes on the mound, he's going to rake you. I mean, that ball scalded. I think he almost knocked down the wall. Love it when young players play the game the right way. Hustle out of the box, got the double, even though it bounced right to Marquecas. Didn't give away in at bat there. A little different than a guy we saw in Cleveland walk to the dugout after ground ball to the pitcher the other day. Oof. Did he walk to the clubhouse afterwards? Uh, I don't think, I don't know. Pretty good at ground ball. I, Francona, to his credit, met him there and had the talk right then and there. Oh, for Puig. Yes. Mm. Right. Yes. Pretty good at chopper back to the pitcher and just turn and walk to the dugout. Did you see? Dylan Bundy, I believe it was last night, did yes. not cover home. Two runs scored on a wild pitch. I can't remember the last time I saw that. So it was fun to point out things done well. Good job, Soto. Yeah, my mom actually told me that uh, today when I saw her, and uh, she said, "Yeah, he came out out of the game right after that." So I was <laughs> like, is that coincidence or is that his pitch count? I think it's more so coincidence. No balls and two strikes says Drupal Cabrera. He represents the last chance at the moment. The Nationals 41 and 29 at home. Second place team in the NL East. First wild card seed. That lead is going to shrink tonight as you can see staying at second is Soto. The Nationals will just have a two and a half game edge over the Cubs for their first wild card. I'm sure the Nats would love to be hosting that wild card game. It's going to be a fun two weeks to the finish line. Yeah, and it's two different uh, mentalities going forward. I think after the Braves can clinch, they'll be able to ease up a little bit. But the Nationals, they have to keep their foot on the pedal from here on out. Against a difficult schedule to finish the year. Got him on the one two game over. Braves take it five nothing over the Nationals to open up this weekend set in D.C. Three hours and 17 minutes to complete the contest. And let's do 30 minutes more on YouTube right now. The MLB game of the week live on YouTube post game show. Jerry Blevins and the Braves all smiles as they make a trip from Philadelphia to D.C. to start off this weekend set with a win. Five nothing. They blank the Nationals. Just three hits for Washington. And the Nats get to go home and get a little rest, but not too much because there's a day game tomorrow. Scott Braun, Matt Diaz and Justin Maxwell. We'll have an interview coming very soon. Ozzie Albies is going to join us and we'll chat with him 
Another interview with Heidi very, uh, very soon after that. We'll hear from both managers. A lot to do to recap this one. Hang out with us for the next 30 minutes. Ozzy Albies with his 23rd home run of the season tonight. And he has been on a roll against the Washington Nationals, Justin. He has been very dangerous against this team. Yeah, I mean, he's been lethal to them over the last week. He had a great series down in Atlanta, and, it, and he's also continuing that streak here in D.C. I mean, they can't get him out right now, and they even put him on with an intentional walk late in the game. So, I mean, he's just on a roll, and it's nice to see for the Braves fans, and it's definitely not nice to see for Nats fans. So it'd be interesting how they pitch him the rest of the series going forward. Three hits. He reached base four times tonight, two singles, a home run, and an intentional walk. Ozzy Albies can swing the bat. He's a switch hitter and he's getting it done from both sides. Yeah, he can. He he can hit from the right side. He, he actually has a little more natural pop right handed than he does left handed, but he's worked extremely hard on his left handed spring swing. He is a joy to watch. Well, let's talk to him. Ozzy Albies joining us on the post game show. Ozzy, congratulations. And uh, let's walk us through first the uh, home run that you hit, your 23rd of the year back in the seventh inning. How did it go down? Oh, I was. Uh... I was sitting, sitting off speed, and he left on hanging, and uh, put bear on the ball. And didn't thought it was going out, but hopefully, it carried, it carried good, and it went out. Wow, that's that's impressive. We were sitting here up in the booth, noticing that Rainey averages almost 98 miles an hour on his fastball, but he loves his slider. So that was a scouting report on him to kind of kind of see soft. No, I was. I mean, I just sit one pitch. First A, first AP, I was like, I'm going to sit off speed. And after that, I'm just going to battle with him as he, he has Vila on his fastball. Now, we saw you in the dugout talking, I think it was to Acuna after that bat. And you did something where you kind of like wiggled your shoulders like you were getting loose or something. What, what was that key that <laughs> you were telling him in the dugout there? No, it was me. Uh, we had a conversation about uh, actually video games and stuff. So that, <laughs> that's what we were talking okay, about. Okay, okay. Yeah, because it looked like you were just moving your shoulders like you were trying to get relaxed and stuff. So it definitely worked. Whatever, whatever it was, it worked. It worked. It worked. You had video games, uh, video game numbers tonight, Ozzy. And then we saw you stop at second base originally. Did you think that that one might have just turned into a double? Yes, I saw the ball come, come back in. So, and the umpire was just pointing like this. So I thought it, he, he meant like the ball hit the fence and came back in. I don't know what was going on. And then he started rolling his, his arm. Then it was like, oh, the ball is out. I was with you. We were on the same page. I'm waiting for him to do this so I can make the home run call. <laughs> so it took us a little bit, but you ended up pulling it off. Hey, how was your sleep from last night to today? Because we spoke to the other side. The Nationals said they had about three hours. You were coming from Philadelphia, and you actually took a plane from Philly to D.C. Yes, we, we, we got to the hotel around 2.30 in the morning, but I went to sleep around 3.30. I woke up today at 2 o'clock. I felt like lazy and everything, but I guess it works. So I might do it tonight again. 12 <laughs> hours. That's outstanding. How often yeah. do you get 12 hours of sleep? Uh, I think twice a month or something. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw your second half comparisons. I don't know if the sleep has anything to do with it, but last year it seemed like you kind of ran out of a little bit of steam. This year you are just thriving all the way through the end of September. Did you make any adjustments in your sleep or anything in your fitness that would, would add to this second half surge this year? Well, pregame I did. Sometimes I don't do fully pre-workout like BP and all that. I come out early, do it early, and stay away from the hot in Atlanta. And it's it's working. And I mean, you go through rough times sometimes, through a little struggle. But I mean, I trust myself. So I know what I can do. Your best friend, Ozzy, or excuse me, Ronald Acuna Jr. I have two questions about him. Number one, do you think he reaches 40 home runs and 40 stolen bases, and does he talk about it? I mean, I have to, totally confident in him, and I know he can do it. So that's what. I mean, he talks about it sometimes. I'm like, just don't think about it. Go do you like you always do, and it's going to happen. Last but not least, so we spoke in spring training. We did a little bit, actually. You, me, Mark DeRosa, and Ronald. And uh, he said that his nickname is The Beast. I like it. <laughs> no one else has it. Matt is completely on board. I'm How on board. come that nickname hasn't stuck this year? Yeah, he, I mean, he calls himself all that, that all the time. <laughs> and he totally, I mean, from being playing around with a lot of guys, I know he he totally have a lot of confidence confidence in himself. And before AB, sometimes he tell me, hey, I'm going to go right center right now. Like last night, he did it. He told me, I'm going to go to the bullpen, and he did it easy. I don't know how he does it, but he totally trusts himself a lot, and he plays the game having fun all the time. Well, he's I, the beast, and we're going to keep pushing for the yes, nickname, yes, right? Yes, yeah. how, yeah. does he say, how does he say it in Spanish? 
La Bestia. La okay. Bestia. La bestia. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to push it. The marketing campaign continues. Ozzy, thank you so much. Get another 12 hours and do that again tomorrow. I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Ozzy Albies joining us on the MLB Live Game of the Week on YouTube. He's a great interview, too. Yes. He's fun. He's young. He gets it. Right. Oh, he gets it. He gets it on the field and off the field. We talk about his preparation during the game. He also gets what's going on with his friend Ronald Cunha Jr. We saw him in a situation take a pitch with a fake bunt trying to give him a pitch to steal on. You always loved it when your friends would do that for you, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely. And sometimes <laughs> the manager would yell at guys when they would hack at that first pitch and you're halfway down the line. But, I mean, for those two guys to be together, to come up together, you can the friendship that they have, I mean, it shows on the field that they're having fun playing with their buddies in the big leagues. I mean, that's that's great. 12 hours. I can't get over that. 12. You got 12 <laughs> hours of sleep. That's awesome. Hey, kids, if you want to rake in the big leagues, get 12 hours of sleep. Right? Oh, I Just hope my sleep. kids are watching. I got an 8 a.m. flight, so I will not be getting my 12 <laughs> hours tonight. I'm with you. Let's run through what we just witnessed on YouTube throughout the night. Your game summary. Mike Soroka against Max Scherzer. Soroka outshined the three-time Cy Young Award winner. Yeah, we talked about before the game, the things Mike Soroka are doing this year are well beyond being a rookie, but Max Scherzer being Max Scherzer right here gets in trouble and goes to the gas, Justin. Yeah, he bared down and got three guys on three Ks right after he had that jam early in the game. It was nice to see him. So far, so good from Max. Mike Soroka says, you know what? I'm gonna let the first two base runners on, Max and I'm going to escape the way that I escape, with ground balls. He does. He throws that heavy sinker, and he's got a great third baseman over there, Josh Donaldson, to eat it alive, and then just gets this ball off the cap. Victor Robles can't beat Freddie Freeman to the bag. Freddie Freeman was in the game at that point. Yes, he leaves with elbow discomfort. Did I get that right? Elbow discomfort? Elbow discomfort. Yes, yes, right right elbow. yes. Uh, Soroka getting the ground balls, just dominating and dazzling this evening, looking unrookie like this time of year in September. Nick Markakis, first game back from the injured list since July, and I don't think he missed a beat. No, he was on fire all night, hit the ball hard, all, every single one of his at-bats, and Matt Joyce got the single to put the Braves on the board in the fourth inning. So there's the first run for the Braves, and there's the second for Atlanta. Dansby Swanson does the trick. Yeah, this was the backbreaker for Scherzer. This got him out of there. He was a strike away, had had Swanson looking lost, and got rid of it. And then guess what? Nick Markakis just misses a home run. I we really want to know who this pitcher was. The Braves flew into Atlanta <laughs> to give Nick Markakis live looks at AB. They flew a minor leaguer in because he was hurt. Show yourself, minor leaguer. Nick Markakis also deciding to rob Victor Robles later on. Mike Soroka, though, putting on a show and picking up the strikeouts as his start continues. But, okay, a big storyline in this one, not just the bat of Markakis, but the glove as well. He is a left fielder. He has not done it much in his career, but he's going to move over because why not? Oh, there's the Albies home run, by the way. He was a big story tonight, inning. too, wasn't he? Three, yeah. three hits on base four out of five times. We'll give you some love, Ozzy, even though you just gave us a bunch of love on air. And especially what when he's sitting slider for on a guy who's throwing 99, 97 miles an hour. And in the eighth, Rafael Ortega. That's good exit velocity right there. Yeah, yeah, take a rip that ball down the down the line. <clears throat> Tough pinch hit at bat. Something the Braves will need here in the postseason because pinch hitting is a commodity that's very hard to come by in postseason baseball. You think of him and Matt Joyce both could be in those pinch hit roles. They are they have a very deep bench. Jerry Blevins and this thing sharp with the breaker. Yep, High that, fives and hugs. It's over. The, the ninth inning ended just as how Snicker wanted it to. Keep, get Blevins in the game. One, two, three inning. Get out of here. Nice and quick. Braves five. Nationals nothing. Atlanta with win number 92 on the year. The Nationals drop to 81 and 65. Nick Markakis have a day. Two for four. Very nice defensively for most of the night. And a post-game interview with Heidi Watney. All right, Nick, uh, first game off the IL. You're facing Max Scherzer, but you got a couple of hits and a sack fly off him. That had to feel good. Yeah, it did. It just felt good to be back. It felt good to be on the field with these guys. Uh, watching them from the sidelines for a while gets a little, uh, a little anxious over there. But it felt good to be back. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to face a pitcher that I faced a while, and um, you know, just went up there, tried not to do too much, have good at bats, and uh, put good swings on the ball. And I ended up uh, hitting two good balls off him. Um, you know, and, and we came out with a big win. Sor Soroka threw the ball great. 
you know, as always, he's up there knowing what he's going to do. He has a plan, and uh, against a lineup like that, he executed pretty well. I was talking to Josh Donaldson before the game, and he said Soroka's poise is what really impresses him. Is that what you see from him? The guy's only 22 years old. He has the best ERA, uh, one of the best ERAs in baseball. You, know, you don't see that too often out of a young guy like that coming up. Um, the way he approaches the game, the way he goes about the game. Uh, Braves fans should be lucky to be able to watch this guy for a long time. He's, uh, he's a one of a kind. He knows how to pitch. And uh, against the lineup, like I said, against yeah. that team, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. We did. I think it held him maybe to one or two hits. And, um, you know, most importantly, we got the win. Yeah, giving him just one hit to that lineup is a feat in itself. Uh, they say the ball will find you when you switch positions. You're playing in left field. You had a couple of great plays out there. How did you feel out there defensively? Uh, it felt a little awkward at first, uh, but as the game went on, uh, I got a little more comfortable out there. It's just going to take reps and, uh, you know, going out there and, and, and playing the position. It's, uh, you know, the opposite of the right field. The ball comes off a little differently, but, uh, you know, over time it'll be all right. Yeah, you got about two weeks to get it nailed down. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, honey. He's consistent. He's reliable. He'll move positions when he comes back from the injured list. Matt, you know they love him in that clubhouse. Yes. Yes, he, he, he's the definition of a steady leader. He, he doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. He would have given the same interview if they would have won 5 nothing, and he had nothing to do with it tonight. I promise you. He would move positions if he made three errors tonight. He'd try it again tomorrow if he thought that would help the team. This is the epitome of a teammate. We've all played with those kind of guys. Now we're watching one here with Atlanta. Nick Markakis is a big reason why the Braves locker room is the way it is, and now he's a big reason why on the field they're going to be the way they're going to be. Justin, he didn't just come back. He came back squaring up baseballs yeah. right away from the first pitch. He came back on fire. I mean, I don't think he didn't. I don't think he missed the barrel once. It was first at bat, 106 miles per hour, almost decapitated Scherzer there. <laughs> and then we got another ball in the gap, 103 miles an hour that Robus missed red because it had too much juice on it. And, and then the sack fly here, the one that he thought he got, his softest hit ball of the night that almost, almost Hit the wall, hit the wall. You got you got to run in. But I mean, for this guy to come back, it's such a huge boost. And he did it with the glove as well. He's not a one dimensional player. He's a complete baseball player. And for Matt, from what you're saying, he seems like he's a complete individual, a guy that the Braves want, a guy that the Braves need down the stretch. And I know that Brian Snicker and the rest of the Braves faithful are happy to have him. I feel like he's going to receive many calls and texts from players yes. that he knows around Major League Baseball going, hey, how do you beat Max Scherzer? <laughs> Not just players, but even even advanced scouts from potential wild card opponents of the Washington Nationals. Anyone who wants to hit Max Scherzer needs to call Nick Markakis because nobody, nobody has 69 at bats and 30 hits off him. And he he knows it 23 too. Hits, he said yeah. he said I was fortunate enough to face a guy who I've had a lot of at bats against. So I mean, translate that. Nick he just knows. said I was lucky to face Max Scherzer. Didn't right. He? <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. I mean, to to see a guy that many times, he knows how he's going to attack him and. The, Never hurts to have success as well. Yeah, wow. What a performance from Marquecas. And for Max Scherzer, this was not as good as what we saw from him on Sunday. His fastball was not producing much swing and miss from the Atlanta Braves lineup tonight. Just wasn't sharp. He was. He had his velo. We, we talked about that early in the game. We saw his velo. But he wasn't able to put batters away because he wasn't spotting it up where exactly we wanted to. Watch the catcher's mitt be moving all over the zone little bit in, a little bit out, just missed a spot here. And the Braves hitters, you got to give them credit. They were able to work him, grind him, and chase him after five innings. Once, once you get Max Scherzer out of a ball game, when you're playing the Washington Nationals, you have a chance. Yeah, I mean, after he came out in the fifth, the Braves scored two runs in the last four innings. I mean, it's scary to think that if the Nationals can't get Max Scherzer into the sixth or seventh inning, they don't really have a chance to win. And when you're in that one game wild card, I mean, it's it's really tough to do if you can't if you can't stretch out Scherzer. If, you know, I hate to say it, he needs a CG. I mean, if they want to win, you really don't want to tap that bullpen. I mean, but it was good to see him back healthy again as well. I know I know Davies encouraged. I know he wanted to win this game tonight, but to get him out there and healthy and see that velocity up to 97, I think, and it puts him a little bit more at ease. What do you think? Yeah, I absolutely think think the health things of Max Scherzer are moving forward. The pitching things, of course, are going to follow. It's Max Scherzer. He's the most competitive guy in baseball. The good news also for the Nationals is if for some reason these next couple weeks you don't feel confident Max Scherzer, you do have some other horses in the stable. That's right. Strasburg's a big deal. Patrick Corbin's been pitching very well for this club. Hey, Dave Martinez, what do you think about your ball club tonight, including Max? 
he was, he was uh, so-so. Threw a lot of pitches, obviously. Um, wasn't as crisp, uh, but he battled. You know, uh, you saw Max battle through it and uh, just threw a lot of pitches. Yeah, I just don't, I don't think he commanded his his off speed stuff. I mean, I think uh, threw his fastball okay, his, you know, but his you know his changeup was a little off. Um, threw a couple of decent you know sliders, but um, he was just a tick off today for me. Um, but like I said, he battled through it. I mean, he really did. He gave us everything he had. Is that something with two, maybe three starts up in there that he can work through? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the fact that you know. Um, that he said he felt good, and when we took him out, he said, uh, you know, he, he felt good. So let's just, you know, I said, hey, let's get, see how you feel tomorrow. And we'll get through it, and um, here, here we go again in your next start. Is anything demonstrably different with Soroka than Sunday? He just hit, he was, he was uh, very effective in throwing everything over the plate today. Um, didn't fall behind much, uh, but attacked the strike zone with everything. His changeup was really good today. He kept us, kept us off balance. Um, I think we, well, Eaton is the only guy that got a hit off him. Uh, we hit some balls hard, but I mean, he was good. What happened to Tim Bogar there? You, you saw Tim Bogar. You, you usually don't see that from Tim. <laughs> yeah, he just got a little irritated. Uh, just he, we didn't think he, he's you know we didn't think he swung. Tim said he did, and um, he was. I think. More so, Tim tried to keep Howie in the game because Howie said something, so he defended him. It seems like Kurt's been a pressure by a few of those recently when he was playing. Is, is that Chick Swing call? Is that it, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a, it, I mean, it's a tough call. It really is. I mean, but um, just got to watch the barrel. You know, I mean, that's the the key is. I mean, you, you know, your hands could go out front, but the barrel don't, don't pass the pass the, the line there and. It's not a swing, you know, but it's it's tough. I mean, you know, you're standing 100 feet and trying to make a call like that. I mean, um, I, I appreciate you know Rob not calling it. That's for sure behind the play because that's even tougher. Let's go back to his comments on Mike Soroka. He said the changeup was good. Only one hit for the Nationals against the Braves rookie in six innings. He was excellent. Pinpoint command. Pinpoint command today, and he was just, he was Mike Soroka. What else, what else can you say? He pitches his way out of jams, not necessarily the way same way Max Scherzer does, but by getting inducing weak contact right there. Right there, Zim could not get the head out, jams him just enough. Off the end of the bat, missing barrels is what Mike Soroka does, and he's efficient that way. He doesn't have to go deep into counts to do this, but then as the game wears on, he almost gets stronger, and he just starts ripping off strikeouts later in the game. He only had one strikeout in the first three innings. Really one in the first four innings, and then he strikes out a ton as the game moved on. I think he struck out one or more an inning from then on. I mean, he had at times that Greg Maddock esque backdoor sinker that he yeah. run Yang Gomes up there. I mean, he's got great stuff, and I think the best part about him, he has great poise. He doesn't seem like he gets rattled, especially with his ER rate being so low on the road, he rises to the occasion. If you have 12 wins or more and a sub 260 ERA in the last 50 years in the National League, all of the names on that list won Rookie of the Year in the NL. Soroka probably is not going to win NL Rookie there's of a, the Year. There's a giant behemoth of a first baseman in New York that's not going to let that happen. He's he may, a polar bear. He is a polar bear, like a, a man-made polar bear. I mean, I don't know. He's, he is the polar bear. P. Alonso is having a great rookie year. Soroka in any other year, absolutely. I'm going to fight this tooth and nail, but when you're leading Major League Baseball in home runs and carrying a team on your back offensively, P. Alonso is probably the rookie of the year. So what is it with the NL East and these, like, animal acronym? I mean, nicknames. Nicknames, nicknames. yeah. I we got it. the Beast, and we got the Polar Bear, Oso Jeff Blanco. Jeff McNeil is the squirrel. I mean. Flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> we need a nickname for Mike Soroka. I don't think he has one yet, but lowest single season road ERA since 1969. He's got that number down to a tidy 135. Roger Clemens in uh, 2005 with a 132 mark. Best all time. I don't even know what Greg Maddox was doing in 1995. Yeah. 112. Uh, that man was yeah. a monster on the road. Got the job done and did it also the year before in 1994. But keep in mind, Soroka is a rookie. Yes. These players were not rookies when they did that. Right. Uh, to me, that's what stands out, too, especially a rookie on the road playing baseball and playing at a higher level than he does at home. Yeah.
Yeah, it shows a lot about the, Bra uh, the Braves organization. I mean, if they're able to develop guys at such a, such a great rate where they can come and be poised at the big league level, it shows a lot about the Braves. Yeah, MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. We saw the Braves and Nationals. We move on Tuesday to the Rays and the Dodgers. First pitch, 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time. And then the Cardinals and the Diamondbacks. Ready for the Rays and the Dodgers, an interleague affair where Tampa's playing close to playoff baseball this time of year to make a wild card? And the Dodgers strike first. And the Rays take the lead. Forget about it. He has ended the night. Gone. Home run for Meadows. The first career walk-up home run for Will Smith. How do you like that? Kiermaier to the wall. And he got it. Wow, what a catch. Muncy hits a towering fly ball to right. That one is. Charlie Morton just continues to get better and better. What a magical night from down 8-3 to win it 9-8. Race win! Race win! Race win! Devon Joy comes through here in the bottom of the night with a two-run single, and the Rays walk it off. It's Bellinger's turn! And oh, that's right. Yeah. is clearing double for Cody Bellinger, who's going to need a new belt. It's gone! It just clears the wall! A walk-off home run for Travis Darno, and the Rays win it. And he's got another! Rays win it on the fan walk-off. Forget about it! Muncy saves the Dodgers tonight! That's a base hit and a lap. Troy gets the wave. He'll come around to score on a little league home run. And the Rays will win it. He struck him out. And he sneaks out of the bases hole to jam the left out a two-run win. Awesome job from Kenley Jansen. Swing and drive. When this lands, Rays win. Rays win. Rays win. Dodgers walk it off again. The Dodgers have won it again in the bottom of the ninth. This time it's Russell Martin, the hero. Still comes through, and Sogard scores, and the Rays win it 1 0 in 13. Tampa Bay actually won 90 games last year. It was not enough to make it to the playoffs. This year, it's a three team race for two spots for the American League wild card between Oakland, Tampa Bay, and Cleveland. It's going to be a fun battle between the Rays and the Dodgers. For the Dodgers, they can't let up yet because they want to lock down home field advantage right. in the National League and have a better record than Atlanta. That's number one. Number two, what they're working on is a postseason game plan, especially with their pitching staff. We talked about this a little bit during the broadcast. Hunjin Ryu has fallen off. Some pitchers have faded a bit for them. Some are emerging, too, like Tony Gonsolin and Dustin May. They're going to try and figure out how the puzzle pieces fit together. Yeah, and playing an opponent like Tampa Bay, who's all in, gives you a really good look on how what a postseason game could look look like. Tampa Bay is playing for their playoff lives. And to be honest with you, Dave Roberts and the Dodgers have got to be utterly annoyed with Brian Snicker and the Braves. They cannot get any separation from them whatsoever. The Dodgers have been the class of the National League all year long, but the Braves just won't go away and let them have home field advantage. I think it's, it, 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 but, but, it be, I don't know. I mean, if I'm the Dodgers, I, I focus on home field before I get ready. But uh, that, that's what I would do. Yeah, I think the Rays have the, the advantage in this one because they're playing every game essentially like it's a playoff game. And if the Dodgers come in and they get a taste of that Florida sunshine, they want to relax a little bit, they can because Kevin Cash has his guys ready to play good big league baseball. They have the second wild card at the moment. This is going to change a million times probably over the next couple weeks. The A's in the one spot and the Indians half game out. They didn't play tonight. Their game against the Twins was postponed. So going back to the Atlanta Braves, they have a nine and a half game lead. They win this one five nothing. They're in somewhat of a cruise control for the division crown as they're going to get there. But they are chasing that Dodger team. And Brian Snitker, their manager, spoke about this W and the team going forward. Now, um, it's, you know, wait and see. He kind of jerked his elbow when he dove for that ball. And um, he'd been battling some some spurs. So it just, you know, it, it gigged him a little bit. We just wanted to take a, you know, make sure he's okay. But he's feeling good now. And hopefully he wakes up tomorrow morning and is good and can play. We'll just wait and see.
how nice was it to see that bounce back from um, Soroka tonight? Oh man, that was <laughs> awesome. You know, I think I talked to him in the hotel today, and he was kind of excited about this matchup, which is good. That's a good sign. You know, I, I said before, I think he's probably excited about this. You know, about tonight and getting back out there, man, he was really good. I'm sure nothing surprises you at this point with Nick Markakis anymore, but two hits and RBI looked good and left. I mean, yeah. how nice was that to see? I know. We're just like, my God, it's just <laughs> something else. Um, no rehab games. <laughs> he just, yeah, I know. And one live BP and, and just, I mean, two of the hardest hit balls he's probably had all year. First two at bats and made a couple of nice, really nice plays and left. And, um, it's a, the guy's a ball player, man. It's it's just uh, it's huge for our lineup and our team to have him back in there. It is, you don't know what to expect from most rookies, but did you kind of expect Mike to give you that that kind of effort tonight? Yeah, no, I mean it's it's you could kind of just when I was talking to I ran into him and I could say in the lobby and and he was I could tell he's a little bit excited and he was looking forward to this and um, it was good. I I think you know he did a really good job of coming out and using all of his pitches in the first inning. You know, we kind of bit him the other day, but he came out, you know, with his breaking ball change up in and, and, and the first inning, and I, I think that was really good for him. How much did you like the way your lineup was able to work Scherzer's pitch count up, get him out of the game? Yeah, no, it was, they battled their rears off. I mean, it's a, you know, you're, like I said earlier, you're facing one of the best in the business when you face him, probably as competitive a guy as has ever played the game. And, um, and we had some really good at bat. We ground some really good at bats out. You talked about Dansby getting some all time. Biggest takeaway from that is Freddie Freeman going to be okay? We think maybe this could have been the issue. Snip mentioned it was a dive. That was a dive, and his right hand hits the ground hard here. Something twisted in it, didn't feel right. They were ahead. They pulled him out. I. I I have a hard time from what Snit said. Snit's pretty straightforward. We've we've met with him. We met with him today. He's not going to sugarcoat it. And uh, it feels to me like it's going to see how Freddie feels tomorrow. I'll be shocked. I'd be honestly be shocked if Freddie plays tomorrow, even if he feels okay. He'll fight for it though. Yeah, I think that's the right choice to sit him tomorrow. But it looked like when he when he pushed up off the glove, his his elbow caught awkwardly in the ground. I think that's when he got that twinge that he mentioned. Yeah. Hopefully he's okay. We'll get more word tomorrow on Freddie Freeman. What's the nickname that you found or figured out for Mike Soroka? Mike Soroka. So we, we, we're going with the beast for Acuna Jr. Mike Soroka is the sniper. He's great on the road. No one really knows he's coming in. He's very quiet, and he just he just deals. He just cuts you up. He, you're done. Yeah, that backdoor sinker. That backdoor sinker. You, yes. don't, you, you don't even see it coming, and you're out. So, yeah, I mean, my main takeaway from today, mm -hmm. the NL East is over. The NL East is over. This yeah. is a much sweep, must sweep by the Washington Nationals. This, this is a wild card team right now. Yeah, I agree. I think it started down in Atlanta. I mean, I thought the Nats had to get all four of those at SunTrust Park, and they only only got one, and they didn't get it here tonight. And I think the Braves are sitting pretty for that in at least ground to put another little pennant thing up in their in their stadium. That's uh, right. I'm not there, so there should be one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Now they're chasing the Dodgers. The MLB Game of the Week on YouTube returns Tuesday. Yes, this Tuesday we're back. Cody Bellinger and the Dodgers hosting Meadows, Fam, and the Rays, 10-10. Eastern time. Be there in Los Angeles. We'll be there. You'll be on YouTube. Coverage begins with our pregame show at 930 Eastern. For Matt Diaz, Justin Maxwell, and Heidi Watney, I'm Scott Braun, logging off from Nationals Park. Thanks for watching the MLB Game of the Week on YouTube. Have a great rest of your night.